Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series from JW Marriott Grosvenor House right here on Park Lane in London, where appetizers have been served and consumed. Maybe a bit of a starter course as well. The entrees are upon us. Of course, the 250K took place yesterday. Ali Najad alongside Maria Ho going to be walking you through that action. But Maria, you're here yesterday, picked up the coverage after we passed it along. Main event taking place right now. That's what we're going to be bringing you here today. Yeah, and they were so deep stacked in the main, of course, on day one that it felt like there was a little bit of, you know, slow goings, of course, you know, towards the end of the day when stacks got shallower, then, of course, we did see some big all-ins pre-flop, but certainly not exactly the same type of action you saw in the final table at the 250K. That's <laughs> exactly right, and I love that you brought that contrast up as it allows us to get to that 250K, one of two three-day events that we've got, the main of course is going to take three days to find a champ but let's take a look at how that final day of play the final table of the 250k luxon pay invitational played out taiwan's james chen who flies a bit under the radar for some but not for others as he has definitely notched some big scores in some super high roller events was looking to notch a big pot here against Bryn Kenny, and of course Ace Queen against Ace King was not the right sort of ammo with which to accomplish that task. On a King Queen seven board, he would get it all in. Actually turned aces up, inferior addition, still hunted Queen on the end, and instead got five. And that would give him a ninth place finish, $680,000 going to James Chen here at his first Triton stop. Kehan Mokri then. Not the Norwegian that normally comes to mind when we're talking about illustrious poker players from that part of the world, that being Espen Jorstad, but notching his way here from the VIP side of the bracket into the final table. Pocket eights, everything looked fine and dandy for him as he got his last 525 in there and suddenly manifestations as the King Jack of Alex Ponikov's binks Broadway, but of course, drawing live to the pair, Mokri's hopes were not dashed until the river revealed that lack of a pair. And the lack of a better than eighth place finish would be the result for Kehan Mokri. $860,000 went home with him. Then Nick Petrangelo, who knows about a dry spell at Triton, has broken that spell. Here he was, final table appearance working his way into the seven-figure club as seven through first, all were over a million dollars in payouts. He would take two overs up against the pocket nines of Bryn Kenny as the set theme carried on. And on the turn, suddenly a ray of hope as Petrang Petrangelo had the gut shot. It happened before, could it happen again? No, as the seven of spades would seal his fate as the seventh place finisher. 1.17 million going to Petrangelo as that was the second knockout for Bryn Kenny. Now then, six remained, and the Swede, Robert Flink, had Queen-10 defended against Talal Shakurchi's Queen Jack. 725K in the pot, roughly two to one SPR. Flink decided he wanted to check jam against the 200K C-bet from Shakurchi with the open ender. The turn didn't help him out as Talal hung in there with those jacks. No nine, no ace, and no better than a sixth place finish for Robert Flink. 1.58 million went his way. Then five remained and 2003 World Series of Poker main event champ Chris Moneymaker, who barely played a pot, finally found his chips working their way toward the middle. Over two million of them to be exact. And Punat Punsri was the customer with a very threatening two over card combo of King Queen, which came in on the flop. Board pairing turn left money in search of a hook and instead the three of diamonds would Land him with a fifth place finish. Phil Nagy, front and center, showing love and lots of respect. Certainly earned by the community for Chris Moneymaker. An over $2 million finish as four remained. And the Latvian, Alex Ponikovs, made it 300000 to go with an 8-9. Talal Shakurchi would decide to flat from the button with pocket sixes. Ponikovs, despite having backdoor diamonds, some straight prospects, and middle pair, would end up checking on the flop. On the turn, disaster as Shakurchi fired on the flop but decided with sixes full not to fire on the turn. So it goes check, check, then on the river 
With the trip eights, Alex decides he wants to induce a bet, but the trapper became the trapee. As he checked, Shikurchi fired 1.1 and snap called the jam, and that was a self-inflicted wound. Toponikovs can certainly understand why he took the line that he did as his partner was there to console him, as was $2.54 million for the fourth place finish. Three then remained, and the number one player on Thailand's all-time money list, Punat Punsri, limp jammed with ace-queen as Shikurchi with ace-jack would flick it in, and what a lovely table spread this was for Punsri, who was licking his lips until the flop brought a jack and two tens and nothing more than an overcard and a Broadway gutter to Punsri. Turn, didn't help him out. 13.4 million chip pot, and you heard Danny Tang in the background saying, come on, but even he couldn't will a better finish than third in for Punat Punsri, who certainly didn't need to hang his head. $3.1 million going his way for that third place finish. Then Shikurchi, ace, king of clubs, made it 650 to go, and Bryn Kenny decided, let's finish what we've started. <laughs> hacking away at him for the bulk <laughs> of heads up play where he really held the deck and eight nine would turn into top pair and a gutter and you could see the response from Kenny not elated but somehow a little bit tense didn't even want to look recognizing that perhaps this would be the moment for him as he faded the ace and the king on the turn and the river and claimed the title four years and one day removed from having finished second in the richest poker tournament of all time, the one million pound Triton helping hand for charity. And as we bring you back to the desk, that was an absolutely breakneck pace. If you thought that the replay was tight, there wasn't a whole lot more that you missed in terms of coverage. Just a few hours and we knocked out five, six players. And then all of a sudden you guys got the call, stand down. Ali and Randy are gonna take us home. You'll come in for the main, shocking. Right, I mean, that was a great summary right there because I was watching back in my hotel room and I was like, could this be that they are willing to get in the chips in the middle so quickly? And so it really was a matter of obviously card distribution. You saw some of the hands were meant to go in, but also in an ICM situation, a lot of players will take really good hands as flats versus three bets, maybe unwilling to perhaps go all in pre and let the variants do the talking in that situation, allow themselves to get that ladder. But here it just seemed like everybody was playing for the win. Yeah, and it very much seemed like a preordained fate for Bryn Kenny once he got heads up with Talal. It was incredible the frequency with which he was able to three bet with real hands and Talal was just left folding pre-flop. And then all of a sudden Talal would pick up a pot and get a walk or, you know, Know, he would three bet and Bryn would fold or Bryn would not three bet when he opened with a real hand. It all seemed to play out in fantastic fashion for Bryn Kenny. Want to focus on the pot that I think drew a lot of attention and it was that trip eights moment for Ponikovs. Four players left, checked over to Talal not once but twice, Shikurchi checking back and all of a sudden Ponikovs could have clicked call and maybe hung around but jammed it in there with the trip eights and showered himself. I think that was just very much indicative of how Ponikoff's approached the whole final table. He probably was the one who really upped the variance throughout and really took lines that somebody with a middling stack might not take. And as you mentioned, in a situation where you could just call when a lot of times if you jam, you're only going to get called by hands that have you beat. He went for max value, mm. max pain to himself, right. that hand. But certainly somebody that's very tough to play against at a final when everybody is following you know, a rule book, a playbook. Of sure, sorts. sure. A blueprint, if you will. Don't want to overshadow, of course, the fact that Talal and Punat, both Triton main event winners in the past, eclipsing the scores that they notched in those main events here. Talal, by the way, over $9 million globally, really surging. And how much longer are we going to let him sit on the VIP side of the bracket? <laughs> Punat had to enter the transfer portal, went over to the pro side. The guy's got chops. I think that a lot of people in the community already knew that about Talal. Of course, he's put up a lot of online results, but I think he's really showed himself not only to be a tremendous no limit Hold'em player, but also this summer at the World Series of Poker, getting second in the PPC. And I feel like, as you mentioned, uh, I think that he will no longer be dubbed this rec player from <laughs> here on out. We'll see. We'll see. Did manage to bump into Punat Punsri, by the way, last night, having hit the town with Randy as we had the evening off and got into a conversation where he shed light on the fact that he actually had been thinking of not regging 
that 250K. He wasn't feeling well. And it was Kiat Lee and Danny Tang who pulled him aside and said, Punat, you got to register this man. Don't worry. I know he's on the pro side. Obviously, the path to you know making that final table was a little bit more of a minefield than it would have been had he been on the VIP side. But just wanted to mention that as obviously tremendous amounts of support, support coming from the two of them. And I'm sure Punat very, very thankful for that. Now, Bryn Kenny retaking the lead as the poker's winningest player overshadowing now Justin Bonomo, who isn't here to kind of notch some victories of his own and lay claim to that title. Something that Bryn really has said, I, I want, I want to be at the top of the mountain. I can see why any poker player in terms of legacy would want to have that top spot. But I also have a feeling that, you know, him and Justin will be trading blows here and there because Justin, even though he might not be here, he certainly is not done with poker. No, no question about that. He hasn't hung up his cleats just yet. So we'll keep our eyes on that all-time winningest list. And we kept our eyes, by the way, on a third event that was transpiring is you had the final table of the 250K. You had the main kicking off day one, but you also had a little fork card action going on and what a big beaming smile on the face of Seth Gottlieb as he picked up his first ever Triton title a 25k buy-in yielding $511,000 to him as he defeated Dan DeVorce so then let's focus now on the 125k main event that is what we're going to be bringing you here today an astonishing amount of support for this one Maria as you look at the entries and uniques yeah, 151 entries with 97 uniques, but 15 of them are day two buy-ins. And as you mentioned, the record in Vietnam at 135, so well broken. Yeah, this time very around. much so. And uh, 27th place, that's the first payout that we're going to have. $189,000 will go your way for that. But how about $4.2 million in 100 k by the way, not a 200 or a 250 k a very healthy prize awaiting our eventual champion. Chip leader to start the day, part of the Brazilian delegation. We've kind of noticed that they're on the more aggressive side, maybe some feast and famine kind of polarity, roller coaster riding. It is Pedro Garagnani, who already picked up a title in the Turbo Bounty. Of course, a huge flip of Chris Brewer at the end of day one. That is why he finds himself up at the top of that leaderboard. And we can take a look at those chip counts now in the Triton Poker Plus app. There is Garniani, one and a half million, Pardo. And look at the other Brazilian, Rodrigo Seiji, 1.2 million, as they're right up at the top of the leaderboard, but plenty of talented company behind them, Maria. Yeah, if you look down the list, of course, Ibinger, Yan, Adams, just players that you will find at the top in especially these types of structures where, you know, 50-minute levels, they started so deep, there really is a lot of room for that skill edge to prevail. No question about it. Jan, winner of the 200K, obviously surging a little bit. Momentum is a real thing. Why Ken Young, though? Mr. London, multiple-time Triton winner. He's got a main title under his belt, a second place in a short deck title as well. He is the shortest deck. Plenty of work left for him to do. Now, we do have some breaking news here at the desk today. I did mention at the top of yesterday's coverage a really alarming development, and that was, of course, that I had paid a visit to Shaman O'Dwyer as I sought some of his lucky charms and trinkets, some figurines. They seem to have been working out so well for the players, and yet my figurine had gone missing. I tossed my hotel room, and eventually... In the back pocket of a pair of jeans, Lucky Buddha from Shaman O'Dwyer was resecured. Glad to have him back. I know you can't really see. He may be diminutive in size, but he packs a real punch in terms of good fortune. I feel like you saying that it was missing as if it had legs and just walked away is really just a nice way of saying that you lost it, though, Ali. I think you need to take better care of it. Otherwise, I don't feel like Steve will be willing to part ways with his lucky trinkets from here on out. I, I gen Look, people thought I was, like, taking the piss, as they call it here in England, when I said that I was really worried about having lost Lucky Buddha, but he's back. Everything is good. Please try to keep the voices down. Obviously, you know he's very zen, very ohm. Not sure how much of that we're going to see back at the future. There he is. There's Lucky Buddha. How about that? Nice work, Martin's got a shot for us. Okay, then, we got a long day ahead of us, and that is the extent of the hijinks, I promise, as it's going to be battening down of the hatches here as players are looking to get their way into that top 27 slot, 79 left. Blinds will be five and 10,000 with a 10K big blind. Annie, saddle up, here we go. Day two coverage of the $125,000 main event from here 
in London. Coming your way as we'll send you down to the action with no further delays, and you'll get your first look at our two feature tables, semi and feature. There is the latter of the two, where we find Garagnani, front and center, 155 big blinds deep, and on the semi, Juan Pardo, 134, top two biggest stacks in the field. You can understand why we reached into the hat and chose those two tables. Short stacks at each respective table belong to Ben Heath and Patrick Antonius. And all of those counts brought to you by betacr.eu. Button's gonna start on Tan Chuen. We know he's an exciting force at any table that he joins. His chips don't collect dust. Michael Soiza there to his left. And then a fresh face from Tony Trong. First ever Triton event coming from Vietnam. Obviously, Damon Fu and company. Word getting out, helping to recruit. 0 for 4 thus far is Trong here, but worked his way into a day two. David Maka, Henrik Hecklin also there, along with the aforementioned Garniani and Heath. And it looks like a late arrival into the nine hole, Seth Davies. That's a pre-start of day rebalancing effort. Being advised that an additional table had been opened in anticipation of additional late registrants, but inadequate number of heads made their way to the desk, but 15 in total did, so. Better to be safe than sorry, Luca Vivaldi. Always prepared. But with the table unneeded, Davies joins the fray, and he'll have a fun afternoon on his hands with Henrik Hecklin there. Never far from a smile and a warm attitude. Just standing by before we get those cards in the air. By the way, Truong, Tony that is, screen right of Michael Soisa, not the only fresh face first timer at a Triton, just to Truong's right, of course, David Malka at his first ever Triton event, playing under the Puerto Rico flag. Did notcha cash in the 60K7 Max, the first of five events that he's played, hasn't cashed since. Looking to fix that here, and he'll start it off with a Queen Jack offsuit under the gun. Certainly with what I've seen of Malka so far, plays a little bit more loose, I think, than some of the players. Likes to get involved early, often. Min rays open. Attracts no one thus far and feels doubtful that Tony Trong is Gonna want to defend with 9-3 off, but TBD. Into the bin it goes. Getting race car driver vibes off of Trong with that hoodie, all the patchwork. Trong actually got into a big flip towards the end of the night with a small pair against Ace 10, he actually, you know, tried to get Ace 10 to fold with, I think, a four bet jam, but uh, ben, are you, ben, are you gonna go it actually Barcelona ended up working out in his favor. So, pretty healthy to start off the day. Foisted on somebody. Unsuccessful oh. so far. Mm -hmm. Looks like Davies. They won't respond. Oh, it's the odds. <laughs> yeah, so no, it's, it's, it's Poker Stars travel. Okay. They won't respond to sets, just trying to torch me instead. Yeah, I'm trying to, Wait, 22, trying to get one over. Hunting a customer for his getting a large amount now of, uh, orphaned education. hotel room yeah, they might at EPT to. Barcelona. My understanding, Maria, as we see Ben Heath with pocket sevens in a rough way against these nines for Davies, which have opened to 22,000, is that several of the players in the high roller community a bit apprehensive about mm -hmm. paying a visit to that specific event on account of some developments with the Spanish government, taxation, threats. 
I believe Star's word on that is that, you know, that they won't be withholding All right. as the Let's rumor once okay. said, but, you know, you never know. Can't be too sure. Will Ben Heath not withholding either as he jams? Davies, in turn, not withholding. Heath going to the protein bar. Guaranteed flopping is seven. I guess you just order some guys and you get hit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ace-5, deuce board. <laughs> Heath hunts a seven. A three will work for a chop. Chop it. Oh! Oh! 169 or what? Huh. Life not fair to the two nines of Seth Davies. And I might take Seth's hotel room. I should hit him up. I'm going to Barcelona. Said I was ready for Okay. I mean, looks like he he's looking to offload. Now, are you going to pay Markdown? <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's a bargain to be had here. But I love Barcelona. It's such a great city. Food almost as good have as you, London. Have you been post-COVID, by the way? I have, yeah. Mm. I was there for EPT Barcelona last year. <laughs> I've heard that the glory years may be behind that city. Really? That's a shame. I, don't, I did not feel that way, but, you know, perhaps that could be said about a lot of cities post-COVID. Sure. No question about it. And post pocket nines getting showered, Seth Davies under the gun goes to an ace nine suited. Opens once more just north of the min. Garagnani with pocket fives right behind him. Overall chip leader, flats, some discomfort there. Han Schwen deliberating with ace three suited. Can't help himself with the raise and the flat. Just seeing that dead money and being like, I want what's in the middle. I've got a nice hand to do it with. And let's say if he's going to be given what's in the middle, it certainly seems as though Davies not going to be a fan of Ace Nine after this action behind him. And into the bin it goes. Garagnani can well afford to tussle. Tan just 299k back. But even he deems it too rich. So nice moment of activation there for Tan Xuan. <coughs> and those baby suited aces, Maria, continue to be a theme in terms of hands that like to three bet. Product of the solvers? Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. But I feel like sometimes players get a little too trigger happy with it you know maybe not quite sussing out the situation but just seeing their hand seeing that combo and being like well I, i've seen other people do it so i might as well but there are going to be some situations where it might be ill-advised to take that three bet spot yeah i don't think it's more like 20 percent right yeah, Average stack, 49 big blinds yesterday. For most of the evening, the average stack was about 85 bigs or so, which is so many big blinds. And in terms of pre-flop hand selection, certainly you can be playing it a little more like a cash game. I mean, still in a tournament format, your chips are finite. Even though there is a re-entry, you do still have to view it a little bit different. You can't just reload because you're playing too many hands. But it did leave for a lot of interesting pre-flop hands happening. Well, this was one of the more interesting collisions at that 250K Luxon Pay Invitational final table last night. Ace-Queen against Ace-Jack. That's how Pranath Punsri found his way to the exits. Shakurchi with the Ace-Jack. Here... The two hands collide again. Bit of a different scenario, of course. So is a hijack open. David Malka, understandably, from the button, asking questions. 
Yeah, you can see based on the late position open why Malka would three bet the ace shack, but he certainly can't love this shove. But 25 bigs, might he feel like he doesn't want to fold when he's put in the three bet? Yeah. And so in it goes as Soiza will take his chances in a wonderful way in the early going. Sevens already beat nines, drawing lean. Mm. Is Malka going to spoil the party? <laughs> it looks mm. that way, doesn't it? Yes. King Jack six. Gutter and the queen hunt is on for Soiza. Unavailable. On the turn. Seven outs once. Whoa. Not there. And GG's issued by Michael Soiza, two-time Triton title winner, 15 caches, 8.8 .8 million in career earned, just one cash in eight attempts so far here in London. 14th place in the seven max for 48 grand. Voluntary ambassador. Now then, Rodrigo Saluan. Oh, you're in a pot, sorry. Good to see you. King four suited. Crazy one last Jack night, huh? Open. Oh, we got like a bunch of the game over here, huh? Yeah. Part Jeez. of defense. How's it going? Flops the gut shot. Up against top pair. Fifteen. Follow through barrel from Rodrigo. Just 15,000 into 55. Couple of ways for the 4-3 of diamonds to go here. Of course, you can check raise if you deem that you're going to be up against a weaker range from a late position open and obviously a type of texture that will come with a high percentage C bet frequency. Check raised to 45K. Very doubtful Rodrigo's gonna be going anywhere for the time being. Backdoor hearts, top pair, straight prospects. Hangs in there. No equity acquired on the turn for Pardo and now he's Breathed life into this pot, taking the betting lead, 145K out there. But once we get called, some reservations about whether or not to barrel through. Juan Pardo understanding that a part of Selwan's continuing range will certainly be, of course, top pair, but also maybe some ASEX that has some backdoor possibility, some hands that he could perhaps get to fold with this second barrel. But I think once do, do you think Salawan you're, you're continues of, like streaming more early day stuff on the and turn, like the Poker Master series, or it's just not worth or it? Or will more likely like not shut final down table unless stuff. he connects with the river. Oh, we're streaming every day, so. Yeah, I just mean like when the final table's finished, just move a table over. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I just don't really want to. Don't want to be in a situation where we got to pay overtime. But yeah, yeah. Because then the cost gets really high. Yeah, I mean that. I get that. But like a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of days where, you know, yeah, size turn like barrel. Yeah. From Pardo. Yeah, not a bad idea. Someone still not going anywhere. Like Backdoor lot, spades like, showing up. And there's a lot of like people. Obviously, on knows. Gonna Four highs, you know, never a winner. The early stages right of the day, now. but they get COS at the final There's table. Yeah. Like, Last game like, last like, night. Like, when still funny at a final table. But, like, legendary stuff happened. It's definitely mellowed. He, Some mellowed. drinks were had. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. Oh, wow. Asks for the remainder of Rodrigo's stack. And, you know, there is that very basic rudimentary principle of don't go broke with one pair that sometimes percolates out there. Clearly overly distilled, but you can sense how this is not necessarily where we want to find ourselves for well, our tournament life in the main. He has some problems, right? First of all, 8-6 gets there. 
Second of all, the four is not nice to have in your hand because you block some of the natural bluffs. You block the gut shot, straight draws, the four threes. You know, you block six, four. That missed, and so certainly a couple of issues here showing up to the oh, river with unique, this top pair, so to watch, especially having the four, like the not a great yeah, hand, not a great unique. kicker to have in your hand. And, and some of the check these, raises like do get there like on the turn as well. Field, so you have a pretty good clue what happened. If he can summon the courage to make what would be a very uncomfortable call though, Maria. He's gonna haul in 460 <coughs> from the middle. Four is actually the worst second card to have in this spot. You just really block so many of the sh straight draws that missed but you don't block the straight draw that got there. And other than that, you know, no flush draw on the flop and the backdoor flush draw gets there. It's really just a matter of how often does Juan Pardo have bluffs in this spot when we get to the river versus value and when you're blocking a lot of bluffs, usually that's a sign to not call. Think about some of the value combos that Pardo has. I mean, obviously I mentioned the straight already. Can certainly be some two pairs, right? Some king fives, some king seven suited that will defend from the big blind. You know, even king five off against a hijack open will be in there, you know, if. Selwan open from under the gun. That might be a different story. You see him make the lay down. Took a few time banks, thought it over, but he certainly can't be faulted, Maria, as you mentioned, especially with that four as a side card. So Pardo giving us a glimpse at what he's capable of there. Tough spot. Yeah. Way but to anyway, see the obvious, Carrie, Doug. Um, <laughs> I, I think you guys did a better job, though, of using YouTube as a way to, like, convert. Like, I'm sure you converted well this year. Yeah. Compared to most years. Because I think the strategy that you had to, like, distribute and kind of funnel, I thought was much stronger. You know, again, I credit that to, credit that to Remco. Sorry? Uh, to Remco. Remco's kind of taken the lead on YouTube the last few years. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you guys did a good thing, because you had the podcast going, too, with Jaffe. Post World Series post mortem as Brewer and Doug Pope. And like with with the product that you have during Funny. World Series, Great. it's just Funny. like in. you know it, it's the most highly demanded poker product for viewership. So you, you just really want to be maximizing your distribution and having good like leads into the subscription model, you know. And I think the way that you did it this year was much better at converting. Because you have to walk that line, right, where it's like, how much free do we get versus how much we put behind the paywall? Yeah, nobody knows what that line is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't. Well, it, until you try and run a, a production company yourself, like, so, like, we're di a little different because we are a card room, right? So, like, we can view it as a loss later. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're trying to make money with the stream, but 17. if we break even, it's fine 17. because we use it to promote our tournaments. Yeah, we should stream your, we should stream your content on <coughs> PokerGo and our, our fast channels at the same time. Right. Yeah, we can, we can talk about that. Yeah. Networking opportunities I mean, coming to fruition right? here as wanna, Perez yeah, takes the opportunity to follow the channels three flop raise and take one. Yeah. We were streaming the. Doug's certainly somebody who knows a thing or two about optimizing YouTube viewership. Oh, yeah. I mean, some may not know, but Doug Polk has quite a bit of a YouTube like empire and is an incredibly I mean, prolific content creator you obviously has managed to enjoy great success and recently opened the lodge card room Woo! in texas as this round of applause coming courtesy of luca vivaldi advising the field that they have broken the main I, I, event I record i thought you guys just did a really a really good job this year thanks that's high praise coming from you yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, I did again. not say that about you guys in some earlier years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know it's honest. <laughs> Funny. Now Salawan taking the remains. I was just looking at the data on YouTube alone, and I was like, I was like, pretty, it's pretty impressed. Yeah, we picked up like a hundred, uh, hundred thousand YouTube subscribers too. I think. Yeah, well, that's good in poker. Getting through the ace eight of Pardo, who did most of the damage. And that savage pot, one that when the stream catches up on delay, if all of a sudden word comes down to Selawan, he is. I'm going, going to play to the, the heads up duel thing in a couple weeks. That's going to be huge. Playing D nice. Yeah. yeah. That'll be good. A rematch. And then you're going to play, yeah, okay, good. And I think you guys are going to do the rematch like right after, right? Like we're not going to make it late. Uh, I don't know if he's going to rematch or not. Oh, okay. Also, I think there's like some studio conflicts on dates and stuff. So I think we have a little less time, but um, <coughs> either way, it should be, should be a good show. Yeah, definitely. Truth be told, some of the I conflict see you guys have buried the hatchet. Wait until they play heads up. The fact that I'm here <laughs> yeah. and can't be there to that cover that particular <laughs> event. But we'll see you August 23rd. Having sausage in hand again. Yeah. That might be the mix of your guys' two amps at the same time would really peak COVID YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I was just dying. First activation for I, I, there was one Patrick Antonius. Where I was just a little tilted because he was talking about how incredibly lucky I run to hit all these flushes in a session that I hit one flush. <laughs> <laughs> so like that clip next to me being like, I hit one flush. <laughs> Chidwick well, like, well, And I'm the luckiest man that ever lived. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've torn a full house, like low a full house. Hard oh, yeah. I mean, cool. ace queen cut off. Oh, that was funny stuff. That's good. That was a good Unclear times. what his action was. Was it a, a flat with the ace queen then? It was indeed. Flop comes 10 9 6. <sighs> Chidwick with the ace 8 suited, picking up the gut shot straight draw. The kind of thing that Patrick's working with himself, but two overs and a gutter. No club in hand. Patrick not going to barrel through on this board texture, Maria. And Still got to give now some props to d nags for actually playing Checking it. over to some strong like, ranges like, like, oh, boy, that continue up. against <laughs> Antonius is under the gun. Anything, plus two open. Well, he'll play in like a sit and go or whatever. Yeah. But that's not what that was. Yeah. This was like a real. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, This is like going to be 25,000 hands yeah. of like. Like such props to him. Yeah, seriously. Should we can have sets in two pairs here. Checks behind. Oh my. The Jack of Clubs slides right on in for Patrick after a round of knuckles. He's got the nuts straight, but look at Pardo. Got a draw to the Queen High Clubs and an open ender. Two way straight draw, rather, as the King gives him the A side straight. Or it becomes significantly less attractive for Chidwick. Forty-five. Now Patrick fires. This texture just very, very hard for first to act on the turn to bet into two people without being fairly nutted. Pardo, considering if he were to say hit his straight, if he's even drawing live right now, and you know certainly some concerns about the Queen of Clubs not necessarily being live either, might be up against a better naked club draw. Oh, you want to talk about better? Wow. How about this card? That a king on the end. <laughs> A filthy outcome for the King Queen of Patrick Antonius, who's only got 225 back, Maria. That is disgusting because effectively a two outer in the sense that if the King of Clubs comes, you know, Antonius isn't going to be in love with his straight. Five seconds. Well, how romantic is he feeling about it as it stands? 
I think Pardo can have some flushes as played, but I do feel like with a lot of the smaller flushes, he might have just found a raise considering Stevie was behind him to act. So I think... Does it stand to reason then that with the bigger flushes, we might have expected three bets pre-flop with those sort of club combos? Yeah, I mean, they're not always going to be three bets, but sometimes they will be flats. Uh, you can certainly mix between three betting and calling, but I think the biggest ones, you know, the ace-king suited and the ace-queen of clubs and those hands might be more likely to find three bets than, say, you know, an ace-eight suited or a seven suited. Patrick comes with a 75K bet, a third of his remaining stack. And let's see if Pardo feels as though putting additional oh, chips on request <coughs> would be prudent. Grace. We've got our answer. <sighs> Patrick said he could kind of feel it coming. Thank you. What did I say? Thank you. I do agree, Ali, that, you know, there are going to be some nut flushes here that might have three bet before the flop and could have checked the flop, certainly, and just called the turn, not obviously being afraid well, let me ask of you anything this. on the river. Is there any frequency with which this jam from Pardo comes from a shared king high straight? I don't think that that would be the case. I do think perhaps maybe... Well, that's a big issue, though. Of, right, but or it could be, you know, the ace of clubs with the queen, right, blocking the nut flush as well and folding out some chops. Like, I think, I cannot fold. yeah, but uh, Antonius just doesn't love it, but feels like there's a lot in the middle. And with that call... The journey ends for Patrick Antonius, <coughs> who said he cannot fold, and he also cannot rebuy. Showers for Patrick. Very unfortunate river card. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> He'd gone 0 for 6 here in London until a 15th place finish in the 250K, earned him 455,000, but he's not going to be adding to his career Triton totals of 5.2 plus here today. As we flip it back over to the feature, blind versus blind, Davies limping the queen jack suited. Big little. Activating. And this is the sort of stuff that one might expect from not only the likes of Brazilian opposition, but chip leading Brazilian opposition yeah, to be not, exact. not a bad combination either to have you know one high card and one low card unsuited could benefit from just getting folds davies too much hand to fold some possibilities with that flop certainly Seven, eight, nine board. Two clubs. Davies with the better interaction in the form of the gutter. And this is the kind of texture that favors a Davies limp defend, does it not? I definitely think that when Davies limp calls, he will have a lot of suited combos and certainly a lot uh -huh. of the middling cards. And he will have a gut shot delivered to the doorstep as the four liner. Shows up and Davies has the nuts. Problem with this much coordination though is you're not gonna expect to get value very often, especially from a hand that checks back that flop. K bet from Seth. King three easily finds the muck. Tiny pick up there. A friend of mine is going to uh, Spain.
Now, for a moment, when I first glimpsed upon the stack of Tan Xuan, Maria, I thought perhaps a duplicate Lucky Buddha had been given to Tan. But upon further inspection, it's actually that miniaturized Triton trophy that comes as part of the player thank you kit. For those that register in the Luxon Pay Invitational, saw Jason Kuhn putting it to work earlier in the week. So would you be upset if there were just multiple Lucky Buddhas floating around? Tremendously. Ringos. Ringos. Now, there is the Good Fortune figurine. Not to be confused with the Good Luck one that I have. I think Keith is going to get aggressive here and off of sub-30 bigs. Easy yeah. shove there against the hijack open. Easy fold for the ace four. Heath is working on his second Four's life, reverse. so to speak, Maria, after his pocket sevens yeah. dinked a set on the end against nines. And it might Coffee not be too hot. hot. I don't know, maybe it's coffee. Yeah. Yeah. But like. I've never done a multi beach before, so. Ten eight suited for Chong, who, based on what I saw yesterday, didn't get out of line, you know, played. Fairly standard by all accounts. Didn't make any big mistakes. Hecklin with Kings. Against an under the gun opening range though. Probably feeling like there's a strong chance that their hand could be strong enough to get it in after he three bets, but really just up against a very weak no, holding no. relative no, to and, uh, the position from which they opened from. After new even Vegas. Not a terrible price with like something suited and yeah. somewhat connected. Hence the call. As Trong's suited one gapper. It's going to be perhaps a little bit surprising if he shows up at showdown with it as an under the gun open and then defend and now he's flopped the flush draw but the pesky ace magnet effect for the two kings of Hecklin. King of Diamonds working for him. Best hand also and position 129,000 in the middle. And Hecklin isn't going to love that ace either because with the sizing he chose on the three bet, certainly some ace anymore. x can continue. You know, the strongest ace x's might have just gone all in pre because of Hecklin's stack. So a check back from Hecklin looking for some pot control and now pair in a flush draw for Tony as things get even more attractive. Yeah, and against a three bet pre, you don't imagine that Trong will think the pair of eights can be good at showdown. You know, definitely want to try to target the kings, queens, jacks, the hands that are afraid of this texture. But Trong still checking. Don't need to play. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna play. Nothing? Do we need to bet now? For yeah, Henry? Yeah. I don't think we need to bet, but I think that we definitely need to remember that mm -hmm. <laughs> Trong will certainly have check yeah, raises like here as played. A little bit opponent dependent for sure. Hecklin goes for a small wow. delayed so continue. <laughs> I 
I just think that it's important for Trong to realize that there's just not going to be a whole lot of traps Hecklin will have when he checks back that flop. Sure, can he have aces sometimes? Yes, but that's just such a small part of his three betting range that I would have liked to see Trong get a little more aggressive earlier on. I think now on the river, SPR just under one. Yeah, I... He yeah, this is he can't think to, that he'll win at showdown with a pair of eights. Hecklin just got one street in on the turn. A very modest 25K. And it feels like that was almost like an investigative line from Henrik to kind of see what, what he's working with out of Trong under the gun. You, you get what I'm, where I'm going with that? Yeah, I, I think it has to do with just the fact that Hecklin doesn't have a lot of information on how Trong plays. You know, if it were an opponent that maybe Hecklin was more familiar with, I think some different lines would have been taken. Asex certainly could have been part of the equation for Trong, although it got less and less likely the deeper into the pot we got. Twenty two. Raise twenty two thousand. Under the gun. Queen ten oh. suited. I already look at this and like Note the sizing, by the way. It almost feels like every now and again, adoption, right? Davies started off this 22K instead of the min. Mm -hmm. Others going with that established protocol. Tan, the only defense. And how about a dynamite ace four deuce after the ace five of diamonds was what he defended with. Happy to check over to Trong, who has air. Trong willing to come with a C bet with the range advantage. However, yeah, yeah, yeah. when the small blind <laughs> calls pre, certainly can have some ace hexes, some of the suited combinations for sure. And then, you know, ace 10, ace jack off suit plus. Now it's aces and fives for Schwen. After he check called the 15K, still feels like he's got way too much hand to want to go piling chips into here. See if it's just a one swing effort yeah, from Tony. I do feel like if you think your opponent is a little bit on the passive side though, you certainly want to find some leads here in spots where they're likely to check back. Which is exactly what Tony does and things just keep getting better for Tan Xuan as he makes the nuts on the river. I think at this point you just have to start betting yourself even though you have so much board coverage. Again, you just have to think about the way that your opponent has approached the hands that you've seen so far and realize that trapping is probably not the best way to get value. Jesus, you had everything possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't have a wheel. I like him. <coughs> I like him. Okay. So Schwinn, <coughs> not able to induce the river as we flip it back over to the semi feature. Find a raise Three. from Rodrigo Fold so on. With ace four of diamonds. Fold. Jungle Man uh, has entered the building. Apparently he found yeah, his way to JD Sports. Grabbed a shirt. There you go. 
Dude, you're supposed to say who's jungle. Hmm? You're supposed to say who's jungle. No, I am the jungle. <laughs> oh, so you're 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 the Russian version of yourself. I am the jungle. If you don't know who I am, you ask them. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? You know. Always bring some personality I, I, to the I, I persona. That coming, I'll take the over on some. <laughs> you did where you got to ball yourself. You did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> King nine five here is Pardo flops top pair. Head of the ace four. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen thousand. Checks over to Rodrigo and sure seems like Juan's had his number. 15K, the C bet. Seems like the kind of spot where, obviously, with just 110K back, Pardo could 39? chart a course for the rest of what's left in front of the Brazilian. Note the sizing a lot smaller here with the check raise as a function of that shorter stack behind. And Salvan would have really loved to see a turn in this spot and now wondering if it's worth it. Every chip so precious. And your stack is as lean as Rodrigo's. And he just jammed it in with the ace for Maria. Yeah, hoping that he was ahead of some Gut shot straight draws that would have checked raise, but wanting to get folds immediately. But when you're met with the call, you've got to think you're in trouble. Well, oh, wait a minute. The card you needed. All of a sudden, less trouble as he picked up the nut flush draw, but then the ten of clubs on the end it would spell the end as Juan Pardo finishes what he started. Acquiring the bulk of Solomon's starting day stack. As we lose yet another soldier on this battlefield that contains and, just and 70 like remaining he combatants. Kind of a body healer. And he was very big. Like, he was like heavier than I. Welcome, Oya Masashi, to the party. Because, like, he he's probably has like, uh, more body fat, body fat but he still was, like, really strong. Yeah. <coughs> and so, he, like, he suffered, like, many months, like, trying to lose weight. You, like, you need to, like, cancel the life, you know? Yeah. And it's not, it's not, it's not good. Like, it's not, it's not easy. You get a look at the full rundown. Here at the feature, blind steady at five and 10K, 50 minute levels here in the main. 24 big blinds deep is Oya, the newcomer to the feature, playing under the Japanese banner. Did finish third in the 30K turbo bounty. One for six here in London thus far. One other cash on his Triton resume came in a 20K mystery bounty back in Vietnam where he finished 14th, maybe Bounty events are his specialty. You know, bounty events are always going to be good for people willing to play big pots pre, play a little fast and loose. How about that little snack that you failed to share with me or offer? Maria, how's that? Is that good? What are we working with? Bear Bell's protein bar. Would you have wanted some? <laughs> well, there's zero left as you've wolfed it down. I thought you had Chipotle today. No, I wanted Chipotle today. I texted you, I said, let's grab some. Longing for some Mexican food after two weeks here in the British food desert. No, I'm kidding, it's, it's really not that bad. Yeah, I, I feel like you've had some really good meals without me. Would you like some peanut butter with that jelly? <laughs> no, but that, that or shall we just leave it as is? Masashi, yeah. she's like, she's like buttering the pot here with pocket like kings. <laughs> strong, climbing like really hard stuff. Tony seems to like the 10-8 suited. Was just thinking the same <laughs> thing here from the button. 
Oh, He's no. He's three betting the new arrival and problems for Henrik Hecklin. Because that. Good news is he's got a covering stack, but go on, Maria. Yeah, but around 32 bigs, obviously, even against a three bet, could not conceivably fold this pre-flop. I thought it was cool, but like the line was was not very like interesting. I would say it was so weird. Like it looked like only him in the world could climb that with his like twisting knee. Like, but that that one, the DNA was like crazy. Also noting the positions, cut off open, on. button Hold three bet. Man, Jam from Henrik, understandable, especially with that three bet money from the button in there, Maria, but the spot so horrific for Henrik. Again, the silver lining, the fact that he has the covering stack, but this is gonna be a big dent in said stack once Masashi makes the call. Oya oh, yeah. announcing all in as a call. 10-8 lacks any future. Out of the way goes Trong and will play for 566 with just 18% <coughs> equity for Hecklin. Lovely and prompt development for Masashi upon his arrival here at the feature, at least for the time being. Now then, 986. Doesn't provide any help to the two queens. Finger guns <laughs> being employed by Hecklin, who certainly in better spirits than one, white, one might imagine him to be when you look out at this screen. And the river does seal the double uh -huh. nice. for Masashi. Oh my god. He's a little domo arigato gozaimashita. Ooh, now I want sushi. I'm so hungry. Help. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Help. Well, help is what yeah. those two queens needed. As they were turned into sashimi. Are they? No, I don't think so. Nice pick up there. For A DNA? Oh, yeah? No, I think it's... Arden is, uh, it's did you run into Oya during the summer? I did, in Vegas? actually. He was yeah. out there playing events. Yeah, and again, just the Japanese players bringing so much life and energy. I feel like there weren't a lot that I were fam that I was familiar with. You know, Masato, obviously somebody that I think brought a lot of that energy early on. Putting people on notice, I think, about Japanese players with the vlogging and all of that. But now there's, you know, a big show of support, I think, from that part of the world in all <clears throat> events worldwide. They've got some chops in the mixed game streets too. Naoya Kihara had been playing with us. Really solid. You see Garagnani, ace queen, under the gun, open, a flat from Masashi. Davies dominated, defends the big. All the Broadway combos. Perhaps that's responsible for a six high flop. Sure. You wonder if Pedro might be wondering what does sure. Oya have to flat his under the gun open and you see him deferring because of that and Masashi, I think, has a lot of reason to have fired, but elected to check, which actually brings good news to Davies now. I think he's able to represent that board, especially once Masashi checks 
the flop in position, you know that he's not really going to have some of those middling over pairs. You feel like you're probably going to be up against ace highs and some of these over cards, so perhaps Davies wants to try to represent that range from the big blind. Decides to check, though. Now Pedro knowing where he's at. You feel all right about it? Fire and take it. Talked about Garagnani having won the 30K turbo earlier. Came in with the chip lead. Juan Pardo currently up at the top in front of Pedro. Who also finished 21st in the 250K Luxembourg oh. Invitational. Garnani, that is, 342,000 for that effort. 459 for the Turbo Bounty win and 19th in the 8 max for 73,000. So three caches in seven attempts along with the title so far here in London for Garnani. Tony hasn't been able to get much going today. Trying to make something happen here with the ace four of clubs. Tony does pick up defense from that boss stack. A little disrespectful defense. Sure. I think maybe a product of just the way that he's seen Tony play some hands, maybe taking some passive lines feels like there's an edge to be gained post against this particular type of opponent. Monotone 10 high flop here. Second pair for Pedro. Quick check back from Trong. Four liner on the turn. Eight X's feel like they would belong to Pedro, but let's not forget Tony, 10 8, <laughs> in there on a couple That's of occasions his hand. already. Didn't get the showdown with either of them, though, so. Or actually, he did he, the check back from Henrik in the first one, so Pedro knows that that's check. part of his arsenal from time to time. Another round of checks, and the river pairs the board. Kicker woes solved for nine deuce. Pedro has showdown value, but based on the way Tony approached this hand, probably feels like he has ace high quite often. So you see this just slightly over min bet on the end, meant to target the ace highs. And Tony just not able to zig or zag at the right time today. Makes the call. Twelve K milking on the river there. Perhaps a little ambitious, even in spite of the downsized river bet for an ace four, Maria. I feel like he certainly could have found some folds, but again, you know, maybe just not familiar with this player pool quite yet. Pedro Garagnani still up top with 137 big blinds. That is incredibly deep given the fact that the average stack is only 48 bigs. 
William Asashi up to 45 big blinds, and that is exactly why Henrik Eklund finds himself at seven. Queens against Kings as the blinds go to six and 12,000, diluting the stacks here in this 50 minute level $125,000 Brighton Super High Roller Series London main event. What would you attribute the fact that we just have a record breaking field here? Maybe London easier to get to, but also the Triton brand growing and yeah. becoming stronger. I, I think I think those are the two primary things. Obviously, word out, um, no longer really a worst kept secret. Let's call it the Triton experience. Players coming off of the World Series, talking about it with others who've maybe been soaking up the streams and had their attention turned to that which takes place within our borders and stands in. Stark contrast, head and shoulders, I would say, without even feeling like a homer about it, above the competition is this Triton Super High Roller Series. Yeah, I actually spoke to Leonardo Drago briefly, and he was saying how this is his first Triton Series and just how amazing the experience has been for him in terms of you know, what a nice venue it is and the ability to play really fast due to the shot clock, not feeling like he has to deal with any prolific tanking. No prolific hands here, blind versus blind. Eight, six and eight, four. Heath binks the side card for the lead here. Pedro just taking a stab with some backdoor possibilities. Not really. Maybe. I mean, I have to go to Little Dave's wedding during the minute. Right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is seven on the turn. Go on. That is one of those backdoors he was looking for yeah. when he stabbed the flop, and. With his call, certainly can have some type of, you know, one over card, backdoor flush combinations, but also some 4X, some deuce X. And because of that, might Pedro want to stay aggressive, try to get those hands to fold out. Not going to get folds from Jack X, but not going to be the bulk of Heath's range when he continues. Certainly Heath will have some floats. So no second barrel out of Pedro after picking up that gut shot. 60K in the middle. Action on Heath. And if this line feels like it doesn't contain Jack X for Ben, then the seven should seem like an inconsequential turn. Maybe from time to time, Heath could feel like putting a bet out there. Deems it needless, understandably. And the benefit of the check back, of course, you can induce what is now simply eight high on the river. Maybe get a little greedy. Ace also a kind of card that doesn't feel like it's too consequential. Some 5-3 from time to time, although that's a hand that feels like maybe it could fire at the turn. In any case, speculations over and done with as the full shutdown leaves Heath claiming a small one. Ben Heath, part of the English delegation here at this Triton Super High Roller Series and also part of the regular attendees to Tritons. His participation dates all the way back to right here in London in 2019. He finished third in the 100K pound main event back then for 1.35 million pounds. And uh, he's not a man that typically works his way into Triton events courtesy of online qualifiers, but that is something that you at home are welcome and encouraged to do at no place other than our official qualifier site. Nowhere else can you work your way to a Triton for as little as $54 as Dongbu Ko did earlier right here at this festival. It all happens at GG Poker. Sign up today, use promo code Triton2023 and perhaps you too one day can claim a Triton title. And if it's a main event, one of those lovely Jacob and Co. watches you saw pictured there as well. Love that shot.
Davies with ace jack in the cutoff. A stopper in the big as the ace jack clears the field, save for Tan Xuan's big. Tan going with the reach deep into the stack, but then flick one biscuit up in the front <laughs> for the call. Some people will Some do people that do and that look for the reaction. Read, yeah, exactly. For sure. No, I'm not falling for it. Well, second pair against a Broadway gutter. That which ensues. Davies. Can you get me this uh, season? Has honey all of the style? nutted hands here, range advantage, certainly a lot of equity here with the ace jack. Especially the wider you believe your opponent defends their big blind, then the easier and the higher frequency the C bets become for you. Shwan likely to just take one off and see what develops. Certainly a development for both players. Just a little added equity for Schwann and for Davies. Turning top pair, still with a straight draw as well. Definitely a little blockage going on between their whole cards. Davies going 75 into about 110. It really puts this queen 10 in a tough spot to continue. Sure, you do have some additional equity, but you really don't want to be paying this price for it. So a lovely turn for Davies allows him to claim that one the second barrel of 75K. Schwen not looking to grab the gutter. A lot of times, if the sort of equity that you've got is the type that is face up in terms of board texture, Maria, it, it leaves us with a lack of implied odds that would maybe factor into our Basically desire to continue. Right, I think that Schwen, you know, somebody who is aggressive at the right time and at the appropriate time, but also knows when he should not continue and when, as you mentioned, you know, hitting your gin card might not be a situation where you're going to be able to extract <laughs> further value. Right. You want that gin card not to be self-evident. The more concealed it is, the more value it contains. As Tony Trong. A couple of sixes here. Doesn't open the pot. That's a bit surprising to see. You know, Not didn't have any problems with 10-8 suited from under the gun, but. Yeah, incongruence a little bit in yeah. that camp right now and that muck. With the two sixes, then leaves Hecklin as the pot opener and his ace four in a bad way here against Garagnani. Cut off. Pedro will call, given that 7x sizing. And the flat is always going to look pretty strong. Oh, you almost did. Yeah. And the other one wasn't very good. Hecklin. You want, you want shoot him Didn't have much of a choice but to shove this hand oh, off of his stack his size, unopened seven big blinds, but not doing well against Pedro's hand. <laughs> Is uh, it coming? No. no. That's a 
Finger guns, shooting blanks. Queen nine deuce board with ace of hearts working for Ganyani. Eklund could very well draw dead, and on the turn he does exactly that as the nut flush for Pedro. Will allow him to polish off the remains of a cappuccino, espresso perhaps. Legendary coffee consumer is Pedro. First came on my radar back in Cyprus as Henrik Hecklin leaves the radar screen after being showered with that ace four. Finally had a chance to talk to him about the moment, by the way, when he really elevated. Got, they have places that do it. You'll just get on a treadmill, they'll put it at max Stirring line. coffee. It'll go to the max speed you can go. An art and, form. And then you just try to it's hold it. It's very uncomfortable because it's like quite tight. Yeah, 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 it's, it's not. Sugar it's stick not in hand, the man is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Just tell you that. As <laughs> Roberto like Perez cut, cut off like King a Queen a in a good way it against like Cardo. Test. It kind of is. Wouldn't that be easier to do it on a rowing machine? Like when you get that faster? I'm not sure. I've always, maybe I've just, maybe you can do it. I've just always seen runnels do it, so that's what the way they've done it. I think you can do it on a bike, too. You can just, like, up the tension a ton and just pedal as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. On. Yeah, it's a flat. Like metabolic rate, right? uh, Carrie comes along and flops a wheel draw with a pair oh, of fives yeah, yeah. here, and it's actually it's the best of what's around. It will watch uh, <laughs> 14 Peaks on Netflix. That's the, like, climbing one. Uh, He's like trying to do all the. It's this Nepalese guy yeah, yeah, yeah. who. I haven't watched it. I, I tried to call him old around 14, to Pardo. Eight, Yeah. Doesn't want to get to Reppin quite yet. Feels like he could be up against some traps. Did he do it? I believe. Yeah, I think so. so. The last one. I'm not sure if he got the last one. I think he got the last one, but After it was the like round an of issue checks. He can get a visa. It, it gets dangerous. Cherry. I mean, no longer yeah. the best thing to do. Yeah, like, but they did like, his like VO2 max and it was just like oh, yeah. completely insane on the shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And now <coughs> I wonder with two checks well, in like, front of him again. Once you get into the death zone or whatever it is, Pardo feels like, like a certain height it's on, like, time the to go for some protection where and the human value, body can't live at for a longer period of time. There's that oh, yeah. they call it, like, the death he zone, doesn't, and now he's what I know. At least like a couple of tallest ones have like. Please, Every please, player please, was ahead at like, one like, point it's, it's only like in this hand. Yeah. Yeah. Just, like, now the original pre-flop aggressor up there, so like, right. with yeah. the best of it That's at scary. the end. <laughs> I think uh, I imagine his and death zone is small. And I just don't think that like, it's very likely anybody would be checking at high top pair twice. Uh, so perhaps yeah, a little bit value of value to be found with pair of kings and the best kicker. I don't think it's a temperature thing. It's not? Okay. I don't think so. I think it's like a... Oxi uh, an oxygen density oh. thing, I think. Also. I just remember reading this thing. It was, uh, I think it was the first woman to climb, climb Everest without an oxygen tank. Maybe she had a tank, but either way, it was talking about like the last like thousand feet. She would take the last thousand feet. She would take like she would take two steps every five minutes, and then have to like sit there. And then take two more steps. Pardo feeling like, like this like line will contain, you, you know, some. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, like, if you go down, like, like, you might just die. Nines yeah, plus, yeah. but. <laughs> what is happening yeah, here? A, uh, Pardo understanding like that there's reasonable thin chance value of dying. Perez is trying out. to Pretty out. Yeah, capture yeah. here on the river with this bet. And this There's is interesting a, because you saw the smile book, come over uh, Perez's stream. face. It's it was the type like that normally two guy. friends in mm -hmm. a pot that and are playing a line that family. is unexpected or a little like bit frisky. Tons family. of subtext oh, that we maybe yeah, are yeah. unaware of as the two Spaniards could be well familiar with one another. They just have this red blood cell mutation. can't fold this one. It's interesting when you talk about sports and I wouldn't fold it to him. Uh, yeah. like so look at Perez. Other Comes with like the call and Pardo gets caught with the queen like, eight. Never a level playing field, you know. Yeah, yeah. Very much turning it into it's a bluff what, there. What level is allowed and what isn't. Right. Well, then obviously it gets really interesting. <coughs> you get to like, like those wow, with friends like that, of, who um, needs enemies? Right. Like really good 800 meter models that are like XXY so the, zones. Uh, mm -hmm. that's like call. Like K to like call Obviously, sure there's a lot of political that. discussion there. Yeah. And From Roberto. He gets really. He, he's got a little bit of so it's good. Yeah. 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 You remember? Oh, yeah. I thought it was just natural. No, I think I was.
cold. A little open side. Did you miss me? Huh? What? Did you miss me? Do I miss you? Did you miss me? Did I miss you? Yeah. What? Why would I miss you? You're right in front of me. Why wouldn't you miss me? <laughs> Elton Singh has joined the party here, by the way. Oh, not right. to be overlooked. I would have called. Good no jam. I don't think you're calling my jam. If she wants to go hiking in Switzerland, that's where <laughs> I would love if she wants to do that. Maybe going to like France too, like in the mountains also, see some of her family. Oh, cool, yeah, that'd be nice. That, have some other friends in Wales too that I heard is nice and that can take like a two hour train ride to get up there also. Yep. Maybe that. Yep. Always like stopping through Amsterdam, like walking around for a few days, like yeah. maybe that. Right. Yeah. Doubtful that walking will you be the only thing Bryn does Jack? in Amsterdam, no. Maria. Yeah. Yeah. He's king. Yeah. That'd be cool too. Yeah, I never Somebody complain about going Excuse to me? France. Yeah. <laughs> Eating bread. Other cheese, activities available. France, never a bad option. I know nothing of the sort. I've spent so much time in Europe, but I haven't came for a long time since like COVID and just everything. Yeah. When I'm in Amsterdam, I'm just trying not to get hit by a bike on the street. There's so many of them. Do you do like a hiking and then spot Yeah, the Dutch trip, like the two wheel. The trip, which seems like really the nuts. Yeah. Um, so far, just the hiking. But uh, I, I like the idea of adding a spot then, especially for my family. That'd be cool. I saw one amazing one in Switzerland that you've got to take like a cable car up to get to the spa. Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Garniani. It looked unreal. Pot opener with the Queen 10. Oya Masashi with Tony Trong type kit. 10-8 suited, a flat caller. Trong didn't open a pot with pocket sixes. Here he is in the small with a couple of threes. You wonder if he will try to put all the chips in the middle, perhaps feeling like pair threes, if called, can play okay, you know, just up against two overs a good amount of the time, plus there is some dead money with the flat from Masashi, but does instead come with the call. Of course, David Malka can close the action from the big discounted pricing. Hops in there with the jack nine suited. So three fairly interfering hands and then the pocket threes, which <laughs> turn into two pair the hard way quads well. on this flop. Lovely timing from Tony Trong. Unfortunately though, Maria, Nothing cooks elsewhere. Right. Good news, you flop quads. Bad news, you might not get much action. I think sometimes you can, of course, count on the pre-flop aggressor to target this type of boards, but just when you are four ways to the flop, it makes it so much harder. You're up against a lot of different ranges that can certainly find some connection to this board. An ace of hearts rolling off. And in Trong's mind, that might be a good card yeah. if <laughs> one of his opponents happened to have an ace X type holding. But or a heart. Or even a heart. But none of that kit rests behind him. It's so unfortunate for Tony, is that reality? But now with two more checks in front of him, let's see whether or not the preflop Razor feels as though he can rep this card. Pedro still going to check. And Asashi, no showdown of course, 10 high. But in position, get to see what everybody else did in front of you and still deciding to check even though he hasn't seen a whole lot of interest coming out of any of the other players. And I think Tony's got to go for the bet now. That five of diamonds, given the fact that there was no action on any of the streets prior, just doesn't feel like it's going to suddenly connect with one of his opponents. But 
Tony being very patient. We'll give him that. I mean, he's just got such a stranglehold on this one. Granted, he no longer has the nuts, the turn, and the river both create better possibilities in terms of a straight flush wheel or quad fives. Does not feel as though that's likely. And so now Garagnani can't take it anymore. 50K. And the raise will be forthcoming, sizing TBD. I think Trong just with slightly over 3x back. We'll just put all of it in. <laughs> and Pedro was like, why couldn't I help myself? <laughs> and Tony can't help himself as the check jam. Draws the obvious <laughs> muck and the quads but are revealed. The Thank you. It's my turn, right? Yes, yes sir. Garagnani. Right. Okay. <laughs> Makes it Still 28 early. to go. Is Tan Shwen <laughs> watching the stream on delay? Yeah. I you can hear ourselves bleeding into the mics right now. Quite awkward, sort of like the inception of the audio program. It's the hand where he three bet squeeze with the ace X suited, the ace four suited. Does he just want to know if we said nice things? Well, guess what? We did. Yeah. Shame on him for doubting us. 66,000 has been he's doubting the validity of the Garagnani plus one open. Just a seat behind him. Is this the typical sort of kit we would expect Ben Heath to come picking on the big stack with? Well, it certainly gives it a lot of credibility. Looks incredibly strong. Gets through. And that's what you have to do when you're on around, you know, a 20 sub 30 big blind stack. You do have to make things happen, create your own luck. I think we've been pretty polar hands this tournament. Yeah. Nothing really in between. Just like. It looks like it's going fine. Pretty easy decisions. Do not argue against them. Pocket fives for Schwen. Looks Sh like he's paused the stream. Schwen, an incredible player. One of my favorites <laughs> on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case he comes watching this one back. 24K open sizing, the min. Bryn, you think he <laughs> bought those shades with some of that six mil plus? Those 6.86 six six to be exact. No I deal mean, was made. Those look nice and new. Wasn't he Fresh wearing to them death. At, the, at the? I don't know. FT? I don't. You feel think it's like, a different pair? I, I don't feel like those were it. What about what about this like eagle pendant? Now I. I wanted you to wait until he was involved in a pot oh. before we got to commented on his whole getup. The All eagle right. situation All right, I'm is sorry. we have a flush draw situation for Davies, big blind defense. Check 
takes it over to Tan. Just a standard spot to see bet here. It's not really your actual holding, but your perceived range, of course. That's quite the card, giving Davies the flush, but Schwann with a gutter ball to the straight flush, six of diamonds. And note Davies content to continue to allow Tan to be the man putting chips forward. Blocking straights with the two fives. Diamond blocker as well. I do think that against the majority of Davies' continuing range, though, this is a nice check. Now a jack of hearts on the river. Wonder what sizing Davies will come with here. You gotta think that your opponent is not going to be able to have a strong enough hand to call you with Very if you go ball. big because he checked back the turn and that's just a quick fold from Schwen. Not even gonna think about it. No. Nah. Schwen's got really good sniff on him, Maria. Kind of don't see him getting trapped that often. Even though he's one of those more aggressive players, he gets better hands into the muck with some frequency, but I just don't see him with players getting one over on him, so to speak, that often. Well, I, for one, would never try to bluff Tan Shuen. <laughs> he's so good at picking people off. <laughs> Malka, cut off open, king five suited. Come on, Bryn, play a hand so we can discuss everything you've got going on today. Pocket nines, you know he's in there. Gonna flat call, and there we get our brief glimpse Ooh. at this golden eagle situation and a lovely spot here for Pedro Garagnani. No doubt we will see a three bet. Note the late position from which Malka opened. Kenny's flat can certainly contain a lot of weaker hands than pocket nine. Some of the speculative combinations of the suited and connected variety gonna be in there. Here's the thing though, Kenny is well aware how under rep these two nines are, and he's going to be able to play this pot in position. We see Malka out of there. Yeah, there won't be any folds coming out of Kenny against this three bet. Perhaps <coughs> even considering being more aggressive with it. Although I think off of that 77 big blind effective to start, I like the flat. But certainly not just one way to go about it. Especially if you imagine you're, yeah, especially if you imagine you're going to be up against over cards. Might and now the try flat to them out. Yeah. and then jam. How strong does that look? I mean, Bryn can absolutely have traps there. He can absolutely flat the button with some big pairs, you know, kings, aces, etc. And then back jam against this three bet. 
77 big blinds is so many. Pedro working with 136 big blinds. He's just wondering how many times does Kenny have bigger pairs here versus hands that I might be flipping against or even some of the worst pairs that I will dominate. But tens just feels very borderline here. Could go either way. You know, I think Jax has to be in there, obviously. Again, just because of the positions, but. Oh, this is a toughie and. Well, it's also a little bit of that Bryn Kenny takes these high variance spots sometimes and it seems like a brilliant opportunity potentially to pick him off but how often does Garnani suspect that he's up against a smaller pair because that's the specific combo that he performs very well against right and this is not just going to be the traditional line that most players would take with nines and so this is really an opponent dependent decision Yeah, for this many bigs, you're just not going to see people put it in pre with nines very often. I call. Oh, right. wow. Garagnani digging deep. He and we're going to play a big one. Oh, my God. He's been, oh, Jesus. Almost 1.9 million. And you hear the oh, my God. The instant reaction from Pedro. Never imagined it would seem, Maria, that he would be in such wonderful shape. Maybe some ace -X. Perhaps the bigger pair from time to time. And here on a six high board, Bryn Kenny's fate in the main, very much in peril. So far, so good. Wait a minute. Four for the chop. Eight or a nine for the W. Six outs to be faded by the two tens. And the wow. eight rolls off. Oh my God. Too lucky. <laughs> Too blessed to be stressed. Wow, and unbelievable. Who can blame Pedro Garagnani for mumbling to himself? It's nine, just. Nine. Here. nine? <laughs> That's why it needs straight. <laughs> wow. That was. I think uh, if it's the point where. Savage. It's like the edges are so tiny. That's Meanwhile, like, Savage redeveloping like here like, as Ace King lady, top two against out. bottom I was set in a pot where Carrie Katz opened to 25,000. Both blinds like, came yeah. along. Yeah, you're fi I was 5'10", This is so it's gross, like but this is why yeah, people yeah. love just, to block so bottom sick. set because you unblock all of the well, strong sure. top pairs, etc. Oh, people from you got two, so like so unfortunate for And Carrie instantly recognizing when he jammed that is not true. on what the turn that, that he was up against a set of deuces. He looks a little bit steamy like, like he's drawn dead. He's not. He's got four outs here. From ancient eras were more in shape than the athletes no. today. No. Ever happy that about these setups? Yeah, exactly. not true. Not true. Yeah, I read that. I don't know. Well, yeah, whatever, whatever you read was wrong. All right, the full, the full sky to break. Dispatched four minutes of the mile happened. by Roberto like Perez, 19, who check raised 28 to 62. I think, Roger Banstall, and like now and then probably 50 calls. Let out for 63. Cats and like a jam, a snap call. Yeah, look at look at on something. And a long walk no, like out I, the I mean, door. As Roberto Perez, the beneficiary, the two Spaniards running one two at the feature table here in the 125k Triton Super High Roller Series London main event, but they are far from the chip leaders. That honor belongs to Bryn Kenny after a disastrous nines against tens. Gut punch to chip leader coming in on the day. Pedro Garagnani. I'm still speechless at the way that one played out. It's so tough, especially when you find the call in a hand where you could have yeah, like just folded it. You know, would have maybe been upset about it after seeing that Bryn has a nice.
but I forgot, actually coming like up with the call seven years, the in real time. The record was down like 354. And then getting that like, run just out. like got shadowed. What you're saying is it's like when Tony Hawk did the 900. <laughs> then everyone knew it was possible. Yeah. I mean, that one probably even more so because that one's like kind of scary to go fucking try. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you're like, I hope I don't die. <laughs> No, I mean, all the modern athlete stuff, like, even, like, people talk about, like, LeBron versus, like, Jordan or something, and, like, you obviously can pale compared to Ayla, but, like, you actually threw LeBron in, like, 1980s basketball, it'd be, like, or, like, 1990s basketball, the guy would be, like, just the biggest freak they've ever seen. Like, if you look at, if you watch, like, if you watch, like, old clips, it's, like, the guys just look so much less athletic than, like, modern NBA guys. Yeah, I mean, when you say freak... Like, there were definitely some people that were freakishly, like, Wilt Chamberlain's the best example, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Where, like, like holy Press. shit, how do you deal with this? Well, Wilt Chamberlain's like a world class high Fresh off of that like, kind chip of infusion. Like, it was some kind of Yeah, that's crazy. Picks up yeah. Chidwick for the ride. This is a super Roberto 11th athlete. overall in the field on, right on now. On average, yeah. yeah, yeah. Stevie's well, King I would say Queen, well worthy of defense. Ancient times, people were Flop on check, average two way state, better two shape. Jackboard. Like the average person back then was oh, incredibly yeah, yeah, yeah. better shape than today. That probably is true. Yeah. That is true for sure. You know the story of the false male, like Indeed. why the marathon is called the marathon? Why? So it was a uh, Greek messenger <coughs> had to like had to send a message. Twenty six point yeah. two miles. I think the city's name might have been Marathon. So he ran twenty six point two miles, sent the message, and he died. Roberto that, coming that with a like seabed, but you imagine Chidwick and, like, is event, thinking about like, some of those potential back like, doors, but no spade. Contest or whatever, but it wasn't like some feat that people could just do. And, uh, <laughs> can yeah. be can ahead with real. King High yeah. against yeah, like the button eight. opening range. It's one of like the original like ancient Greek. So like when they had the Olympics in Athens, they did the marathon on the actual like marathon trail. Which is if you cool. thought you were ahead with King I know that. High Today I learned. on the flop, then there's a lot of Ace doesn't really change you, much. There's like a lot of reasons why the, like the world Perez might be afraid that Chidwick dude, can have track of all this some jackets. Did you hear the story of he calls uh, Genghis the Khan and the, <laughs> the message he sent? Did you hear that you one? You didn't think that was a good story? I, I actually like the story. I didn't, I didn't even I, tell it that well. I didn't if know he it. Again, then there's a bunch of crazy stuff. People at the table were rating you for saying I didn't know that story. I mean, I, I liked it. It was good. There's, I can tell you, there's more. There's even crazier stories in history. They're just like, what the fuck, like all over. There's a. Uh, do you want to hear some more crazy stories? Give me your best one. Lay it on me. I'm thinking of one in Chinese history. I'm not sure if my best, but I, I can think of some in both directions. But give, give me, one, give me your best one. This one I, I know kind of well. So, there's this guy who consolidated the Chinese emperor empire. He's like super ruthless or whatever. And he had a prime minister named Fogo, something like that. He had an oldest son and a younger younger son. His oldest son was about to take the throne. Now, he was looking for something like an elixir to make himself immortal, this emperor. And the irony is he took this elixir that he found, he heard about, and he died. And so he died in secret in the middle of the woods. So found the a little bit of showdown value with the queen high that wasn't good enough to, to be in Chidwick's hand. Uh, went to like the general of the entire army and was like, okay, let's keep this all a secret. Let's edit the will so the youngest son who we can... Uh... Oh, I really wanted to hear the end of that Chinese empire consolidation anecdote the jungle was coming with, largely responsible for laying out as Perez shut down the end and Chidwick binking the king on the end. Always the best hand. Able to haul that one in. Meanwhile, back over to the Bryn Kenny show. As though the run good wasn't evident enough when he was heads up against Talal Shakurchi and made the most of every spot that he had en route to victory in the 250K Luxem Pay Invitational. We just saw him with two nines against two tens. Taking a big bite out of Brazil's Pedro Garagnani. Davies, raise and take it. Do we think that Jungle Man's story is true or accurate? You know, here's the thing. What's your read? I don't even care. <laughs> like, whether it's accurate or not, I just want to hear story time with Jungle. 
who, by the way, is letting his soul glow with the hair. Really jungle caliber quaff being worked on there by the massage therapist. Not at the jungle table now, though. Where Bryn Kenny putting the chips that formerly belonged to Garagnani into this one to the tune of 26K. Pedro, King Queen offsuit. Keeping it together here, Maria, but uh, he's got to be a bit breathless. Oh, I mean, inside, I couldn't imagine how he's feeling. Perhaps, you know, a little throw up in his mouth. Just, I would be boiling at that spot. Because he went so deep into the tank to find the call, and he was right. It's so validating, and he's in such good shape. And it just comes perfect, perfect. Remember the time you told me that you ate the card? It's true. Yeah. that. If Pedro were you, those cards would have been in trouble. Oh, yeah. New setup certainly would have been requested. I would imagine. But you hear a Triton, you know, people <laughs> behave. Keeping it classy, yep. not destroying the cards. But still destroying this flop, at least in terms of having the best hand, is Bren Kenny, ace, nine, eight. And note that he doesn't follow through after being called by not one but two players who've got position on him. Yeah, multi-way, I certainly don't mind this check with top pair and a weak kicker. Not a hand that you're going to be able to find three streets of value on very often, so not bad to play it as a check call. But now that it's been checked around on the flop, Kenny might feel a bit better about his prospects. So the round of knuckles will now leave Bryn. Firing with comfort. King Queen for Pedro, keeping an eye on Bryn here, just not no pair. And does he think it's the line that Bryn took that leaves this King Queen potentially the best hand? Yeah, I think that when you see Bryn not continuing after being the pre-flop aggressor, you certainly wonder if he just has some air that once he sees it's checked around on the flop, it will try to stab on turns. Pedro wanting to keep him honest, but also you have to wonder, Ali, is it part, in fact, due to Pedro wanting to get some of his chips back and maybe not exactly finding the best of spots to do it, but pushing for that outcome. Yeah, one might be tempted to attribute the turn adhesion to some vengeful notions. Goes to the time bank here, Maria. Is there a world in which he's thinking naughty thoughts? Is the Jack of Diamonds the kind of card that he might be able to rep something like a Queen-10? Yeah, there's some possibilities that he could have gotten to the river with a holding like that. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like he was not going for showdown here. He's taken it a bit to the streets against Bryn. <laughs> Something that, by the way, is not lost on Bryn, Maria. He was right there, saw the beat that he put on Pedro, and understands that that might be factoring in. This is where dynamics get created, right? Let's say Kenny and Pedro had never played a hand before that one. If that's all the dynamic and all the history that they've had, that could still be enough for Kenny to find the call. 
Like, is this person steaming a little bit? Is this person gunning for me now? Did my check on the flop perhaps seem weak and therefore will be targeted more often? The thing about it is, it's not as though Bryn thinks that the notion that Pedro is steamy right now is something lost on him. That's a time bank, not a call. And so would he really take this line when it would be so self-evident if you were light? Well, certainly a bit of a leveling war, right? right? So what level are you on? What level do you perceive your opponent to be on? And are you able to stay one step ahead? Here, that one step ahead would be to find the call as we see it. Bryn catches Pedro with his hand in the cookie jar there as Garagnani costs himself 35 on the turn and then 210 on the river. And core temperature certainly rising in the Brazilian camp. It did feel like Pedro just mucked, though, and didn't even need Bryn to show his hand and Pedro not wanting to show his right now. He just can't imagine a world in which Bryn is no, going to be calling not. lighter than not no pair. Right. My, my emphasis is on the fact that he just doesn't want Bryn to have the information of what kind of hands he's doing that with, and he's going to let the delay catch up. I think your stakes here, you might not have realized. I was just waiting for a break. Oh, yeah, that makes sense now, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Garnani hasn't lost his appetite, although I do have to say, sometimes I've been guilty of eating my feelings, and we know that those feelings are not good right now for Pedro. My condolences to the Bowl of Greens. As there will be some deep aggression directed toward that lettuce. I wish when I ate my feelings, all I ate was lettuce. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't think I'm reaching for a salad. <laughs> when You're I've like, got oh, I know what'll make me appetite. feel better. Yeah. Salad, dressing on the side, no croutons, please. <laughs> <laughs> Suited connector for Tony. Defense against the Malka open, which turns into trip jacks up against a club draw. One brewing here under the gun, big blind. Might Tony be a fan of the suited connectors? Just one too many times. Certainly been bleeding chips in a few scenarios. His check draws the expected C-bet on this kind of texture with reasonable frequency out of Malka, who's got it, 15 into 74. Well, the under the gun opening range can certainly contain a lot of the nice jack X's, the ace jack, king jack, queen jack suited, jack 10 suited. Also the over pairs, which is why I don't love this check raise by Tony. I just feel like you're gonna be up against some very strong hands, hands that won't fold to the check raise. And you could also even get blown off your equity here sometimes when you take this line. To be fair, it isn't without merit though, because obviously you do clear out a good number of hands and take the pressure off yourself to get there. I don't even think a hand like a strong ace-x is folding to this check raise, though, just because of the draw-heavy nature of that flop. And now the five of diamonds on the turn actually gives Trong two pair. And I hope that with that call on the flop, Trong just slows down now with a little bit of showdown value, beating those ace-high continues, and having the flush draw again. You don't want to be blown off your equity here if you feel like your flush draw is live. And Malka has so many strong hands here, so many of the strong jack X's, over pairs, etc. 
75K. Just feels like it's going to be lost in the ether. And the 75K lead is a good chunk of the 235 that Tony sat with after check raising the flop. This is not what he wanted to see. Malka immediately jamming. And this is kind of the problem with the bet is you might not even be able to realize your equity with the flush now. You can't think that a pair of fives is good. Would have liked this line, the aggression that we're seeing from Trong. Would have much better been served against a late position opener. regretting the line that he's taken. Does he want to fold and fight on with just 160K? Call it 14 big blinds, or does he want to try to win a bigger one here and now? Drawing live, that's the good news. But drawing thin, with just 18% equity. This is the problem when you're playing a tournament and not a cash game, right, is it's going to be your tournament life if you take this shot and miss. He is getting the right price, though, in terms of better than 4-1 to one on, the, on the call of 160. Right, but you can't really put a price on staying in the tournament right. as well, especially when you took a line where now you don't get to see a river and kind of by your own doing... Well, the correct fold from Tony Trong, and we'll never know whether or not he was able to hit a club on the river as the absence of any other players around the rail tips our hand in terms of where we're at. Break time. And that break, something that maybe Pedro Garagnani will benefit from as he is tail spinning. Chip lead coming in down to 417,000 for him. 28 bigs as it stands, but Tony Trong folding, leaving himself 11 big blinds. When we come back to blinds of 10 and 15,000, as we bring you back to the desk, Ali Najad, Maria Ho, Shaman O'Dwyer's Lucky Golden Buddha, all here. And the moment that lit the YouTube chat ablaze, obviously the Bryn Kenny confrontation with Garagnani, the two nines, Pedro finding the big call, and now really needs to find some composure on the back end of this break. Yeah, probably best that it happened, you know, close to a break, needs that time to decompress a little bit. But you can understand the frustration, made the right call in a spot that was really tough, considering it was for 77 big blinds each, and Kenny not taking a line that normally most players would take with that sort of holding, and yet you're a victim of the run out. There's nothing you can do. That's a part of poker. You can make the right decision, and it still won't work out in your favor. Been a rough first frame for the Brazilian delegation. As you look at the Triton Poker Plus app, down toward the very bottom is where we find 56th of 56 runners, Bruno Volkman, as well as a peak of the two new feature tables, which we have coming your way after just a few minutes. So don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll talk about those two feature tables as we continue coverage here of the $125,000 main event from London. Stay close. Why are so many players? This is a crazy, it's a doozy. GG Poker. 
broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World this Series the of Poker. poker song, the biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Captain Stafford reaches all-time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Most players don't know how to adapt their strategy against different opening sizes. For example, here the hijack opens 2x, we can see that big blind is supposed to defend almost 60% of their range. However, if the hijack had instead opened 3x, we're only supposed to defend a quarter of our range. With GTO Wizard, you can learn how to fine tune your defense and crush the competition. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker, poker song. Main the biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Captain Stafford reaches all-time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. 
Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. And welcome back to the JW Marriott Grosvenor House. Day two coverage of the 125K Triton Super High Roller Series London main event is still rolling forward. One frame in the books. Alina Jad, Maria Ho, Shaman O'Dwyer's Lucky Buddha, always to be acknowledged here at the desk. And uh, also to be acknowledged, of course, are the two new feature tables that we have upon our hands. Teased it just going to the break. Let's get a peek then inside the Triton Poker Plus app. We already know that Bryn Kenny is the overall chip leader, but we're going to cede feature table duties to Boss Paul Foy, Ramin Hajiev, a title holder. Grafton also knows what it takes to win an invitational. Lots of talent there. Shemion, title under his belt here in London already. Those guys are going to have their hands full. Wichter Malinowski, Maria, not a table you'd want to be drawing, I would imagine. <gasps> No, definitely not, especially considering how deep most of these players are. Certainly a lot of play going to be some interesting post-flop hands, I assume. But look at Grafton, Hajiev, Shemion just hovering around that 20 big blind stack. It is Malinowski, though, with that massive 109 bigs, fourth overall as it stands, one player of note. I can actually zoom in now as we turn our attention to the secondary feature table, give you a little bit of a better look at the landscape. We find Nick Shulman. Works both sides. The booth from time to time when we're back in Vegas during the World Series and also so much credibility on him. 69 big blinds. Things going all right for Shulman, but uh, 121 big blinds for Tim Adams. That's the boss stack. Looking out at this smattering here, anything in particular standing out to you? Brian Kim, he's going to be a tough customer. Yeah, and Tim Adams, of course, can't forget about him. Really nice stack, 1.8 million in chips. Also coming off of a relatively recent fourth place finish. Yeah, 100, uh, 1.81 million, as you mentioned, 121 big blinds. Going to be good for a third overall stack. Neck and neck with Tobias Schweck. The Germans generally make their mark at any one of these super high rollers worldwide. Malinowski has mentioned fourth, and of course, Bryn Kenny up at the top. Don't want to overlook James Chen, not a part of those two feature tables, currently sitting in fifth. And with 55 players left, Maria, and we're only going to be paying 27 of them, this phase of the tournament, what do we expect? Well, as we approach the, uh, the, the soft bubble, I assume that some of these players with the bigger stacks are going to start applying more pressure. It will be a matter of the type of table draw you have in terms of how much maneuverability you get during this phase. Of course, you know, being a middling stack, not as fun. Being a big stack, a lot of fun. And then the short stacks just really hoping to get into the money. But are we really with half of the field still remaining to be showered before we get to the money within strike? Striking distance of the bubble and ICM considerations of that sort, or are we too far removed and it's just kind of business as usual? Well, it's never too far removed in the sense of you want to continue to chip up. You want to be able to play some small pots and be able to not face a lot of resistance. And as I mentioned, it's the approach to the soft bubble that I'm talking about where a little bit of that pressure will still be applied. Soft bubble, maybe 10 away from the money? Yeah. Is that a, a reasonable threshold? Yeah, okay. definitely. All right. On that note, then, we are ready to send you back into the arena where coverage will continue with blinds of 10 and 15,000 of those two new feature tables that we mentioned from right here at the JW Marriott Grosvenor House on Park Lane. Peek at the outer table as well. Nacho Barbero picked up 3.4 milli after a deal was made three ways in the 200K. Did not win the title, though, finishing second. 1.25 million in front of him. Kanapang Tanarat Rakul. KT as we know him, the shorty at the red table. Pascal Lefrancois, newcomer. Short stack at the gold table.
Nacho Barbero out there with 83 big blinds. Yuri Zivileski, 53, very playable stack. Not comfortable. Yeah, some are, and some have this weird. Yeah, some are like this, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's impossible to move because there's so much cameras. Oh. Um, is that me? It's not me, bro. Sorry. See the cards. Ace 10 for Grafton. Great. He's been wearing several Arsenal shirts. Thus far here at this London series has been his kind of go-to garb. Obviously a big supporter. Hajiev, a big supporter of Pocket Kings. In his home country of Azerbaijan, by the way, calls Baku home. Tremendously patriotic and proud of that nation. Do feel like off of sub-20 big blinds, maybe shoving just looks we weaker against a cutoff open. You know, if you find the three bet non all in sometimes that will contain some light three bets, but also contain some of the strongest premium value hands as well. 85. It's going to take the three bet non all in sizing here. So the 85k 3-bet off of that stack depth, Maria, you suggest vibes considerably stronger than the jam would. Yeah, the, the, he will have some light 3-bet, sure, but he will also have these very big premium holdings, whereas if he just shoved, certainly there will be some weaker ace-axes sometimes in there and the king-queen suited and king-queen offsuit as well. So... You see Grafton able to stay out of trouble yeah. there with the folds. I definitely like Arsenal more than over Spurs. Oh. <laughs> and a little football talk yeah. ensues. Arsenal used to be my favorite team from, yeah? from England, the UK, yeah. Oh, what did we, and not anymore? I always played FIFA with Arsenal yeah, when I was a kid. With Henri and Bergkamp and yeah, all the boys? Yeah, 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 of course. In London, I like Chelsea. Golden era. Golden era. Yeah, really, it was my best team to play with. Yeah, unbelievable. I'm the big blank. Yeah. Oh. My brother is a diehard fan of Man U, so oh. I, I see, oh. see a lot of Man U every day at home. Dvoris, one of my personal favorites in the high stakes arena, just always seems to be very composed, in a good mood. Yeah, I've enjoyed all my interactions with Dan Dvoris, uh, without exception. The, uh, sushi platter, please? I imagine if I was uh, on the other side of a tennis net from him, it would be <laughs> less enjoyable. Uh, no Good with racket in hand, and obviously good with cards in hand as well. You see blind versus blind, Ole Shemian, queen eight, against jack nine, which turns into trips against a gutter. Two clubs, two nines, and a ten. And yeah, the sushi platter. Thank you. Checking. Paul, that's one third pot. Oh. Only going to tear one off. Check. Nothing interesting on the turn. Check. Paul still trapping. Get 15k on the flop. Now check back. Does give a lot of draws a free pull okay. on the turn, but a blank river. 
and he can safely barrel. Yeah, but recognizing Shemian probably has a very weak holding, one with very little showdown. What sizing will you take when you do want to get a little bit of value? Doesn't seem like your opponent is too interested. Goes for pot. And I don't think queen eight is the best bluff catcher here to have. Granted, you know, queen high on a paired board might sometimes be good, but you do block a lot of the bluffs, especially, you know, with the queen and the eight. Blocking eight seven, blocking queen jack. Blocking eight six. Blocking queen eight. <laughs> All of those straight potentials, but unblocking clubs, but perhaps wondering if Paul is going to go for a second barrel on the turn with some type of flush draw, or will he check those back to try to realize his equity? Ace high would have been a lot easier of a decision, I think. Giving Paul credit for some bluffs here on the end when he goes the sizing. Is it worth another time bank? Nope, he's just going to put the chips in. Can I have a Take cappuccino, care. please? Yes. Thank you. Interesting that Ole would pay off that 75,000 <laughs> on the river as you get a look at a very dapper looking Victor Malinowski. Devoris, Ace Jack in the cutoff. Five seconds. Raise 40, 56 big blinds to start. Shemian right behind him with the same hand, but the suited variety so looks a little prettier. And only 12 big blinds gonna move it in and an action gets back to Devore. Certainly easy call for him against that stack. Two flush draws instead of one for Devoris. <laughs> Shemian wants the prepay. So 180 ahead. 360 no? into the middle no, and I mean. <laughs> well, you have two, you have two flush draws, so is almost a sure, kinda. but a couple of spades. Told you. And that's that. To the carving board we go. Mm. Chop. Everybody State. loves a chop box, right? No? <laughs> <laughs> it is available, by the way, on the player menu, Maria. You got greedy. Yeah. And then you were behind on the clock. <laughs> I was like, okay with that. that. That's what happens when you look so angry, bro. <laughs> I'm not angry. Well, you look angry. I didn't say you are angry. <laughs> I don't look angry. You did. I think we're just perceiving things. Yeah, maybe. 
Ali, the lead anchor, but also the brawn. Yeah. Not the often bunch. that that's the case, but <laughs> Maria, alarmingly <laughs> unable to open her own water bottle, mm -hmm. did pass it over to me just now for. He was like, no, 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 I already have water. I'm like, no, I need you to open it. <laughs> yeah. I How's the grip strength over there? Honestly, not great. And I read that grip strength is actually a huge indication of when you're older of bad health. Or life expectancy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> not great. Yes. Gonna need to get time to some put the will together, uh, Maria. How much how much longer we got with you? Can't even open a water bottle. But we can open a pot with a eight suited, says Dan Devoris out of the hijack. You might be in my will if you keep helping <laughs> to open my water <laughs> bottles. I die of thirst without you in here, apparently. Five seconds. Hold. 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 Flat from Paul invites the big blind of Malinowski with the 10-7 suited to join the party. Jack-5, Trey, and fours are still best. Richter. Deferring. No seabed from DeVoris. Paul, with the kind of hand where it Thank definitely could much. benefit from protection, but when you're up against two opponents, don't expect that you're going to be able to get folds from hands with any connection. So better to just play as a check back, keep the pot small, continue to have a little bit of showdown value. Oh, they make it so hot. Impossible to drink. So the round of knuckles and the only flush draw belongs to the best hand. There's two more checks in front of Boss. He's still okay with checking back and now Malinowski makes the best hand on the river. It doesn't feel like a hand that you could get value from worse given the run out. Might Tavoris now want to stab, recognizing that his opponents seem to have fairly weak showdown. And with this sizing, of course, you know, 85K into 130, still able to keep non nutted value hands in his value betting range. So could definitely bet some top pairs, some two pairs. Doesn't need to have flush or straights for that size. And Wichter, just a bluff catcher. Not a great bluff catcher at that. That's going to work for DeVoris. And it's nice to see, of course, just the best players in the world finding ways to win multi-way. You know, can take the check, check, bet line. Third best hand on the river, activating for that 85,000. And Dan DeVoris hauling it in in third place. Three hands out there.
Devoris with the Jack mystery card, but coming from under the gun plus one, rates to be pretty strong, but Shemian, hijack, ace five suited. Gonna pass up on the spot. Feels like Devoris is opening from early enough position where he's just gonna respect the range and wait for a better spot. I have a tough time thinking that Grafton won't be dominated here when he makes this call from the big blind. Yeah, Jack 10 plus does feel like the minimum kit for Devoris. Two spades, two fours, and an eight. Okay. Nothing interesting for Sam. Grafton with two overs and some backdoor straight possibilities, but a little too weak, I think, against an under the gun plus one opening range to continue there. Meanwhile, flip it back over to the other feature. KT appears to have popped the top on the Java looking for a faster <laughs> delivery than that afforded the little cutout. Other than just an IV straight to the veins. That would be weird if one rolled the IV bag up to the table filled with an Americano. I mean, I got to admit, the first couple of days that I was here, I desperate times could have used that. Now, we get our first look at Rodrigo Seiji. All in. 30K open, and KT with the short stack jams it. I suppose 17 bigs could be considered deep enough to have some three bets. His two picture is declared after Rodrigo makes the call with the sevens. We'll play for 540,000. So about as good as Rodrigo could have hoped for in this spot. Excuse me. And Rodrigo's hopes of showering KT grow grim. I had one at uh, Peppermint. This is green. Supplement, yeah. Ducks. Thank you. Ducks. King. Oh. oh. What is ducks? Is this? Oh. Oh. How to say? I don't know. How to say? You did. You gotta love Kanapong kind of Tanaratnuku, by the way. I mean. I'm trying to say hold. Just one of the nicest guys. Yeah. On the Triton Super High Roller oh. Series in a very unkind river for him. Mm. Sage. Good luck, Danny. GG, bro. Binks, the two outer. Here it is, first ever Zero Triton Super eight. High Roller Series. Trying <laughs> to notch a cash. No, Over not for six ducks. thus I far. I said this. T H U X. How to say? <laughs> te. I'm like te. Uh, no te. GG. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, the Google Translate might have failed him there. That's so unlucky because, like, I, the way I say it. It's going to hold like 95% of the time. Yeah. And I said it, and well, I didn't hold. He'll never forget this 5%, yeah. buddy. <laughs> it's, it's almost become my fault. Thank you. I should just get my mouth shut. The dealer's fault. Well, no. You can't blame him. No. <laughs> any, any other dealer, you can. Not him. He's just sick on That was like the light's fault. Sick on two hours like I did today. It's okay. Do it today. Not your fault. Don't worry about it. <laughs> not me. Not me. Uh, have you ever drank something when you thought it was something else and it's so jarring? I thought this was still water. And the second that it hit my lips, I'm like, this water is foul. And then I looked and it's sparkling. 
The only foul thing right now is that seven on the river that's showered KT and maybe this king queen for Brian Kim against these two queens of Nick Shulman, which have opened to 40K. Button three bet to 115,000. One king busy into the muck, a queen as well. Brian? Are those stacks of a... Uh... Thank you. Nick wants to get his bearings. Kim started with 48 big blinds, and you can't really blame him for choosing this combo, blocking kings and queens. But Shulman happens to have the goods here and can certainly just all in. go for all of it. Quick fold from Brian. You know, when your opponent finds it, when you have the blockers, they find it. And you can't beat yourself up for taking that three bet spot. Just gotta move on to the next hand. Yep. moments ago. Nice pick up there for Shulman. Ace queen for Seiji. Got himself up to 1.2 million in chips. Rodrigo was up toward the top of the chip counts to start the day, along with Garagnani. Both have since trended in the wrong direction. Shulman, by the way, turning to the peppermint tea, earlier delivered green by mistake. It has been a very popular order here in London. I've yet to indulge. Perhaps we should get a round of peppermint teas brought to the desk. I love a good peppermint tea, especially. Okay. It really settles the stomach after what happened to me earlier on. I'm sorry? <laughs> what happened to you earlier on, Maria? Is this a TMI situation? No, no, no. Is Everybody developing? knows about <coughs> my... Oh, the food, food poisoning. poisoning thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. No, no. No, not as recent as like, like yesterday <laughs> or something, Ollie. But it is high variance when you go with the oysters. It's not the oysters. It was my late night pizza. Oh, that's right. I think it was Henry who ended up Hi. Oh. getting showered by oysters as we see Adams raise and take it with the ace jack. Pardo now taking his turn with an ace. He's 10 suited to be exact. And King Queen pops up again. This time for Adams. I think that's actually Roberto Perez, and maybe the graphic has it wrong. I think when we pan back over to him, you'll see. Oh. 
Hang on. The original opener. Yeah, the flat from Adams and suddenly the jam from Suvarna. And indeed, you are correct, that is not Juan Pardo as the Spaniards have been crossed by the graphics department. Okay. Also an oversight by yours truly. Tim Adams, curious if he has a hand that can fare pretty well against this squeeze. Jam by Savarna, 17 big blinds. Adams can certainly afford it if his hand does in fact play well against the range that Savarna is willing to go with. Perhaps some pairs where Tim Adams will have two overs here, very live against the ace 10, but folds. Tidy result for Suvarna. As neither the ace-10 suited nor the king-queen were in the mood to continue. Once more, this playable kit. This Jack of Spades, he will open on the button. Six four offsuit for Rodrigo. Affordable defense, unintrusive are his two cards. And they morph in the bottom pair, which is more than we can say for the ace-jack of spades, though interactions with the queen of spades on this flop are quite nice. Natural continue from Zavarna. Seiji getting some pressure for this 4x. If he were to find the continue, there's going to be a lot of bad turn cards, of course. Hoping to improve with that call. And three hearts, <laughs> probably one of the best cards in the deck. If it weren't a six or a four, still going to be beating ace king, ace ten, some of the over card hands that Savarna will be raising on the button and continuing with on that flop, but against a second barrel on the turn. Love to see it, by the way, is you can sense how effective that barrel is. Progression seems quite nice as well, going from 35,000, which didn't get the job done, now up to 70,000. Very credible. Not just a second barrel, but what its significance is in terms of what that leaves Savarna behind 200k and now the pot is up to 300k it certainly feels like Savarna can have a lot of strong holdings and I would love to see Savarna empty the clip here with that eight on the end Savarna blocking Jack 10 very easy to rep that type of combination would make sense all Jack-10 offsuit and suited combos will be opening from the button. And a bet bet line seems very natural. But the shutdown on the river as Seiji hung tough with those two fours. And you can see Santosh recognizing that perhaps there was an opportunity there. And you touched on the fact that when we hold that Jack, we block the sort of 10 Jack no. concerns. 
oh. on a river such as that, would you have I fired that third there. barrel, Maria? Would you have waved the white flag? I think you should know that Ace High isn't going to really rate to be best at showdown with Seiji calling twice there, and I would have emptied the clip. That's not the only consideration, of course, though, whether or not the Ace High is going to be good as you get a peek at the chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak. It's also whether or not wherever the range of our opponent is as we assign it, if that'll be able to make a call. Yeah, right? the range isn't going to be very strong very often. All of the strongest hands against Savarna's opening with that stack size could have easily found the three bet or put Savarna all in. Adams, king-10 suited, now facing a three-bed from a king-9 suited for Nick Shulman, which is not in great shape. Let's see whether or not the extra 70K is something Adams is interested in spending to move forward. Well, 80 bigs. Effective, deep, not surprised to see the call. And the deeper we are, the more inclined we are to make these sort of speculative calls, Maria? Yeah, it just stands to profit more when there is so much behind, when you can also have big implies should you hit the type of flop that you're hoping for, which in this case very much straights and flushes. You know, you're not really looking to flop one pair of hands with these combos because it can leave you unclear about how good your holding is in a three bet pot. Ace high board texture and Shulman looking to rep that reasonable ace X sort of holding that would take this line. Coming with 20% pot on a pretty dry board where, you know, as you mentioned, ASX strong is going to be a part of his range, but still will have, of course, other hands in there. And that makes it a little less likely now in Adam's eyes that Shulman has a strong ASX. But Shulman could still take this line with kings, queens, jacks, you know, bet small on the flop. <coughs> Size up a little bit here, perhaps, after his 50K C-bet was check called. He faces another check. And if that ace on the flop hadn't been the ace of diamonds specifically, I think it would have been curtains for Tim Adams with the king 10 of diamonds. But 60% of the royal flush. And now a courageous turn barrel of 210,000 comes forward from Nick. Far from 20% pot like its predecessor. I do think that this bet, though, and the sizing definitely makes Tim raise an eyebrow because certainly you don't expect kings, queens, and jacks, other value hands to go here for that sizing, really just repping a narrow part of his value range with strong ace axes, but that is going to work. I'll tell you what. Given that we're staring at the fact that Tim Adams has King-10 suited there, it gets deeply uncomfortable as a lot of that open defend against the three bet check call the flop could still contain ace X's for Adams. But Shulman appropriately identifying that the turn barrel could prove fruitful as it did there. And we flip it back over to Devoris and company. They compete at like seven or something. Dirty diaper. But you're, you're, you're like a meal into the bin. From passing out at three. And you're you're always, you're like Perhaps a some scratching their temples wondering why it is that the yeah. words dirty yeah. diaper would have crossed my lips in that situation. Yeah. The deuce three like offsuit super very much christened shut down under six. the dirty diaper by one Nick Rigby of World Series of Poker main event fame. Deep run again here this year. Plays that hand like it's his religion. And to great effect on occasion. 
As we see another King-10 suited, this time in club form, in front of Victor Malinowski, rocking the Louis V. Monogram jumper, one and a half million. Jammed in there, Grafton. King Jack suited in a great way here, ready to play for his remaining 405. No fear. You would all surprised that Grafton would be willing to get it in there. 26 bigs against the button open range of Malinowski. Finds himself in great shape. No, I think against the button open, King Jack suited is a very nice shove. Certainly don't expect to be dominated very often when you call, so this is definitely best case scenario, but going to be live. Oh, man, the pulse weakens. Two clubs on the flop. And, and you have to understand that. <laughs> and now, like, an open-ender to go with the flush draw for Malinowski. As a runner. We can hardly contain the outs. Got to fade a six, Jack, a club. Oh, in the six. On the river. Not a nice run out. Mm -hmm. Got the money in good. So that's flexing? Well, that's... Yeah, I was like, I guess I'm Queen's class, Jake. <laughs> yeah. And a Queen's class, a bit of a fake thing, you know? Yeah, I guess. Hands, jokes. Oh, yeah, of course. <coughs> You're lucky, yeah. Jason Dunn. I was about to have to smash through. Incredible amounts of food you wouldn't see me today. So well, like not, you didn't know it enough. How much did he have? Like 405? 405. 405? Four, 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 yeah. Thank you. I understand the call, but. Gamble, gamble. Let's think of it, right? Well, the smile on Victor Malinowski's face, which was already intact courtesy of that very deep over 100 big stack that he had, broadening. After showering Squiddy. Oh, Chris? Uh, no, he said three to, three to five. I mean, even said everyone on the team was three to five. He would all fall off sooner this way, so. He would definitely think about it. Yeah, everyone on their team has to Not too much for Sam Grafton to be upset about, though. Training sessions. Given he has three caches and what are now six attempts, albeit ninth in the 25K, 20th in the 50K for 91 and 36.5 respectively, Sorry, overshadowed but, deeply yeah. by his 11th place finish in the 200K for 348. Didn't cash though in the 250 and now hasn't cashed in the main. 125K buy in as we see Paul, the boss, with pocket threes. I went bouldering yesterday. I didn't, I didn't think to. I jack open. I binger with the fives. Wasn't really fit yesterday. Flats. No. One five into the muck. Malinowski not interested That's in this nice. one. With the ace five nice on the button. Ten minutes away. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it called? Houston wall. DeVore is going to come along with 8-7. Two overs to the field, surprisingly <laughs> enough. King-Queen-5 as the case nickel gives Ibinger bottom set on a board texture that he's in love with. Yeah, unblocking all of the nice King X holdings, the strong King Xs, the strong Queen Xs, the ones that are going to find continues. Very often, just a bit unfortunate for him that Paul has threes in this spot. Almost a third pot here. Not going to get any action. Disappointing, of course, yes. given there's 
Plenty of King X, Queen X. It should be lurking. Pua <laughs> opened and stepped away. Matias positively reinforcing that decision as he alludes to how quickly he would have been pushing his chips in. Nothing interesting distributed. And that explains why Chidwick will get a walk. Not the bad, what he said was a bluff. Love to see him rocking that Jacob and Co. Triton main event champ watch. He and Henrik never far from it. Hmm? It's a leveling thing. It's like a level where I'm supposed to limp a lot because I'm getting a good price. So I don't. Not that mm. they're the only two Triton kind of main event up. winners, Maria, but just the two that I always know yeah. the sporting those timepieces with pride. As they should. And there'll be plenty of pride associated with taking down this particular main event where currently we have just 45 players left with 27 paid. The biggest field ever assembled, 151 like UK, like entries up top. Service stuff like less 4 .1 million plus. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like for example, like I mean, it's whatever because like berries pop, but like, like sometimes I order the fruit platter and I get like a bunch of berries, and like clearly like a full kiwi sliced up. Sometimes there's just like two shitty slices of kiwi with like one blueberry. Fruit plate grievances. Some first world problems, but we'll allow it. Fruit plate variants is a thing. <laughs> depending on seasonality, availability, ripeness. I hate how much melons are in there. Like, I'm not a big cantaloupe, honeydew type of girl. Right, but that's the staple. That's fruit plate filler. Of course, you're looking for more exotic things along the lines of star fruit. Lychee. Yes, the more expensive fruits. I understand. As Devorah is making things more expensive for the A7 suited of Boss, which raised under the gun, slightly disrespectful. This bump to 105, which sheds another ace and sheds the opening ace as well. So Devoris activating there, Maria, with that specific holding. I think if you imagine your opponents have a wider under the gun opening range, then certainly King Seven suited is a nice combination to find oh, some pre-flop aggression with. The tighter the player, though, the less profitable that three bet will be. So standardized. Revisiting the fruit plate conversation, I always find there to be a dearth of mango, which is one of my faves. Get the mango in there. Have you ever out. had mango with some tahini on it? Yeah, of course. I, I lived in L.A. I know all about pulling off the freeway and seeing somebody with a little cart, a bunch of ice, and for $5, you can get a massive heaping cup. And then the lime is the real key, by mm -hmm. the way. Now, I'm going to give you a pro hack. Salt on fruit makes it sweeter. The That's Japanese chili seasoning togarashi oh. with lime on mango. Try it, thank me later. Meanwhile, King Jack offsuit on the button for Chidwick. Upstairs we go. Shemian, 13 big blinds, has had to pass up on a few spots already, but this one I think is going to go in. Going to be some raise folds in Chidwick's range here from the button. This one feels like a call, yep. So, Shemian 
Going to be given a spin here by Stevie. Danger zone lights on. Ola deems the small blind ace four adequate. And in turn, Stevie felt the same about his king jack, although those feelings may be changing on a deuce three four two club flop, where a pair of fours and a wheel draw leave Shemian further in front. That's the only safe paint Almost. available to Ole. <laughs> now just needs to fade a king or jack, which he has done. So, a double <coughs> for Shemian. As he tries to wriggle his way back up to a more playable stack. Did win the 50K 8 max earlier at this festival for 1.35. Finished ninth in that 25K PLO. For 54,000, he has played every event thus far, nine of them in total. And there is a peek about the rest of the room. With 45 remain here in our 125K Triton Super High Roller Series main event, London, largest field. Ever attracted. See Greenwood, Smith, Ike. No berry patches out there, Maria. <laughs> Nothing but briar bush. Those thorny roads to the final table. The only type available as these players journey toward the money bubble. Ace Jack suited. Chidwick opening again. I expect Ibinger to come along here with queen three of spades. <coughs> Matias looks up at a Broadway gutter. Far better developments for Chidwick. Top two. And backdoor clubs. Five seconds. Some likely hands at Chidwick. We'll be hoping to continue. Are these types of gutter balls, queen X's, king X's? You know, it's a little hard when you block ace X and jack X, but some 10 X will be in there and some of the weaker jack X's and ace X's that you're hoping for. No, I don't think so. Even though it is a thing in like every other language. That's another one of those situations that Have a good we touched on <laughs> earlier, Maria, where yeah, maybe you've got an out in the form of the king, but the Broadway on board is not going to be lost on Chidwick. How much value are you going to get? And every now and again, Chidwick shares a queen in his holding, so how much upside do we really have? I saw a reel on Instagram, like they are saying like most random words in like all European languages and German. Like all European languages are very similar, and German is a completely different thing. Like I'll find it. Really? Yeah. Twenty twenty now. Lines are now ten twenty twenty guys. Actually, know that Instagram post that Ramin is talking about. It is quite funny. Taking a pot shot at German is not being the prettiest of the European languages, perhaps. Did you know that America was pretty close to? having German be our national language instead of English. Debatable just how close we were. I heard it was only a few votes away back when... We were voting on it? Yes, back when there was a delegation formed to ratify the Declaration of Independence. Listen, you didn't take eighth grade history class? Listen, I thought you were talking about the outcome of World War II. 
And I was like, I don't really think. But anyhow, Chavero didn't require a lot of thought How much of it? to jam with two sevens here. Two sixes for Danny on the button, asking for a count. And this is actually a good bit of his 245. And he's going to stick it all in there. The good news is he's got Chavero covered. Bad news is... 100 and what? 10. His sixes are crushed for the time being. Yeah, but can't blame Tang for going with this hand and finding oh, really the ISO pretty short himself. So he has both of we're going to get dominated. better spots really, than this. Really Can I ask nicely, see if the dealer will oblige so far? Really appreciate it. No dice. Ace jack five leaves the sevens in really, a good way. Really, really appreciate on the river now. Like six Red six on request flush instead. Both players Shame. make a flush and Chavero will double. And that'll leave Danny down at 135K. One for six thus far at the festival is Danny Tang. Actually, forgive me, is Ignacio Chavero that the bio that I was looking at? Tang, in turn, actually is three for seven with a 21st place in the 25K GG Millions Live, a ninth in the 50K 8 Max, and then fifth in the 200K for 1.2 million in change. Obviously, that'll help. <laughs> with a more downhill approach to the rest of the festival. Was that Tang. Alesso? Yeah, yeah, Tang with the, coming with the Alesso. That's, that must be his hype song, you know, when he short stack. Well, the title of that particular track 40. 40 is 40 calling, but in parentheses, lose my mind. Two very interesting things, as he did make the call and then might be losing his mind because his <laughs> stack... <laughs> Grows shorter and shorter. Now look, Chavero opens a six, dominating the ace three. Danny gets Ooh, away from ten it. Out. Ten zone. Huh? Ten zone. Oh, we are last man standing. Okay, hundred k. Hundred k. Let's go. No, no, hundred k. I won. Oh yeah. Ah. Oh, nice. Next time, all in together, and we go. <laughs> no. No. Seiji. I will final table. Gonna Under person, I will go final table. A little 100%. more snug on 200%. the defend 200%. against Chavero's <laughs> stack size. <laughs> I want you to, but you say 200% is too confident. <laughs> Did Santos just call his shot and say 100% I'm going to make the final table? Did I hear that right? Okay, do you like his side? Shall we uh, wager a little side bet? Well, there is a small issue at present, mm, I believe, like and that's the fact that he sits with just 10 bigs. <laughs> oh, you want me to lay you a price? Feels like it would be fair, though. But I'm he not called sure his one. shot, though. That's not enough. That's practically a guarantee, actually. L let me actually help you with that. He called his shot. I did not call his shot. Maria, as Tim Adams calls for 40,000 if you want to keep going, which no one does, I would imagine. Yeah. I want to take a moment to acknowledge those of you who are streaming today's coverage on our Triton Poker YouTube channel. Love to see the amount of enthusiasm for our product in terms of the 8,000 of you and change that are watching at present here on a Sunday across most of the globe, early or late. Appreciate you choosing to share that day with us and certainly would appreciate even more so taking just a few brief moments that are required to hit the like button, help make sure that the Algo continues to shine favorably upon our YouTube channel. And of okay. course, don't hesitate 
to hit subscribe as well. Yes. Make sure you don't miss oh. any of what we have on offer here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Tang, so excited to find a decent hand off of seven big blinds. Puts it in the middle. Oh, we see Adams is going to certainly give him a spin. I'm ahead. Head up. Three now, okay? I didn't hit a six, no problem. How about a three? How's a three? Or he just don't hit, how about that? How's that? Yeah? Yeah, you don't two, need anything, four, you're ahead. Five. How's that? Two, four, five. No. Oh. Not at all. Queen then. How's the queen? <laughs> don't even try to win anymore. Top, queen. Queen ball. Nope, yep. Stand up now. Yep, I'm walking away. Yep, you can put the free there. Yep, you can. Nope. <laughs> GG. GG. That might have been my favorite uh, no, bust out progression there. Obviously, never a favorite feeling to see Danny Tang leaving us as he does here at the hands of the ace jack for Tim Adams. As now. Just 39 remain here in the main. Looks like Tim Adams also on that peppermint tea-ish. Is it a run good thing, perhaps? You know, just like your lucky Buddha, is this their form of? I, I just hear whispers that the peppermint tea here is fire. And we've yet to have an opportunity to indulge. Tea much better for you than coffee. Ace four for Rodrigo Seiji. Chavetto, pretty short, 14 bigs in the big line, 10 7 offsuit. Gonna come along. Ten nine four. Both players connecting here. Advantage Chavero, but happy to check with the flow of play. Over to Rodrigo Seiji. You wonder if Seiji wants to check back sometimes here. Doesn't want to play a big pot. Also realizing that Chavero will have a lot of these middling cards when he defends. You know, going to be folding out the weakest part of his range when you only have 14 big lines. Things but getting better and better for Chavero. As he moves to 10s and 7s. Will get busy himself now. He was, he was. Yeah. Surprised to see Seiji call here with the ace four, just keeping him honest for at least one street as we see Chavero goes to sevens full of tens, but that is one of those cards that doesn't complicate the texture and as such could lead to maybe another call on the river here, Maria. Yeah, Seiji feeling like there's going to be a lot of semi bluffs coming from Chavero, you know, some 8x, some jack x. But against this shove, when the river pairs, Seiji's still beating said semi bluffs from the turn. Of course, all of those gutties missing, all of those straight draws missing. Still a pretty 
Pretty weak bluff catcher. Pretty unfortunate that the river did pair the seven, though. You know, a lot of other cards that roll off will just make this ace four look even worse for the wear. 185K the sizing. Especially because you Pulling. don't, Pulling. yeah, you don't think a 9x is going to shove old. here. Thank you, Paul. Paul Nicole, let's go, guys, in the back, please. Well, Seiji just making sure that that last 5k did get stuck in there just in case. I am not quite clear on the motive. Yeah, kind of surprised. Did you know, a lot of times players will just let their opponent leave that chip back when they don't have the nuts, of course. I mean, there's just no world in which I think we get a call for that last 5K from a hand that we beat. Nevertheless, we journey forward with Chavero doubling through Seiji and us taking a moment to remind you that our event is brought to you by Poker Stake, the official staking partner of the Triton Super High Roller Series and the ultimate platform for both staking and professional poker players around the globe. With no fees on any purchases, and all winnings guaranteed by Poker Stake, it truly is the best of what's around. Check out PokerStake.com now and stake your champion. You ever sell action, Maria, on these platforms? Mm, I think maybe once or twice I sold like a 5% or, you know, $500 worth of action just because Josh Arie asked me, you know, to put up something on the site. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's fun to give some fans action for sure. And I think these sites are able to allow all kinds of players to sell. But no, generally speaking, I don't sell action. Just wow, how cocky slow. are you? <laughs> 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 Only kidding, of course. It is a bit of a push-pull exercise though, because for those that are expected to be winning players, which are the players that obviously will be most attractive to people who want to do the staking, you don't feel particularly incentivized, but it is one way to lower variance for a pro. Obviously, we've seen some pretty savage downswings throughout the years. Here we see an all-in for 90K from Leonard Mao. Ace, queen, Brian Kim, cut off king, queen suited. Brian Kim just deciding if he wants to call or ISO. Looks like he's going to make the call. And Chavero, fresh off of that double up. Just over 30 bigs now. Has a nice hand in the small blind. Well, Leonard going to get more action than he bargained for, probably, but in pretty good shape against these hands. Jorstad, even with deuces here, wondering if it could be worth it for him with 20K invested to come along. So. The main pot is complete as ace queen will have a shot at 380,000 here. A lot of Broadway combo interference and the deuces of Espen Jorstad are in front on a three way dry side. Betting. No change to the running order, but obviously developments for Brian Kim now with the club draw. Yeah, with the dry side pot, you see these players trying to check it down and eliminate Leonard in this spot. Kim with the decision, though, with all of that equity here on the turn. 
But the trouble is nothing to fight for in terms of the side, right? It just dissuades us from putting anything out there. So the check back and a clean run out for your stat <laughs> is somehow. Unbelievable. Deuces are best. And it will be showers for the German Mao. Once we're on our backs. Proudly turn over those deuces, Espen. Any chance? Oh, well, when the man's on his feet taking his microphone off, yes, <laughs> indeed. Very much a chance as LFG declared by Espen there, who picks up the 380. Brisk clip on the, the departure dogs. walk there from Leonard, obviously. Not thrilled. 37 now. remain now. With, uh, high stakes. King nine suited as Poland's Wiktor Malinowski, the one they call limitless when he's got his mouse in hand, opens. And Dan DeVoris is certainly not going to be limited in terms of 40K being the price to proceed. Devoris with the flat, with pocket queens, perhaps inviting some squeezes, but also certainly a little underrepped if Paul decides to just call from the big blind with the suited ace. Cool. He does just that. And my presumptuousness immediately put in check by Devoris on balance with the flat invites oh, wow. Paul what in and somehow setup? top set against Holy two flushes cannoli I mean this is unfair for Wichter for Devoris this is like poker's equivalent of the origins of the universe in terms of big bang nut flush Second nut flush, top set, 170 in the middle, buckle up. And Paul seeing this bet and a call in front of him feels like his hand is just too strong to fast play. Well, certainly. Why let anybody check out of this one? But he's hoping that there's no action killers on the turn, which sometimes, you know, would lead to somebody electing to perhaps race to disguise also the strength, but also some action killers on the turn. That's not going to be one of them. Absolutely not. As a modest 60K on top of the existing 150, works its way into the middle. And certainly Malinowski, every reason to just go bet, bet, bet here as the pre-flop aggressor. He's the dead man walking here. Devoris still draws live. Yeah, and Malinowski knows that there's some vulnerability, not, not necessarily putting Paul just on the nut flush here, but with two callers, the ace of clubs, can be out there hoping for a fourth club to roll off. So Malinowski not taking any chances. Going to try to charge those hands. You're finished? Uh, yeah. Can't blame him for so sending good. a hopeless 160 forward. Malinowski winning, willing to continue against two players. 
Yeah, can do it in five minutes as well. So. DeForest. He's so tremendously underrepped here, and it is tough to flop a flush, Maria, but perhaps not one but two players taking the turn leaves us with a bit more pause. Yeah, Devore's wondering, you know, if he chooses to raise here, you know, what hands is he getting protection from versus what hands are just going to be in there that has him beat as unlikely as it seems. So you see just the call from Devoris, and now you wonder, Paul, he's sitting here with the nut flush. He's like, what did the other two have? Yeah. And when you wonder what the other two have, do we begin to assign set and flush to the equation, or is that just too rich? I think that's too rich, but I think certainly, you know, other flushes can be out there in a multi-way situation. You know, perhaps not going to give Melanowski a lot of credit sometimes if it were a heads-up situation, but here certainly should have a stronger range betting into two people. So might Paul feel like there's going to be enough value out there even if he makes his hand look very strong and fast play now on the turn, but still coming with the call, still unsure as to how strong his opponent's holdings can be. Whatever they are, they don't have his ace four beat, and that remains the case as the board fails to pair for DeVoris. 690 in the middle, sub one SPR for Paul, the shortest of the remaining three stacks in this three-way. And now you see he's deliberating. Do I need to lead here? Am I going to get some checks behind me? It's going to look absurdly strong if he leads now, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, and for whatever sizing, but let alone this one, which is most of his stack. <laughs> look at Malinowski's face. Just cannot believe that this lead is happening. There's this isn't 4-5, no is it? No, there's no way that Paul would lead here into two people, given all the action on the flop and the turn, without at least a flush in Malinowski's mind. But just a matter of does he have the flush? The only flush that beats him. And this is that awful feeling when you hold the second nuts and are left asking yourself, how many combinations other than the nuts am I facing as played? And might this save DeVoris some of his chips? Probably not going to very comfortably find an overcall with top set. No, you're absolutely right about that. This is just a line that would be suicidal for Paul to take without it. You know, I don't think there's going to be any straights that are going to call twice with the flush out there ready. No straight draw will continue through the turn. Oh, this is so incredibly uncomfortable for Devoris's hand. Yeah. As more of Malinowski's platoon meets its maker, courtesy of the call. Just an incredibly ambitious line that Paul would take this with just the naked ace of clubs as well. So just feels like a zero bluff spot. Calm, 
on the face of Paul Fua, standing in stark contrast to the tension worn on the face of Dan DeVoris. The fate of 475,000 of his soldiers hanging in the balance. Had Paul not led into the two of them on the river, the Malinowski bet the river, I don't think divorce would have gotten away, but here makes the correct fold. Yeah. Yeah, An absolutely dynamite <laughs> development there for boss Paul Fua. No, I check you better. Yeah, of course. What is kind of <laughs> You have a flash too? <laughs> You'll see soon. <laughs> Snap recognizing that Devoris isn't tanking there with less than a set. Three flashes. Maybe. Jack, you're a flush too. Huh? Huh? You're a flush. King have flush. Check have flush. Huh? Yeah. Flush. Uh, yeah. 1.6 million. Maybe all in on the third. So you'll have to fight. Going over to Paul, and I would imagine the boys are going to be chatting about that hand for quite some time. Devoris tight lipped about what he put into the bin. So we flip back over to one that's brewing between Brian Kim and Tim Adams. BK. Top and bottom pair here on the ace high board after defending the big here at the 10 20 level. Adam's going to take his shot, try to rep the ace. 35K. Kim just going to make the call with two pair. Adams only beating, you know, the king, queen, king, jack type hands that will continue. You don't think any pairs worse than sevens will continue very often. Some six X's might be in there, but again, not beating 10 X and of course, ace X. So the knuckle back on the turn from Adams as Kim fails to induce. <coughs> I assume Kim will come with the lead now and can only hope to get called by perhaps some 10 X's that Adams might play this way. You know, when you are blocking top pair and Adams does check back on the turn, it's very unlikely that he's going to have the strong ace X's. And on the flip side, Adams probably will wonder if Kim turns some of those Broadway gutters into bluffs on the river, those being the only hands he can beat. Hundred fifty K into a hundred and eighty K. All the two pair combos available to Kim, of course, from the big blind, we'll call ace 10, ace six. And we'll also have some stronger ace X's, you know, hands that aren't gonna three bet against an under the gun open. You know, even ace jack, ace queen would just call pre-flop from the big blind in a lot of situations. So it does feel like there's quite a bit of value.
You see Tim a little bit thrown off by this? Well, he could be the king, queen, king, jack, queen, jack hands, right? And <clears throat> wow. Oh. I mean, I did not expect this, though. Well, he does have the two sevens in hand, and um, the yeah. five seven, obviously, I'm just putting it out there, the seven nine. I don't know how many times Tim Adams is going to be opening those combinations Agreed. suited from under the gun, but could have rivered a set of yeah. eights. Pocket eights specifically feels like the one hand that maybe Brian Kim would be concerned about as plate, reconstructing it. Under the gun, min raise open from Adams. A defense from BK. Aces and sixes. Check calls the 35K C bet. Knuckle, knuckle on the turn. And now this 150 on the river gets piled on. Especially, 335 effective. Especially when you consider what Kim has back. It feels almost like a spot nobody would ever take as a bluff here. That's precisely what makes it so compelling, though. I mean, Tim is a savage. I always say this. Not that he's underrated because everybody knows how good Tim is, but he has the heart to be able to pounce in these spots where nobody could have predicted he would come with this line, with well, this reverse shove. Listen, Brian Kim is far from a slouch. This is a man who very much can come with calls sitting on less than aces up. Good sniff. But is the odor in the air here? Those are just time banks, says Kim. Understanding this is going to require a lot of care. I mean, this type of shove on the river just never going to be one pair hands, obviously. But, you know, what two pair combos does Adams even have here? Really, it feels like it's just got to be a set. I mean, I know you mentioned some of those straights and him blocking them with the seven, which is why he's choosing to turn his hand into a bluff, but certainly not able to credibly rep those himself, given an under-the-gun opening range. I don't think he expects a strong two pair such as this to fold very often. I don't think he's targeting that. I think he's really just targeting an ASEX type holding. Excuse me. You know, maybe this is just a randomized call spot, even though Tim Adams should not have that many bluffs as played. But if you're just so on the fence, what else are you to do if you think it's close? I hate this for Brian. I hate that he's up against maybe one of five players, I think, in the field that would take this line on the river. Let's see what he settles on. So Brian Kim finds the call as Adams gave it everything that he had and how big a moment is that as it was for his tournament life. And go on and hydrate. So I can imagine a little bit of cotton mouth comes courtesy of that valiant effort from Tim Adams on the river. Two of the greats advantage Brian Kim on this occasion. Got to applaud Tim for going for it. And I think it would have worked against, you know, just top pair hands that 
Ryan could have gone for value there with. Hi, gents, we introduce you fast action. I believe you'll play with it, but if you have any questions or if you didn't, So, Luca, bringing forward. You'll play with it already, right? The red time banks, fast action system. One of the advents of this specific stop on the Triton Super High Roller Series. Those time banks can be used pre-flop in unopened pots as we now have 10 seconds to act in those situations. In the interests of speeding play as 33 remain with 27 paid. Soft bubble. Ryan Kim up to ninth overall in the field when the dust settled on that last pop. And as we're approaching the money, just taking a look at the chip distribution, you know, not a whole lot of really short stacks, just two people under 10 big lines, Tony Trong and KCG. Bads with 11 big blinds, but Kulev, Savarna, Polk, all between 16 to 18 big blinds. Things certainly going to slow down, but not when Savarna oh, has kings. Yeah, jams his 340,000 over the top of the Yorstad Open. I feel like this is just too many bigs to call off with Queen Jack here. You gotta think your opponent's gonna be somewhat out of line in order to make that call profitable. Full service 40K delivery there from Espen. Taking a peek at how the festival has gone thus far for Santosh Suvarna Maria. First four events Eight. failed to cash. No. Broke the seal in the 60K7 max with a 12th place finish for 112,000. <laughs> yeah. Didn't make the money in the 20 and 30K. And then, of course, in the 250K Luxon Pay Invitational, he finished 20th for 371,000, bringing his career Triton track record to almost 3.1 million. Oh. Nine caches and one title. Now then, 10 9 offsuit from the hijack. Nick Shulman opens. King Queen suited for Ignacio Chavero. on the right side of that Rodrigo Seiji exchange. Working off of 460 back, he flops himself two overs and the flush draw up against top pair. Action checked over to Nick. Sitting with two and a half million. He can well afford to cobble away here. Going half pot here, making it tough for some overcard equity to continue for this sizing, but the kind that Chevetto has with the flush draw, never gonna go anywhere. Turn, fails to assist. It's the 35K. Yeah, but nice for Shulman to have the 9-8 blocked here. I already ordered, thank you. Yeah, delivering a gutty. 
two, Nick. Is that six of hearts? Another 70 slid into the middle. Pot growing to 180. Interesting choice of line here from Ignacio Maria as he now comes out swinging. Perceived range advantages as a big blind. Yeah, there's defender. also going to be just so many two pair combos I think that he could have here. You know, hands that flop one pair, the six really sliding in there on the coordination front, making it pretty scary for a variety of hands that Shulman could have. So the flat from Shulman and disaster, is it? No, forgive me. Thought it was the other paint. It's the Jack of Hearts. Safe. Awkward position now for Chavetto having taken the betting lead. Do we feel compelled to swing once more? Yeah, exactly pot back actually for Chavetto now. Taking this line and wondering if he's able to get some of these hands to fold the 10 X's, the one pair hands. Just feels like there's not enough there that he can get the shove through on. You know, Shulman can certainly have the 9-8 himself, right? 9-8 suited are gonna be opens from the hijack. Sets available to Shulman as well. You wonder if sets might just raise the turn given the texture, but still. Shulman curious if he might need to turn his hand into a bluff if he's up against some weak two pairs, but is gonna find nice showdown here. Yeah, you saw a little bit of a wince there, bracing for impact after the check back, wondering if the 9-10 would be victorious, which he's relieved to see that it is. So moving northward is Shulman, currently third in chips overall. As we flip it back to the feature. I can't see Gina ever play with him. Fine. Then I free bet, and then you ask Most me how the table, I never play with. I played with Bren. I played a lot with Bren. I didn't see you cut it. Over the years. Okay, well, you were Absolutely. looking at my stack. It was pretty easy to well, see. I, it and then you asked me how much I started anyway, with. Doesn't matter. And then you shoved, and Sorry, I asked bro. you how much you started with. And your answer is that it was oh. pretty easy to see. Do you see how that doesn't quite line up? I don't oh. have to answer you. You, you don't? don't? You don't usually answer me when I ask you. Well, in, in certain spots anyway. All right, well, I cut the stack for you. Me too, the my stack was perfectly cut. What you were talking about. <laughs> Aces for Doug Polk and slight bit of contentiousness oh. between Devoris and Ole Shemi on there. Yeah, sounds like maybe... <sighs> Ooh. Mm. Something about what Shemian might have had back, what was in his stack. Vice versa. Five seconds. Yeah, something to do with the manner in which mutual chip counts were being solicited. Oh. Rubbing Devoris the wrong way, and two queens are going to be rubbing the wrong way for Chidwick. Mind you, an ace queen for Shemion. Now, the good news for Stevie is he's got Doug Polk covered. Same story for Shemion, but Stevie has Ole covered. 115. Ole looking over quickly to see mm. what Polk raised off of, how many chips, what was the effective stack. 18 big lines for Polk to start the hand. Does he have some raised folds off of that stack? And is Chidwick perhaps targeting that? Shemian with a real decision with 34 big lines. And, you know, based on how short Shemian was earlier when we were at this table, it would stand to reason that he might have doubled through Dvoris, and maybe that caused that little bit of Well, in Dan's contention. defense, uh, Maria, 
getting doubled through is not what's going to be responsible right. for, for his sentiments. No, it's more that's so where they got the chip count Something situation. ancillary, yeah, yeah, as we do see the jam come forward from Shemian. What a delight this is oh. for Doug Polk. Just going to take a little bit of time. Never come with the snap call, of course. Got to be balanced here with no. the aces. Go through the same motions that you would in any other situation. Wow. A lot of action on the soft bubble here. Very much. A lot of setups. And there is going to be, you know, a side pot for Chidwick having Ole dominated, but going to be in bad shape against the aces. Now the time banks. Not that they're necessary because we know Maria Chidwick goes nowhere with these two queens. A real Oscar winning performance here from Polk before the all-in. I'm gonna go more with a Golden Globe, perhaps okay. even an Emmy. I don't know that this rises to the level of an Academy issued piece of hardware, but nonetheless, yeah, these, predictable. <laughs> these hands were gonna play themselves, but it, Polk is right. Shemian having one of the queens in his hand. It's not rate right to be great for Chidwick's hopes of flopping a set. Mind you, there is a side pot of 620,000 out there. Chidwick has Ole covered and continues to have the lead over the ace queen on the jack jack four board. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Feels like showers for Shemion, barring the Broadway draw on the turn, which he does not hit. So that'll do it for the German. And one lone out. All Doug Polk needed to fade in order to complete his double. A little north of one million goes his way. 620 headed toward Chidwick. And Ole Shemion headed toward the exits. No, Dvoris, not exactly first in line to issue a GG in that spot. Can't blame him. I'm sure he's thinking the Karma Police issuing citations out there as we get a sneak peek at our next featured table where David Yan, Nacho Barbero, Webster Lim, Jungle, Yuri. Oh, wait a minute. David Yan's not gonna be a part of that party. As it appears, he's just been showered. Action, fast and furious here. Yeah. Might not be uh, too prolonged of a bubble phase if this keeps up. Efforting the way that one came down. It was pocket threes for Juan Pardo against the queens of David Yan. Ace track 10 flop and then a filthy three on the turn. Yan still drew live to a queen or a king. Instead, the board paired on the end in the form of an ace. And the overpairs not faring quite as well here at our outer table. And we will stay here. Brito Silva. Also going to be working his way to that feature table along with the crew. So then, absent one Ole Shemion, there are the chip counts. As Doug Polk has himself over 50 big blinds, running in third. Boss Paul Pua at the top, and Devoris with just 14 bigs. He would have had less than that if he had click call with those two queens when that top set flush flush hand 
showed up. Absolute setup that was. Shout out, by the way, to a member of the Booth Brethren. Man, I like to call the Reaper, courtesy of his work at the World Series of Poker this summer. Jeff Platt, ah. Maria, out there streaming our coverage and gave us a little praise, and by us I mean me, for the <laughs> snap call of Alesso when Danny Tang was humming it. Though I'll allow you to indulge as well. It felt like you knew the track. I feel like you might be uh, out late a couple of nights more than I am during the summer. Sounds like you. I, I don't go frequency clubbing. In the club. I don't. I don't. The club comes to me, <laughs> Maria. No, I. Those years are behind us. We logged some good times on the dance floor, once upon a time. But some. Oh yeah, you still got the moves though, because not at the club. Not at the club. It was at a bar though, a couple years ago. Where, where were we? You certainly broke it down for the young kids. <laughs> As did you, I recall, on that particular evening. There will be four more breakdowns between now and the money bubble as 31 remain here in the main event. And I was like, uh, if it's everything about that clock is wrong, maybe you can just turn them off. He's like, can't even do that at the moment. We're just completely locked out. We had playing the PLO. It had the right number of players remaining. The blind levels were 10x what they were, so um, it's not on me, right? No. Okay. Resuming right, action. Uh, Malinowski. Pocket tens. Hajiev was in a bad way with the queen ten. Gets out of there. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Jack nine suited for Dvoris in the cutoff. Seconds. <coughs> I will defend if it's not break. Any good? Yeah, good defend. Ah, <laughs> running good. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and on the background. Small victories. <laughs> we see boss. Yeah, you know what see. Laying down the queen five. He's sitting pretty, looking to coast his way into the money. As you get. One more peek at the counts. Lun Lun having joined that table. Blinds are going to be headed up to 10 and 25,000 momentarily as the players are headed for a break, which means we are headed back to the desk here at the JW Marriott Grovener House on Park Lane. Ali Najad, Maria Ho. Can't forget Lucky Buddha from Shaman O'Dwyer also here. And that was uh, quite a bit of carnage that we bore witness to. The bulk of my focus, of course, coming in terms of the flush, flush set hand, the one that I think really was the, I don't know if it was a high point or the low <laughs> point, but the focal point of that frame. That was just an absurd setup hand, unavoidable. But Devoris managing to get away for that river bet on the end. And, you know, we did see that big collision between Oli Shemian, Doug Polk, Stephen Chidwick. Stephen came out. I think even on the accounting with the side pot, but that really helped Doug Polk get through this next phase, which is nearing the money. Doug was a little bit short, but now very comfortable with an over 50 big blind stack. Fast action system in play. Min cash for 27th is going to be $189,000. All of that information, of course, available to those of you at home as well, courtesy of a download of the Triton Poker Plus app. Maybe something that if you haven't already done, you can do as we step aside. When we return, a brand new feature table and the path to the money bubble a bubble which we expect to burst during this third frame for maria and i so keep it close back with more coverage of the hundred twenty five thousand dollar main event after this <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. Poker song, the biggest event. poker song. 
It reaches all time five. Jump, 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 jump. No One of my favorite ways to understand GTO strategies is to look at the expected value of different plays. Whenever you see a spot to GTO Wizard, you can hit this drop down and select Strategy plus EV. For example, opening Ace-10 offsuit from under the gun is worth about 9 big blinds per 100, but opening Ace-9 offsuit loses about 5 big blinds per 100. Ace-8 loses about 14, and this is why it's important to understand the bottom of your range and think about which plays actually make money and which plays are pretty close to break even. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Desperate times, could have used 30. that. 30. Now, we get our first look at Rodrigo Seiji. All in. All in. 30K open and KT with the short stack. Jams it. I suppose 17 bigs could be considered deep enough to have some Three bets. Two picture is declared after Rodrigo makes the call with the sevens. We'll play for 540,000. It's about as good as Rodrigo could have hoped for in this spot. Excuse me. And Rodrigo's hopes of showering KT grow grim. Wait, I had one at a peppermint. This is green. Peppermint, yeah. Ducks. Thank you. Ox. King. Oh. 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 What is Ox is this? Oh. Oh. How do you say? I don't know. How do you say? Oh, oh, you gotta love kind of on a rat before, by the way. I mean, I'm trying to say hold. Just one of the nicest guys. Yeah. And we flip it back like, over to Dvoris yeah, and company. They, 
uh, compete at like seven or something. Dirty diaper. But you're, you're, you're like a meal Into the away bin. from passing out at three. And you're always, you're like Perhaps some scratching their temples wondering why away. it is that the yeah. words dirty diaper would have crossed my lips in that situation. Uh, the Deuce Three like offsuit, super very much christened shut down under six. the dirty diaper by one Nick Rigby of World Series of Poker main event fame. Deep run again here this year. Plays that hand like it's his religion and to great effect on occasion. As we see another King Ten suited, this time in club form in front of Victor Malinowski. Rocking the Louis V. Monogram jumper, one and a half million. Jammed in there, Grafton. King Jack suited in a great way here. Ready to play for his remaining 405. No fear. <laughs> you would all surprised that Grafton would be willing to get it in there. 26 bigs against the button open range of Malinowski. Finds himself in great shape. No, I think against the button open, King Jack suited is a very nice shove. Certainly don't expect to be dominated he very often when you call, so this is diamond, definitely like, best-case right, scenario, but going to be live. Wow. <laughs> oh, man, the pulse weakens. Two clubs on the flop. And, and you have to understand that. <laughs> and now like, an open-ender to go with the flush draw for Malinowski. As a runner. We can I hardly said, contain well, the outs. Got to fade a six, they Jack, a club. On top of it. Oh, oh, and the six. On the river. Not a nice run out. Uh, Got the money in good. Like That's flexing. A dearth of like if mango. Which is one of my butter. faves. Mm. Get the mango in there. Have you ever it. had mango with some tahini on it? Yeah, of course. I, I lived in L.A. I know all about pulling off the freeway and seeing somebody with a little cart, a bunch of ice, and for $5, you can get a massive heaping cup. And then the lime is the real key, by the mm -hmm. way. Now, I'm going to give you a pro hack. Salt on fruit makes it sweeter. The That's Japanese chili seasoning, togarashi, oh. with lime on mango. Try it. Thank me later. Meanwhile, King Jack offsuit on the button for Chidwick. Upstairs we go. Shemian, 13 big blinds, has had to pass up on a few spots already, but this one, I think, is going to go in. Going to be... Some raised folds in Chidwick's range here from the button. This one feels like a call, yep. So, Shemian, going to be given a spin here by Stevie. Danger zone lights on. Well, that deems the small blind ace four adequate. In turn, Stevie felt the same about his King Jack, although those feelings may be changing on a deuce three, four, two club flop where a pair of fours and a wheel draw leave Shemian further in front. That's the only safe paint Almost. available to Ole. <laughs> now just needs to fade a king or jack, which he has done. So, a double <coughs> for Shemian. He tries to wriggle his way back up to a more playable stack. Did win the 50K 8 max earlier at this festival. For Debatable just how close we were. I heard it was only a few votes away. Back when... We were voting on it? Yes, back when there was a delegation formed to ratify the Declaration of Independence. Listen... You didn't take 8th grade history class? Listen, I thought you were talking about the outcome of World War II. And I was like, I don't really think. And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series London from right here at JW Marriott Grosvenor House on Park Lane. Alina Jad, Maria Ho, and 31 remaining runners in this record-setting main event, a $125,000 buy-in 
working our way toward that money bubble. Just 27 will be paid. Let's take a peek under the hood, if you'd like, at the Triton Poker Plus app. We do have a couple of new featured tables coming your way. Let me get the red one loaded up there. But first and foremost, the man who we didn't really talk about much so far, and shame on us, given that he's the winner of the 250K Luxon Pay Invitational, front and center with 3.3 million plus in front of him. Maria Bryn Kenny, is it possible that he's going to repeat back-to-back -back titles? It's a bit premature, but my goodness. Well, a lot of those chips came courtesy of winning nines against Pedro's tens earlier. Mm -hmm. And maybe perhaps just an indication of the run good that Bryn is experiencing, not to take anything away from his skills, but also you have to run well in tournaments. And we saw yesterday at the final table of the Invitational, he experienced a lot of, you know, hands that just seemed like he was destined from jump yeah. to end up winning the whole tournament. Yeah, so and there's no shame in it. We would all love to sun run. We hear it all the time at the poker table. I would rather be lucky than good, and certainly being lucky, not anything that takes away from Bryn Kenny's talents. Looking at the other two names up toward the top of the leaderboard, we find James Chen from Taiwan, someone known to Randy. My time here at the desk, you mentioned that he flies a bit under the radar, but is a, a high-stakes sort of player. And, of course, who can overlook Nick Shulman? Already won a bracelet this summer in Las Vegas here at Triton. Once again, trying to do some damage. Third place stack right there. 2.45 million for him. And with multiple tables... Remaining, not all of which are being featured. We're going to cruise around and get a look at what's happening. There is the lion-hearted Tim Adams in the foreground coming through the frame. Obviously gave Brian Kim all he could handle with that big pocket sevens bluff. Brian, click call though, finds himself on 1.6 million as we march forward. There's Alex Kulev. Shulman, Santor Suvarna, in a slightly meditative state. I was going to say, maybe S just Santosh doesn't a get a lot of it. sleep right, on right. the Triton stops. <laughs> now here's Devoris, former feature table. Doug Polk, fresh off the double. Malinowski. Dealt the blow by the ace high flush for Paul Pua. Talked about it prior to the break. Still has one and a half million to operate off of. Lun Lun there as well, along with Stevie Hajiev. Now we zero in on Haxton, Ibinger, Bryn Kenny. Not yet in his seat there. Overall chip leader, that's his stack. In the foreground, that was Davies. Jean-Noël Terrell, JNT in the one hole. There is James Chen. Two and a half million for him. Tobias Schwecht was up toward the top of the leaderboard for some time, now it's sixth. Oya Masashi rounding out that semi-feature table and then panning over to the feature. Gave you a little peek at that crew prior to the break. It's more than a little peek here. Chip counts brought to you by Les Ambassadors Club. Laissez, Barbero, Bryn Kenny, Paul Poix. All leading the way at their respective tables. Shorties, if we can call them that, for Dan Smith and Ike Haxton, 31 and 26 big blinds deep. And then Devoris, of course, with 11 big blinds at the 10 and 25 level. 285 in front of him. Touched on it, Maria, but it could have been a lot worse for Devoris had Paul Pua decided to check the ace high flush. Malinowski comes with the big bet. Now Devoris gets caught, feeling like maybe he needs to make the call as opposed to an overcall as things actually shook out in that massive pot. And Devoris just hoping that he will get rewarded for that folds, perhaps 
by at least finishing in the money is the shortest stack remaining of the 31 players. First look at Dan Cates, jungle man, Jack 10 suited, seated to Webster Limbs right, in turn, Dan Smith. One behind that. Hmm. Wonder what they're giggling about over there. Whatever it is, you know I hate missing out on a good piece of humor or laughter-worthy development. Ace two suited here for Nacho on the button, deliberating. Barbero currently f currently fourth in chips overall. Shoots it up to 160. <laughs> okay, now I really want to know. <laughs> is Smith oh, getting I, a massage? I think I, no, oh, is it I think it's jungle with his hands. It, it must be his hands are dirty, and he can't really touch the chips. Did you see the awkward way in Did which... He, he couldn't possibly have ordered chicken wings, could he? As <laughs> just what we have in mind. I don't is put anything King past jungle. Cut shot, straight flush draw, and a pair. Nor do I, Maria, as the ace-deuce fails to get past him. Fairly poor composition. But undeterred, Barbero will bet 100K. All right, we have got to find out what he's eating. What could possibly be that messy? Well, Ace Deuce of Spades is quite messy. As it stands, Jungle improves to trip Jax. Yeah, perhaps this Jack of concern for Barbero. Cates will certainly have some Jack X's here that he'll check call the flop with. Check back from Barbero on the turn. Now he hits the deuce and look at Jungle. Looking to induce. Checks this river. Yeah, hoping that, you know, when checked twice too, that a hand like King X might try to go for value here, but Barbero just trying to take time. showdown. Is there? Yes. <laughs> Allegations of card stains? Maybe it came off when you table them. I think it's a somewhat frowned upon to eat food with your hands at the table. You know, but I've seen some schmutz from time to time on a card, but I don't remember ever seeing a dollop yeah. of Caesar dressing, you know or perhaps a smear of barbecue sauce. But if I were at a table and I did discover such things, I certainly would look toward jungle as the primary suspect. Dan coming with a, did you know you're my seventh favorite player to play with? To Dan Smith. <laughs> Very precise <laughs> ranking system Kate's has. Strangely, I believe him <laughs> as Barbero. Doing a bit better against another Jack-10 suited for Kate's. Pocket eights. Flicks in a flat. Service. Can I get sparkling water and ice? Thank you. Uh, that was special. Look at this. A set of eights, the reward for Barbero. Interaction with the King of Spades for jungle. Follow through, 55K into 160. 
Very natural continue for Kate's range here, but also for the fact that there's going to be a lot of good turn cards that can appear. And if Nacho were up against, of course, King X or better, then he might be able to find some fast play. But because there's just going to be so many other hands in there that Kate's will continue with, Barbero choosing to slow play. Kate's now checking it over once he turns a pair of tens. Board texture on the flop so dry. Might not think that these tens are in any sort of trouble, but I would imagine the cutoff landing range for Barbero does contain some King X combos. Yeah, certainly King Queen suited, King Jack suited. Those types of hands that won't three bet, but will call and. Well, they won't three bet the under the gun open no. specifically. But obviously three bet worthy in other situations, one would imagine, as we see. Barbero obviously knows that a set of eights is very worthy of a barrel. 165K into 270. Understandable call from Jungle. Drawn dead. Doesn't improve. And the queen. Pesky at all for Kate's? I think that it's nice for Cates here that he actually blocks Ace-Jack because, you know, certainly Ace-Jack will be a part of the calling range pre-flop against an under-the-gun open and perhaps might continue on the flop with Ace-High, turn that equity with Broadway draws, but it's nice for Cates holding the Jack to not give Nacho too much credit for having the nuts here when the Queen appears on the river. But of course, some other hands that Nacho could go for value with. I think King Queen will still be in there, of course, for value. And of course, the set of eights, fours possible as well for Barbero. Coming with 385,000. Almost 60% pot here is the bet on the river. Just not a line that's going to contain too many bluffs. You know, perhaps some of the weak ace X that might have turned a flush draw. Perhaps, you know, the ace X of diamonds in this spot might go for the bluff here, blocking ace jack. But again, the king queen, the eights, the fours, they're all in there. Not going to expect one pair of hands to go for value on the river, but also the sizing not polarizing. <laughs> Kate doesn't like folding. No. But feels like there's just not enough bluffs there for Barbero. So when do we use that? Three hundred and eighty-five K. Not able to make a customer out of jungle. Grudgingly lays down. Thank you. I'm gonna try to predict the entire Huh? Is a seven a real list and just threw the number out arbitrarily. But I'm your seventh favorite player. Okay, there's no real list. Smith inquiring as to whether or not that seventh favorite player remark was. And would it have made a difference if you're going to like dict it? You know what I mean? An actual. Technical list. I mean, it doesn't make much. Looking good in the Triton bucket hat, by the way, is Smith. 
A lot of people have been rocking up with the bucket hats, and you wonder, is this trend becoming too popular too fast? Are too many people wearing it? Does that make it a little less trendy? There's a threshold. Well, There's a turning point. You wonder. Is I don't know that everyone does. No <laughs> wonder required in terms of Yuri Zivilevsky's feelings on pocket jacks. Not a trend, not a fad, just a solid hand. And in the face of a button open, able to take it upstairs is Zivilevsky. And now the pocket fives. Turning into strobe light, honeys. <laughs> but note the position, Silva, button, Zivileski, three bet. I mean, if we weren't getting close to the money, I feel like Jungle Man might have had some devilish thoughts creep into his mind. Yuri certainly doesn't need to be as strong as he is to target a button open. Oh, no. We know what people like to do with these suited ASEX well, wheel we know type combos. What computers like to do. I don't know that people <laughs> feel the same way about it, but they just tend to follow along with the math what you doing? Not so. and the AI. What you doing? What about the Brazilian factor? That's gonna cost How does money. that rate You're in terms me. of I wish you would, I you. aggression? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the jam from Silva. Yuri, a quick peek back at the two jacks. We'll make the call and note that these were similar stack depths. Silva won't be showered, but will be awfully short. My hand wasn't too if good. he doesn't improve, as we'll play for almost 1.8 here yeah. with Zivilevsky well in front. Yep. That's some piece of shit. So to the flop we go in a cannibalistic Brazilian development here. Queen 4 3, a pair for Pablo. Oh. oh! The ace on the turn. Pablo with a bit of a smirk, but a guilty look on his face as the jack fails to show up on the river. Were is the key yeah. word here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Past tense. I think, I think we are. Well, here's what I'll say about that exchange. For those that might be tempted from time to time to think that because there are little subsets, clicks, if you will, in the super high stakes community, Maria, that, oh, there's soft play from time to time, you know, anything of that nature. Circle that pot. <laughs> Brazilian delegation going hard at one another there, and love that Yuri recognizes that perhaps if we were in uh, we can one another's seats, it would have played out the same way. You can feel comfortable with that. But what he's not going to be feeling is a min cash or better. As he is the 31st victim here, and now we are just three away from the money bubble as we flip it back to our semi-feature table. Yeah, I can't take anything personal. You know, people are going to play the spots the way that they should, and sometimes unfortunate things happen between friends at the table. Yep. Poker is an individual sport, save for the tag team events, but... Davies raising to 55,000 with the ace jack. JNT resists. More bucket hat action. We have Masashi. Big blind queen six off of just north of 700. About 30 bigs to start this one. Bryn. Did you have one paint card just now? 
You fold it kind of high. Done. I think I kind of saw something. Just try to fold a bit lower. I'm not sure. Okay, it could cool. be. Huh? I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember. Oh no, I had no paint cards. Before. Okay, it might it might have been just the back of the card, and I miss miss saw it when it like. That's have yeah, no yeah. paint card for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it must have been like the, anyway. the back or something. Yeah. Fast action system in play, so pre-flop decisions are kept to 10 seconds. Not going to need all 10 to open with ace king. Bryn, don't don't do this when you fold. You, when you do this, when you fold, you you, you oh, and like you, yeah, I realized like actually when I did yeah. it, like flashed up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I don't care. <laughs> I was like, I, I forgot it wasn't the main event, and then I just happened away, and then it was like, oh, man. Oh, so I can get one. I just got to win yeah, this. You just got to win this. There it is. Oh, okay. I was going to just pick it and sneak oh, it to you. Oh, okay, but, you know, that's I think easy. I got in trouble. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Let's see, what do I get over here? Masashi. Small blind ace 10. Trophies are right, though. Five hundred. <laughs> Needs a little color to it. Masashi. Morning. Committing a lot of his stack and is going to hate this. Yeah. Five hundred of his seven fifteen pushed forward. Absolute loathsome development in terms of the snap jam from JNT. Who's oh, yeah, on his feet and all over. Masashi's That's crazy. ace like, ten. Stuff in Japan that they have nowhere else. Maybe just a little bit. Too much aggression from Masashi. Feeling like JNT might be opening light as we near the bubble. Okay. Queen Jack six, was it? A little life, perhaps. Broadway Looking. Gutty, hunting a cowboy. Both players hit the ace. King still plays. No drama. Queen pairs on the river as it's the end of the road for Oya Masashi. And we are that much closer to the money. Just 29 remaining. You know, some might look at Oya's decision to take that aggressive high variance approach in that specific spot this close to the money bubble and have criticisms. But there is some player dependency there perhaps as JNT does have a bit of a reputation for getting splashy from time to time. Maria, of course, on that occasion, he had it. There's going to be situations where, of course, the bigger stacks will have quite a few race folds in late position when we are close to the bubble here, but I don't know. You wonder if Masashi could have just found a smaller three bet, non all in sizing, non committing sizing, where he could easily fold to a jam and leave himself enough back to hold out until we're in the money. No holding out for the big stack of Bryn Kenny under the gun, 10-9 suited. Davies understands that Bryn could be looking to chip up and chip up. With his two sixes, he'll flat. Davies fifth overall in chips right now. Rather unfortunate for Bryn, by the way, Maria, to be seated with so many of the other big stacks in the event. James Chen, second overall. Tobias Schwecht, fourth overall. Davies. Fifth, Jean Noel Torel, sixth. Table draw certainly has significance in this stage where how much you can abuse the bubble and how easily you can chip up during this period will be affected by who's at your table and in what positions.
So it's heads up and a set of sixes against two overs in the gut shot. The development with 190 in the middle. No diamond on board, obviously, makes the gutter less attractive, but Bryn knows that there's so much pressure that he can apply. Starts to ratchet to the tune of 60,000. And does block some of the over pairs as well that will have easy continues, you know, blocking nines and tens and feeling like he might have heard from Davies pre-flop if Davies had kings plus. Board pairing eight. Now fills Davies in and Bryn draws dead. Has to be a little bit worried. Of course, you know, Davies will have some flush draws here. Some of the suited broadways that he'll continue with pre-flop. It would have been. But he also has eight sixes and fours and I would, I would have to being as deep as they are to start the hand well. over 80 I'm bigs sure here value, but, in know, Davies' river, stack. I thought of turning it into a black. I know, Do you see the slowdown oh, as a result? Yeah. yeah. On this, you can't really, but like, yeah. yeah. But, uh, Either you're yeah. trapping me there yeah. or yeah. I have yeah. you beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like this and get fucked. Yeah. Kenny pumps the brakes, I wanted Maria. <laughs> I wanted to do something. Perhaps recognizing the Davies' but willingness right. you, to flat the under-the-gun open but and then proceed yeah. on an 8-6-4 board. Could be attached to some strength. Especially at this phase here. Could still have some two away from brushes, the money. Not, not like, uh, 80K. Quite Seth. small. Yeah, look oh, and attempt, Bryn. In the royal wants to keep some. all of the ace highs in there. Perhaps the hands that have two overs and some draws. Considering he has the draws drawing dead. Wants to get as much value. Whoa! You know, it's so funny. I. You had a feeling? I really did. But maybe Davies had a feeling, which is why he went for this inducing well, type sizing. That's exactly right. I, I think Seth really appropriately recognizing that downsizing here comes not just with the benefit of tempting a light call, but also tempting something valiant out of a man who is capable. And that's exactly what we he see here as 465K incinerates itself. Davies willing to play the game for one more street, feigning a little bit of weakness. And maybe that's all Bryn needs to pounce on, on the river. And to that river we go. 1.2 and change in there. And the ace of spades fills in the flushes. A little over pot back for Davies. And you wonder how often Kenny thinks Davies has a flush here that he's willing to bet really small with the flush draw and call a pretty sizable raise. And he isn't giving up Maria as the 845K river bet, obviously isn't cozy necessarily for Seth, especially when you know that Bryn's range is gonna be pretty wide, although how often do we expect pocket aces or ace eight to take a line like this? Let alone spades, not that we're worried about the spades, but Davies just gonna take a moment here. It's also about how Often are you going to get called by worse when you come with the jam here? You know, would a hand like trip eights even call once the flush appears? Or would you only get called by boats? 
Maybe hoping that Bryn has force full here. And Kenny feeling like Davies isn't really going to have many flushes here, won't really get to the river here after that check raise on the turn. So really not expecting Davies to have boats very often or quads in this spot. Really the, yeah, the only decision was between call or jam for Seth Davies. He ends up going with the jam and in the words of Gordon Gecko, Maria, Greed is good. <laughs> and so is six is full as the 10 high snap finds the muck. And that is something few have been able to do on the day. We're catching Show up two hands. That Bryn Kenny is human. There's two, right? And that big bite taken out of him will catapult Seth Davies to the top of the leaderboard and send Bryn reeling. I have it in the Down into sixth. To Newly minted chip leader immediately oh. going to work under the gun. King Jack off suit. Oh. 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 Ace eight suited for the now wounded Bryn Kenny. Oh. Perhaps pushing the action just a little bit too much here as we approach the money bubble. Well, I'm not sure how pushy he's gonna feel on a King 9-4 board, clubless in nature. As Bryn defends and not sure the pound of flesh is gonna be available to him here as he seeks a bit of revenge. Top pair for Seth. Cheeky little check back available. Yeah, there it is. Well, might as well go for the rest of it at this point if you're Seth. Don't let Bryn leave the table with any chips if you could help it. Especially when you are faced with an opponent who is almost always willing to take any spot. Any weakness that Bryn sees, he's going to be all over it. So why not protect that check back range and hope that your opponent is going to fall into the trap? Ace high. Probably just enough showdown value, though, for Bryn to not feel like he needs to turn this into a bluff quite yet. And the bet on the turn from Davies is going to get it done. I want to say predictably, but of course, when Bryn Kenny enters the arena, we know that the predictable can become unpredictable rather quickly as Seth Davies sits with 144 big blinds and the wind at his back here in the main. Big stacks all over. And Bryn ran into it as he tried to do the same thing that he probably did to ride his way up to that big stack, Maria, which is why one always hesitates to be critical of a spot or two in which maybe we think more prudent procedures would have been favorable. It is precisely that play style that allows these big spin-ups and chip leads for Bryn. It's always rarer to run into the nuts, right, than it is to get the hands that have mediocre strength relative to the board to fold, and you can't blame somebody for always going for it. Ace 
Ace King here for Ibinger. Quiet thus far, speaking up on the button. One of the rare raise and take it's we'll probably see given this stage of the tournament. Suggesting that people will be more inclined to defend their big blind at this stage of the tournament? No, meaning most of these stacks being deep and it being the bubble, you know, players aren't going to be so quick to fold off of those stack sizes. Yeah, those stack sizes in particular, but obviously the leaner stacks might be far more inclined to fold and try to find somebody else making a misstep and showering themselves. Yeah, no real short stacks to be found at this particular table. Shortest stack in the whole tournament still Dan Devoris with 14 big blinds. Pablo Silva, who showered Yuri Zivilevsky. Well, Carrying the flag for the Brazilian delegation there. Army surplus vibes. <laughs> well, he better put those chips to good use or else Yuri's really going to be mad. Look at Seidel on the button. 6-3 suited. Gets a flat out of Silva. Remember you whipped a bluff in my face. You bluff, whipped a bluff in the jungle's face. Nonetheless. That was a very long time ago. I remember. Jungle Nev for our kids. <laughs> was a different, different man back then. What changed? Look at this for a board. Queen, Jack, six, top pair against what was just bottom pair. And after the check, check on the turn, Seidel picking up the diamond draw. Silva gets busy. Seventy-five K back call and right color wrong suit for Seidel. Still value to be had for queens and fours. Seidel shouldn't have many four X here, so that running four is not an issue. But Seidel will have plenty of worse queen X's and jack X's, and you know even hands That's such as six X. Five hundred and fifty makes me sad. Five hundred and fifty. Oh. Seidel not yeah. immediately folding can beat, you know, king tens, ten nines. Those types of hands will continue from the small blind against a button open. You know, ace ten will be in there as well. But also a lot of the Broadway cards, the Queen Jacks, the King Queens, and even the Ace Queen that doesn't want to play a big pot during the bubble. Probably doesn't expect Silva to have a hand as strong as Ace Queen because Sometimes those will three bet, but again, close to the bubble. Might just be flatting those. And we're talking about that full pot sizing here, which is so polarizing. Pre-flop Seidel 
open, got flatted out of the small. Check, check. Top pair V, bottom pair. Turn, as we saw. Activations from Silva, 175. Bet and called, and now might this feel like a bit of desperation with dust. Well, there's enough dust and there's enough value, right? As I mentioned, the King-10, the offsuit suited combos, plus the Ace-10, plus the 10-9. 10-9 offsuit not going to be in there, but 10-9 suited, of course, will. And Seidel makes a good fold. Yeah, concedes and does so correctly. Oh, yeah, two. Pays off his time no, bank marker, but not Silva, more importantly. See, if I had an army, Maria, shame that we cut to Dan Smith having his right breast fondled, <laughs> but if I had an army, I would dress them like Silva today, like cool guy army. Now, obviously, we're not going to win any wars, let alone battles, but in terms of any military fashion competitions, we're right in there. I know you're a fan of fashion. I am from time to time, but you know, lately I'm a big leggings girl. Post pandemic, it's all about the athleisure, the comfort for me. Caught that bug, did you? <laughs> Once you go there, you can never go back. Juan Pardo going there with a couple of kings. Ace King suited coming at the wrong time for Nacho Barbero Maria as he three bets to 175,000. And that's not a lean stack on Pardo at 1.2. Oof. Pardo, 51 big blinds. In comes the fourth scoop. And this just does not feel like it's some type of move that is trying to bully Barbero, especially considering Barbero has the covering stack. It just looks like strength and so strong that Barbero can't even think Pardo has Ace-King very often because I think Ace-King, if they want to find the aggression, would just rip it, wouldn't want to perhaps face, you know, a five bet from Barbero after putting the four bet in, would just shut it down with the shove. So actually, the fact that Pardo's choosing just a four bet instead of shove makes his hand look so incredibly strong. Even a hand like Queens would just rip it here, not wanting to open themselves up. Mm. To variance. You know, you said it didn't feel like it was bluffy, but nevertheless, Nacho Barbera unable to resist the lure, especially with a covering stack of a jam in a spot where really Juan Pardo does need to wake up with very top of range to be willing to spin the wheel. So many shorter stacks than his between us and the money. With 29 remaining. An aceless flop and no diamond either. Turn is clean and now Barbero left pulling at just three outs to ruin Juan Pardo's day. And that isn't it. So. 2.5 million plus headed the direction of Juan Pardo as Barbero slips to 1 million in front of him. What do you do with that ace-king of diamonds, Maria? 
as you. played. You, you would have you would have been a three better. I can understand the three bet. I would you know sometimes find some flats and mix it in with the three bet. Right, but, but now we've three bet and the four bet comes in. I think that there's actually some merit to just calling the four bet, seeing a flop with the suited combo. Just calling is how this one is taking shape as we see the Bryn Kenny up front raised to 50K with the ace jack. James Chen pipping him with ace queen as both players flop a Broadway draw on the back end of a 175K three bet, which got called by Kenny who now checks it Twenty-five thousand. Ace of Hearts, very relevant. Bryn, not quite comfortable considering he's out of position, but does feel like he has enough equity to continue. Tends to agree. Makes the investment, and now the bothersome ace of spades where he is out kicked, reveals itself on the turn. Not exactly any reason to be doing backflips for Kenny as the three betting range for Chen does contain this part of the deck. Yeah, and the three betting range containing less queen jacks, I would think, but just in case Kenny with that jack blocker Some pocket tens, pocket kings, maybe more so the latter. Yeah, pocket tens might just flat an under the gun open, I think, especially considering how deep they are. So more looking like kings or ace king in terms of value. And now 450K is that half potish sizing delivered by James Chen. The chili's getting a bit chunky. <sighs> yeah, certainly a lot of chips invested in the middle for both players. Chen with the covering stack and the stronger range. But Bryn willing to open under the gun and call a three bet does put his hand into the category of very strong holdings. Some players might have even folded this ace jack off pre-flop against the three bet. Call but announced, Maria. Kenny did not get here by folding. Now a deuce of hearts coming off 1.76 in the middle, 1.2 effective. Could this be an opportunity to play this in a manner that creates fold equity? Yeah, you wonder if Kenny is going to try to make something happen with the Ace of Hearts. Well, if he takes the check line, then I don't think he's going to be able to have the opportunity as I think Chen's going to check back quite often. Yeah. Pot big enough, but the kicker isn't. And the unraveling for Bryn Kenny continues here. Still deep enough, Maria, to presumably hang around and burst this bubble. But you gotta respect the fight. As we got a fight brewing here between Pablo Silva and Juan Pardo. Two bets have become three. Let's see whether or not Silva's going to feel a little disrespected. The 
You expect Pardo with that covering stack here, two away from the money to be able to leverage. in for the extra 175. Jack 9-6 board, backdoor spades in the gutty for Pablo. Does have position. Part of picking up his fair share of premiums during this bubble period. First Kings now aces on a fairly clean board. Giving Silva a little bit of rope here. Silva taking it with the overcard on the board, the overcard to the board, excuse me, and a gut shot straight draw and the backdoor flush possibilities. Looming. Immediately rewarded are these two aces. Continue to extend some rope as the flat comes in, but the queen does not. Board pairing six. Actually a nice little card for Pardo. Yeah, such a beautiful card because, you know, most hands say Jack X is here, even if they were to river two pair, still wouldn't beat the aces and sixes. So really not going to be afraid of a whole lot So effective against your opponent's continuing range to allow them to put more chips in the pot, but Silva slowing down. Invitation declined by Pablo, despite the fact that this line from time to time could very much look like a pair that isn't greater than a jack, perhaps not even greater than a nine from time to time. Seems a little bit more doubtful, but... Maybe some 10-10 mixed in there. Of course, Pablo does block that kit. Meanwhile, backdoor diamond arrival. I don't think Silva puts it past Pardo to be pretty sneaky with top of range either. And, and the sneakiness continues. So incredibly sneaky. You hate to check back here and maybe give an ace high a free showdown, Maria, but... It's ace-ace we're up against. Silva wondering if he could come with some sizing where he will have some of those weaker pairs that are going for thin value. 350. Yeah, and just wants to try to represent with about half pot. You know, doesn't have to be Jack X. Could be some of the hands that you talked about. Some tens, perhaps some nine eight suited, some ten nine suited, some ace nine suited. Oh, Hands the. that might check back the turn, but will go for value on the river, but doesn't look like flushes because of the sizing, keeping a little bit more value in his betting range here on the river. The acrid scent of burning plastic as 350,000 are lit ablaze here on the river. Does Pardo need to check raise here? 
he's got to be able to identify hands that he thinks are going to be willing to make the call that he beats. Otherwise, there's no upside. I still think you don't want to miss value, especially when you play your hand this way. So certainly going for the race probably doesn't feel like he's going to get called very often, but maybe it just looks suspect enough to check this hand all the way down, only to go for the check raise on the end to raise an eyebrow from Silva, but Silva just nothing back there, nothing he's able to call with, nothing he's able to even think about calling with. So down goes the King-10 and a decent number of Silva bucks, or reals, I believe, <laughs> is the currency in Brazil. Maria, have you been down to that part of the world? I can't remember if I've asked you or not. I don't know if you've asked me, but I feel like I've answered this question maybe from somebody else. I haven't been to South America. I've been to Central America. No, I just said Brazil. South. Okay, well, then if I've never been to South America, but you've ditched then, the Brazil, entire continent. then Brazil is clearly not in there, is it? No, I have a bit of a proposal. I've been to Costa Rica, though, which I is understand that central. Clear cutting of the Amazon <sighs> is a bit of an issue out in Brazil, perhaps we take a small bit of forest, open up an Amazonian poker room, see whether or not we can teach the natives to gamble. I feel like that's a bad proposition, you know. Those games would be good though, let's be honest. Everybody, I, I, I don't think instead the indigenous of the stand -up people, game, I just don't think the indigenous people need this in their life. No, they don't know. No gamble, no future. That applies to all beings. And instead of the stand-up game, we play Lick the Frog. And then <laughs> you hallucinate your way into a, an all-in. If we take the rake that we make to save the rainforest, I might consider oh, going okay, into I business like with you. I, now see? Philanthropy. Dan Smith on the button. Or the Toms of Poker. <laughs> 60,000, the open, the shoe company that gives away a pair for everyone that you buy. Maria, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> okay. Diaper in the big for Barbero. Non-dirty edition. He defends. Here we go. Queen Jack eight, bottom pair for Smith. Check. You think Nacho's feeling slightly steamy about the ace king, two kings spot? I wouldn't say steamy, but perhaps, you know, there's going to be a little regret associated with how he chose to attack it. Even though, again, you know, it's ace-king. Perhaps if there's even a sliver of four-bet folds there, he would have had reason to feel good about it. But Smith checking back, bottom pair. Fruitless turn for nut low. You wonder if Barbero's going to start bluffing bottom of range here. No showdown value. I don't know if that crick in the neck is indication that he might be done with this hand. Smith wondering if he can capture some value from a hand that could use a little bit of protection. Does Jack X just check it over here? If Nacho had some Jack X's, would he just start leading that part of his range? Or is it really gonna just be Queen X's? Now a little duckling on the river as Smith has played max pot control here. Understandable considering that Barbero does have him covered here. Just two away from the money. 
in the main. 189,000 the min cash, minus 125K at a minimum. If you're on the outside, looking in. Min bet there, bit of a block bet from Barbero, gets the quick call out of Smith. So one little futile exercise in getting to showdown at the bargain basement price for Nacho. Could have been cheaper than 25K. Mind you, I say minus 125 in terms of the difference between making the money and not making the money. This is an unlimited rebuy event. 151 total entries. Now housed in one of the finest Georgian properties in Mayfair, London, Les Ambassadors offers members and their guests a service of impeccable quality. The club welcomes players from around the world seeking the ultimate gaming experience with luxury facilities, including exquisite private rooms and world-class fine dining. Les A membership opens the door to incomparable benefits, and I can certainly attest to the grandeur of that particular gaming venue not far from where we are here, just down Park Lane. Food's incredible, service is incredible, staff is dressed to the nines. The chandeliers in that place must cost a fortune. That staircase, a UNESCO heritage site. Wow. Posted it to my IG stories a while ago, not up there anymore, but sure you're just a Google search away. Jack nine suited open from Silva. Got his hand smacked by the aces with King High moments ago. Undaunted though, up front opening here and Barbero in the small blind with a couple of queens. Surveys things before making it 200. One and done for Silva. So much fight in Pablo, Maria. Not going to be one of those that's going to sit back and coast into the bubble. Of that, we can be certain. As it appears, something is brewing elsewhere in the room at our outer table. Ace 10 of spades for Dan DeVoris Chidwick with Ace King. Stevie with the covering stack and the better hand. Flush draw though for DeVoris. Wouldn't be faulted for thinking his fate in the main doesn't hang in the balance right now as he's pecking away at his phone. Chewing on the gum, needs a little help, and doesn't get it. Seems like Dan played well today, getting away from top set against two flushes earlier. But I'll after tell you what, that, couldn't get anything going. I thought we were two away from the money, but Ignacio Chavero Busted in 29th moments ago, so that was a 28th place bust out for Dan DeVoris. The stone bubble. So if you're wondering why it is that cards are still in the air right now, as the money bubble has burst, it has everything to do with the soft hand for hand where each table is being tracked 
and will play the same number of hands up until that point. So a hand behind was this feature. Luca coming over to explain that matter. This, of course, due to the fact that if another player were to bust here in this hand, Dvoris would then share that 27th place payout with said player. Obviously, he's rooting for a collision. Barbero. Button. Open, and now <laughs> Silva slaps him on the wrist. And Barbero just not really able to punish the way that he would have been had he not doubled Pardo up. Being told that there's one other table that is Looks a hand like behind as well. We are in the money. Okay, newsflash, jungle. Somehow went out and found himself a Seri A shirt here in England, home of the EPL, AC Milan. Big stretch. So then, blinds of 15 and 30,000 reflected in terms of big blinds. Leave Juan Pardo, 3.3 million, 110 big blinds, way up toward the top of the leaderboard. Second only behind Seth Davies. Pablo Silva running in second as the cluster is reasonably tight. 22 big blinds, Smith alone towards the bottom. Now then, Tobias Schwecht, the two aces. Being told that we are all caught up. So Dvoris will officially be on the stone bubble. Soft hand-for-hand -hand situation coming to a close. So the field securing $189,000 as we flip it back over to one that develops between Seidel and Silva. Button and small blind. We see more fight out of Pablo. Yeah, last time we saw Pablo but just flat Seidel's open like with ace, queen of spades, but that was also when Seidel had him covered, not so much this time. You might know, like, you're a swinger or something. I have no clue. <laughs> Upside down pineapple. What? Upside down pineapple. Yeah, exactly that. And this, this somebody told me it's like, it's threesome. <laughs> So you're letting people know that you fuck? I uh, no idea, but yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> not joking. All right, then. What conversation did we happen upon during this you hand? Like Fairly yeah. salacious one. We've been very lucky. As Seidel happened upon the 230, investing an extra 160 no to look up at queen 7-6. Both players would just 
the Naked Diamond and Broadway prospects. Yeah, your hand's not going to be doing too well against the value part of Silva's range, but certainly Silva will be light here a good amount of times. And you have ace high, the back door, nut flush possibility, good enough for a call. Well, now Ooh. the turn is certainly going to make his hand good enough to continue. And that's what certainly a card lately? that Silva will try to rep. Here. Just came from Vegas here. Especially with oh, the additional that's... equity still of that gut shot from the turn. You'd imagine he's just going to try to put weak one pair hands to the test very often when we're looking at stack to pot ratio being that's under cool. one. Continuing to put up his dukes. Pablo barrels again, 175,000. And these are the sorts of double-edged swords we talk about, Maria, in terms of a specifically aggressive approach in spots where maybe others don't employ it. And snap, disappointment washing over the Brazilian's face as the jam from Seidel earns him the pot. And such a nice pickup for Seidel to not even have to see a river. Eric Seidel, the legend. <sighs> so many legends in these tables. You're not wrong, Nacho. Seidel me. far and away the biggest, come on. What? Clearly. Clearly the biggest, yeah. I don't know who's second though. Dan or Dan? Huh? I who's this? I'm in the jungle. You've probably heard of me. Who is the bigger legend? Dan or Dan? Par Malaka. I don't know. As much as it pains me, I think I might have to give the nod to jungle. Five seconds. I think it's under, right? <laughs> I mean, winning the 50K Players Championship oh. two years in a row is just completely insane. Yeah, I you think show up so. day one dressed up as a. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the, oh. the guy is. You know. Oh. I think. Yeah. Is that him? No. But the Terminator was there this year. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of weak. The Terminator. Oh, oh, love the Terminator. Just look at Silva, man. I mean, yes, King Ten suited on the button. I but thought I earned it far unrelenting. That, to be That's what you can expect, I think, from a player who didn't you raise, Brazilian did you raise with factors in a little bit. But million. also just understanding yeah. that, sure, if you okay. get in there when you're supposed to, Legendary. you're not going to win every pot. But that shouldn't make you shy away from opening the correct ranges, from staying active. But has also like nicely spread out Yuri's chips <laughs> across stuff. the rest of the table. Mm -hmm. Eight seven four board fails to improve Silva. Webster checks second pair faces the barrel, and there is a point at which it can start to feel as though the issue is being forced. Maria, we're all responsible for recognizing when table image maybe is a bit compromised or it seems as though we're coming across a bit speedy and right. maybe making necessary adjustments. It doesn't feel like Silva's there yet. Some deviation certainly might be needed once you see that uh, your reputation has suffered a few hits with you know, the barrel, barrel having to fold against Idel shove saying a little something to the continuing range of Silva. But now it almost feels like, what does Silva want to do with the open-ended straight draw? Does end up checking back. 
And Lim, who did have the same straight draw, but a pair to go with it, has a lot of showdown value, blocking the nuts, of course, blocking Jack-10 here. So despite both players picking up the open ender on the turn, action goes check, check, and now the blankest of cards. The deuce of spades rolls off on the end, 285 in there, and a third check from Webster. Oh, he's reaching, Maria. <laughs> Just trying to target these weak one pair hands. You know, perhaps the 8x, the 7x. 175,000, and let's see if Webster can sniff it out. It's like what you said, right? Silva perhaps has lost the benefit of the doubt a little bit. Webster also with the 10, again, blocking the nuts. That's always a nice second card to have with the pair. You know, not a lot of hands that would play this way as a bet on the flop and a check on the turn. Certainly, you know, two pair hands and straights and sets. We'll probably all try to go for value, especially with the texture, especially with a couple of draws out there. The over pairs. Silva, credibility maybe lacking a little bit. Whoa, and Lim does one better, turns his hand into a bluff just in case. Wow. Battered and bruised is the table image of Pablo Silva to the point where Webster would check jam theirs. That certainly felt like the less expected course of action, Maria. I think he just recognized that sometimes Silva might be trying to get thin value there with a better hand than a pair of sevens just to be safe turning it into a bluff when you do have the 10 in your hand seems like a nice choice to make there nacho did you know real men wear pink that's what i heard oh that's what i heard too <coughs> Yeah, says it on the podcast. So we march forward with now just 25 players remaining. That move there from Webster is the kind that you would expect to be delivered with the bubble intact, maybe. <laughs> but on the inside of it, 90? that is a bit of savagery. I say 90. Nice to see that, you know, players don't always just select to click call in spots where there could be some value hands that beat them. You know, a portion of Silva's range there, of course, will be bluffs, but just in case. I'm sure happy the discipline kicked in right there. That was pure discipline. <laughs> Dan Smith finding the all-in in the big blind. Sure Kate's fold. bit of a pat on the back <laughs> for the discipline <laughs> fold. <laughs> so Webster just like gets a finger wagged. I can justify this shit. Trying to see Smith. It was not that bad. Wow. What? He'll be shocked if you see the, the replay. I can't even... I Say it. I caught. I, ca I caught something. A wave of discipline. Oh. 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 Folds oh. to Kate, who. Seems a little annoyed at the amount of discipline. 
he has to exercise? Well, as we've seen, one doesn't have to exercise all of that discipline, but it certainly seems like the preferred course of action. I don't think anybody's short, though. Like, really short. Probably keep my dumb banks. Isaac, 14 blinds. Pablo, 15 blinds. Five seconds. Pocket eights now for Seidel. Juan Pardo Dominguez. Oh my God. Uh, Raised to 60,000. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. <coughs> oh. Fold. Fold. We're still doing this 10 second time back? Yeah. Yes. Weird. Fold. Cates flats from the hijack and gets rewarded with top two pair. Seidel not going to follow through on his up front open. Seidel recognizing the strength of Cates' range here to call off of 25 big blinds, one that will contain a lot of hands that connect quite nicely to this board. You know, 25 bigs will still be in there with the suited broadways. Might have a few traps as well. on the turn as texture gets worse for Seidel. Check calling 65K, pot up to 325,000. What's he willing to call here, if anything? Coordinated nature of that turn card certainly feels like if Cates was willing to bet the flop, he should continue to be busy here. Yeah, and Ace Jack, of course, going to be there in Cates' range as well. So I think Seidel was just planning to take one off and see what develops and can't really love this particular run out and might just have to be done with the hand. Oh. Welcome to the jungle. Can't mess with jungle. Don't in agreement. The jungle. Yes. 225. The Wraps that one up. Never again, jungle. Dangerous. Many people find out the hogs. Do you feel like this jersey on Jungle is just another one of his quote unquote costumes, though, or you think he's a real fan? Well, what costume <laughs> would he be wearing? A soccer fan costume. <laughs> you think, I mean, but really though, you think Dan. Do knows I think he knows what team that shirt belongs to? Yeah. Should we make a bet on that? Somebody clearly bought that for him. He probably ran out of clothes. Oh, well, and if he's in full kit, according to producer James, then that is most definitely. One, one of his of trademark his costumes yes. when he comes in to play an event. You think he's just a semi-professional semi footballer on the side? or at, at this point, he's a semi-professional costume wearer when he comes into a tournament. He was Tridan in Cyprus. And there was, of course, most recently, the Terminator. Dragon Ball Z at the PPC. So maybe this is just more the same. And on the topic of more of the same, Pablo Silva opening a pot. Four raise, makes it 60 to go. A flat from Juan Pardo on the button. Silva kind of down to fumes, 15 big blinds. A lot of what he did during that bubble and right after didn't work out for him. Yeah. 
pulling, wherever it feels good. It's probably a good idea, actually. Nine seven five board. Checked around as Seidel joined the fun for the right price. He continues to check as the 10 is not great for him. This also doesn't feel like a board that Silva can keep up any aggression. Two overs in the gutter. Seems like he's checked as well, which leaves it to Juan Pardo's ace jack. He's got a gutter of his own. Yeah, Silva would like to see a free card if possible or a very cheap one. Pardo also going to check back. Very innocuous deuce on the river. And Eric reaching with the six high, recognizing, of course, the lack of showdown here, but also with the lack of aggression post-flop up against some big cards that won't be able to continue. So, Eric Seidel left hauling that one in after two rounds of checks behind him, courtesy of his 200K river bet. Slides into the small blind, Silva in the big. Yeah, the wristbands seem to suggest full kit. Yeah, come on, give me some credit. You <laughs> And definitely not in the 100 check. Five seconds. If this was on anybody else, I, bluff, uh, I would have given them times a, year. No more. Yeah. a little more credit than I'm going to give Jungle. For being in full costume, you yeah. mean? I know, I gotta try and play with you in December. Yeah, like Sam Grafton, Grafton had an Arsenal shirt on earlier. I don't think he no. wore cleats to the event. No, that one makes a lot more sense. Ace queen here for Webster. Min raise open, a flat from Seidel. Dominated, ace seven suited. Seven, five, three, and this is a bit interesting in terms of top pair against the nut flush draw. Seidel out flopping the ace queen, but proceeding with caution with 180 in the middle. Does feel like Seidel would rather approach this as a check call especially against an under the gun plus one range. And just a lot of vulnerability for Seidel's can, but also not strong enough for him to want to bloat the pot with. And that is just one of the bad turn cards for Seidel's hand. Lim wondering, does he want to find any deception here or does he just want to keep going for value, hoping that Seidel has some worse flushes? So from 50K to 105K as Seidel's check call delivered another 100 into the middle and that fourth spade delivers his hand into the mug. So Webster out flopped. Hits the turn and hauls one in.
peek back at the chip counts. Juan Pardo, top of the counts overall, of course, top here. Two to one chip lead over Webster Lim and company. As Pablo Silva has really been in a bit of a tailspin. Now down to 11 bigs. No pay jump to speak up for a couple more spots. 23rd will pay 207,500. Currently payout 189,000. It'll be that for 25th and 24th. Ace 10 suited here for the boss stack. No takers. This is Juan Pardo's first ever Triton Festival, Maria. Finished eighth in the 25K GG Millions and then eighth Thank once you. more in the 200K 8 I'll Max. Play the hand and then Thank earning 110,000 and 600,000 respectively. Batting 500, two for four. Going into this one, now three for five. As his third cash, still TBD, and might we see him at the FT? Yeah, seems to be knocking at the door of a very strong finish. If not this one, still a couple of events left to go. We do have a 60K turbo running at the moment. May I please do the chopped salad, add chicken, organic green vinaigrette. Barbero. I'll do King Jack. Min Reyes and Kate's begrudging discipline being shown once more as he lays down. And Nacho hauls in the cheese. Doesn't seem like anyone has stepped in to fill the void left behind by Pablo Silva's relentless aggression at present, including Juan Pardo, by the way, Maria, who one might imagine would be seizing the opportunity to do so. Perhaps different things are afoot here with a different list of ingredients. This is where so many big stacks resided. Last time we checked in, which is when Bryn Kenny lost a huge one to they James the Chen. 45 minutes, right? What? Five seconds. Sometimes. When I run into like quads or full houses. Two kings for Seth Davies. Delightful Five. development. Oh. Oh. Takes it upstairs as we would expect. Tobias, suited hand from the big blind, playing 73 bigs. Next break is dinner break. Yes. Feels like dinner an easy break. defend. Cool. Wow, what a flop. Tobias, top pair, and the diamond draw. One could certainly see this one growing in size, but consider the fact that these guys are going to be looking 
to tread somewhat lightly against one another. <laughs> There's some good Turkish place close by? Or what, that's Faust? What's the name? Uh, uh, one of the two. I can go in the valley. So then the pre-flop raise of 65K, which was defended against, faces 140K C-bet. After checking, <laughs> note the sizing, Ali. Going big. I'm really <laughs> trying to attack the hands that have a lot of equity on this board. Yeah, and given the sizing now, the check call informs Davies with respect to range for Tobias. Coordinated two diamond board now welcomes an eight of clubs to the affair. Yeah, and as the board continues to get more coordinated, you wonder how many turn and river, river barrels da Davies is able to make. You know, might this be more of a two-street hand than a three-street hand? Looks like he does want to see a blank river, and that is a very nice brick where it allows Davies, if check two, to go quite big for value. Does it allow Tobias, though, maybe to pursue a block bet sizing? Actually, we were so busy maybe looking at the flush Jackson possibilities threes. that Jackson threes actually show up for Tobias. So yeah, it looked like such an innocent <laughs> card, and I, I looked over it as well. Now the Kings showered. 25. So perhaps now with this two. lead. Yeah, he said, I heard two, right? Uh, two. He, he said two. Seth may wonder if there's value in raising here. You know, of course he could beat the Jack X. But the obvious straight draw from the flop, the queen nine gets there. Tobias did call a rather large sizing on the flop, so can have some two pairs, some jack tens. Maybe less so jack five, unless it was suited. Yeah. Just gonna call. Really nowhere to go but call for Davies. He felt not gonna get greedy. And that is a pretty demoralizing sight. Jackson threes, but obviously once Schweck took the flop, it's going to be tough to get him to go anywhere and was drawn to the diamonds as well. Note that check back from Davies. I don't know that a normal sizing on the turn gets rid of that jack three of diamonds, Maria, so he saves himself some chips given that he was never going to prevent Schweck from seeing a river. I think that was a clear pot control line given the coordination of the board and would have seemed to lost the minimum. James Chen doing button things. Eibinger, very defendable Jack-10. No improvements for either player. You wonder how the Jack-10 is gonna wanna respond here. Does have some backdoor possibilities and against a spot where the C betting frequency is going to be very high coming from the button. Sometimes you can find 
some light floats, but doesn't look like Eibinger is going to take this spot. Yeah, he's got just 800,000 in chips. Maria looking maybe for better spots to deploy them in. Instead of deeply speculative ones, out of position no less, against the talents of James Chen. Who it must be said, now that we get a look at him there, is wearing a hoodie that basically every police composite sketch of a suspect contains, right? I mean, I like it. I think it's flavorful, but it is that hoodie. <laughs> kind of that Grand Theft Auto felonious vibe. I see it. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're looking for this man. Asian male. 30 to 40. You know, actually, I should ask my oh. sources in Taiwan. Perhaps Chen is wanted there. Oh. May just not know about it. News doesn't travel quite as fast. Queen nine. This time Chen picks up the big blind of Kenny, raising from the cutoff. Again, the opposition is unimproved, but so too is James. Happens to have the best hand. Just a matter of, I think, a spot where, again, easy to go for the continue against the big blind. It's a very profitable C-bet spot. Doesn't get much easier than that. A little back-to-back C-bet -back and take it. You know, James Chen has roots in Taiwan. You too have roots in Taiwan, perhaps less known to those out there. The fact that a man who played our 250K Invitational here busted very early on, Jean-Robert Balland, also with Taiwanese time under his belt. In fact, went to school for a long time yep. out there and spoke Mandarin. Well aware of JRB's time in the Race nightclubs of Taiwan knows how to speak Mandarin pretty well. I don't know how fluent in terms of vocabulary, yeah, but these days can maybe. get by for sure. Now it's going to start to feel a bit speedy, is it not? As we've raised the button, the cutoff, and the hijack, and back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back pots as James Chen. Davies. In the big jack eight. He too will try his hand. And now, wow. a pair of eights for Davies. See if he can do better than those before him. Yeah, trying to go for the kill pot here. <laughs> Again, just one of those flops that Chen feels should favor his range and be quite profitable to see bet. Pretty lucky that he runs into the part of Davies' range that connects with the board, but is not going to like a lot of turns and rivers. Might feel like it's tough to get to showdown cheaply. Will take one off and see if he could shut James Chen down on further streets. And that first further street. Okay. Five of spades. Does have some shutdown potential filling in the straight and the flush draw. Chen can't love the nine pairing on the end either as 
Davies can certainly have continued on the flop with a lot of 9x as well. Yeah, after the check back, though, we'll see whether or not Davies looks to do the betting or leave it to Chen, possibly. Not a given that he will bet. See, Seth. Does check and get it checked back. Stop. Lose someone. And as Davies hauls that one in. Yeah. Seems as the whispers of hmm? the loss of someone in 25th right, place. Right. Okay. Oh, good news. <laughs> good news. And if indeed that is the case, we will be down to 24 players, at which point we'll be redrawing. Seth Davies enjoying a little spin. And so, yes, Santosh Suvarna out in 25th place. And a peek at the chip counts here as this band of merry men will mercifully be disbanded Perhaps a little less competition awaits these six as they will be dispersed into the remainder of the field back at the desk. Ali and Maria here with a pause as the redraw is upon us. 24 players left, eight players per table. Blinds at 15 and 30,000. And looking up at the top, I now find one Nick Shulman. Maria, you saw him take that hit earlier can't remember the specific hand that it was. It's a bit of a blow. Could look back, obviously, in the Triton Poker Plus app and find that blip. Um, he had aces against pocket eights for Santos Savarna at one point. But uh, in any case, obviously, he's rebounded from that spot to find himself at the top of the leaderboard. And perhaps more notably, considering the table that we were just feasting our eyes upon, is the fact that James Chen joins him at the top of that board. Well, when you said that perhaps because of a redraw, that players might find themselves at an easier table. When I'm scrolling through these chip counts, it doesn't seem like there's many soft spots left in this field, Ali. No, no surprise either, obviously, as the talents on the Triton Super High Roller Series are quite robust, whether we're talking about the pros or whether we're talking about the VIPs. So what we are talking about for sure is the fact that we did make the money during that last frame, working towards a champ, 4.2 million. We're going to have the FT tomorrow but today hopefully we'll play down to that ft and with that 25th place elim elimination of suvarna we are on a pay jump 189 will become 2075 we will step aside briefly when we return One hundred twenty-five thousand dollars main event coverage continues after this What's the best way to improve at poker? Practice and repetition. With GTO Wizards Trainer, you have all the tools you need to master poker. You can customize your session and choose exactly what situation you'd like to study. You can practice specific boards or textures, choose what hands you want to play, and customize every aspect of your training experience. At GTO Wizard, we have all the resources you need to learn how to crush the competition for free. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu. 
the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Back for continuing coverage of the $125,000 main event here at the Triton Super High Roller Series London. Ali Najat alongside Maria Ho. Just a little while left before a schedule break, but we've got the redraw break upon us. And inside the Triton Poker Plus app right now, we are assembling in real time those new tables. We touched on the fact that Nick Shulman and James Chen find themselves up at the top of the leaderboard, along with the likes of Juan Pardo. Now let us shift our attention to those who need to do some spinning. And among them is Pablo Silva, who at one point showered his countryman, Yuri Zivilevsky, looked like he was off to the races, and then it all came undone. Well, that type of play, of course, can get you in trouble sometimes. I wouldn't say that he necessarily pushed the action too much. I think that there were just some spots where he was up against big hands, and a lot of the times you're not going to be up against the strongest part of your opponent's range and so it's just kind of unfortunate in terms of what he was up against but as you mentioned you know we'll need to spin clearly now don't want to make any allegations that perhaps the double-edged sword effect is that which we find rodrigo seiji suffering from right now but he too playing under the brazilian banner second shortest stack in the room and if i'm not mistaken he came into today the third biggest stack up at the top of the leaderboard so obviously things have not been going their way it appears that right now the seating charts are sorted a quick peek at them if you'd like there in the triton poker plus app and then a much more thorough peek coming your way in just moments as we send it back down to the arena for continuing coverage of the hundred and twenty five thousand dollar main event so then nick shulman 3.2 million plus at the top of the blue table. Juan Pardo, top of the red, and Tim Adams at the gold table. Obviously has stabilized and even recovered after what was a very valiant bluff attempt against Brian Kim earlier in today's coverage. Unsuccessful as Kim sniffed it out. Actually, can you keep my shirt down? It's good. Thank you. Shulman goes to work. Ace nine. But anyway, I was on the break. I was trying to do some stretches and just like suffering because I did like a big leg day yesterday. Not a fan and of the deuces. This is definitely the time for massage work, work stuff out. And I have to 
If you go to like a proper gym or just like the hotel gym. Just a hotel one. But you can still do like lunges and like squats with kettle squats with like uh, goblet squats and like step ups and you know you can you can do like some stuff you know. You could. Hmm. Not that satisfying. You know? <laughs> like. See, I, I have a really horrible lower back situation, <laughs> and so no takers. Like, Anytime I ever try and go big on legs, I turn my back out. So at this point in my life, I'm past that juncture where I'm like, yeah, we're going to do some squats. So like, no, I'm just like, we're going to get like a leg workout in, you know? Yeah. Just we explore the... Of like going your back out. And then you're just like in bad shape for like however long. Workout I routines. I trainer and I feel very confident that like I'm... Doug Polk? So you probably don't have lower back issues, right? I have like no. some severe lower back issues. That's a careful. So like... Uh, it's really easy for me to just throw it out. I'm thinking. To a lesser I'm extent, trying, like, the routines sure of Dan Smith, like, as well as stuff, not, like, any spinal really distress, to, like, <laughs> involuntary <laughs> participants in that conversation. Uh, oh, Voluntarily putting chips warming. forward, though, is Stephen Chidwick, understandably under the gun, King Jack suited. I normally just wear the aura at night, but I barely slept and trying to see where you're at. Yeah, yeah. How are we doing, everybody? We're good? Seems like they barely slept all night, too. Well, Doug, kind of in peak He's physical like shape no. these days. Like five, 30 bottles going hard after the win. with the Not nutrition yet. and whatnot. Not there was a $2.5 million bottle. Ryan Kim, next to the table sixes. Last night. Like, yeah, let's see how hard he wants to go <laughs> from the small blind, and it's not at all. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Surprised? <laughs> Yeah, but he is coming in maybe with a stack size. Okay, 37 bigs. Could have oh maybe back, found the one. call, but again, just brutal. respecting that under it the gun like range like, off you know of gonna, like, 40 big blinds from Chidwick. I'm like, oh, I can't. <laughs> you're not doing that. And then you're just like, you're like, I actually really think I'm missing, I think, I think walking, <laughs> kind of out on that. <laughs> I was in bed for like the next three days. You just have to lay there. Yeah. So I think of that whenever I'm like, maybe I'll do some deadlifts today. Actually, you know what? Last time I was in London a few years ago, I... I did Knock on wood. What? I assume you like, brought your back in London, and you're going to yeah. jinx yourself. Yes, correct. Now, I don't want to make anything well, unnecessarily yeah, awkward, <laughs> even though, of course, but I have are. a reputation for doing so. But was that not the same therapist that Dan Smith employed for the better part of the last two to three hours, now being passed to the right for Doug Polk to employ. This feels perhaps like we're getting the short end of the stick. Can't imagine that three hours into having had to massage Dan, we're going to get the same level. I, I mean, I don't know, you know. No, uh, no, I disagree. I feel like the best massage therapists in the world, they have the strength to go on for hours. Like end and of shift, they're just right in there with the same pressure that they were at top of shift? I know one that I found in Vegas during the WSOP that certainly from start to finish can keep up. Well, pressure being kept up here by Chidwick, playing back from the big blind, of course, understandably with the two jacks and Polk concedes. I land, and as I land, I realize I'm like outrageously sick, like, terrifyingly sick. I spent the next three days in the hotel just like trying to fight to survive. I finally come out of it in a daze, days and nights, I don't even know where they are. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go huge at the gym today. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fucking go for it. I go down there, try to do some big ass deadlifts right away and just throw my back out and go back to bed and just lay there for the rest of the week. That was London. <laughs> I ordered food, food from the room service and Stayed in my bed, basically. I, Binger, passing up the suited king from under the gun. And better trips. Lunges are definitely my least favorite exercise. I got one Oh, brutal. <coughs> Brutal. Not fun in any way. <laughs> they're, they're just, okay, how many times have you been like, all right, I'm gonna do three sets of lunges. And then after set one, you're like, I'm thinking maybe one or two sets of lunges. And then like, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe you do. James maybe Chen, not done lunging, as we saw him do at his prior table. Picking up where he left off, opening the button, Jack Force suited. 
My favorite one Shade is step-ups. You just like grab some weights and do step-ups because it's like your heart gets going a Flex. bit. It's not way too hard. It's like... like I hear it. I'm just not with you. You don't like step-ups? No. 200 in like the that. middle. 8, 9, yeah. 10. I think that really this hard. is quite spicy. No. Chidwick. Bad side of an open ender, but the nut flush draw on ace high. Chen, the good side of the open ender, and backdoor hearts. Don't place much stress in your lower back, and that one's like not bad in your back at all. It's like really isolates like quad or whatever. Chen feeling the weight of that Stevie stare down. Yeah, that's good. Good at least mix in there. Yeah, for sure. That's one of those things they would never do myself. Sometimes might find some check backs, but sometimes might see bet. Certainly both options, very viable. One of the things I really you know, Stevie like will have, I like to have like totally my own a lot of two pair combos here. And I'm also like one of those Some that, like, sets, I'm you would imagine. He's probably going to be three betting tens and nines. And if I have a trainer, then like I have to wait. And that waiting kind of like gets to me. And then I'm like, Stevie started this hand with slightly over 45 bigs. There's really, there's like, it takes time to wait, you know? there's two camps on this. Because I have friends that are exactly the same. Oh, I left in like the, the afternoon, evening, or whatever. Like, wow, what? Like, <laughs> Talk about like spice. Five, five this is a deluge on the no, turn. Shit. Top pair for Chidwick on the back end of the check call of 125k, All but a card that gives really James morning. Chen the heart draw yeah, and perhaps cause to continue. And considering Chen can have nice. all the queen jacks here, you know, all of the nutted hands. Opening from the button with the offsuit and suited combos of Queen Jack. I'm always just a little worried. I'm does feel like a perfect like turn card to continu continue <laughs> barreling. It does. It's like, it's like a little equity every time you do them, you know? Yeah. Especially if you use them like towards the end of a leg workout where you're like a little fried from other stuff. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 300,000, the bet sizing into 450, two thirds. Things getting like a bit a serious for Chidwick. Once, like, Quarter of his like stack back jump. required. Like I basically didn't get off like my Achilles, like didn't fire. Oh, this one, like, <laughs> <laughs> that like? <laughs> I was just like a complete, I just ran out of gas. You know? <laughs> People watching? Was Probably. It, like, yeah. it wasn't like fake ball or nothing. Okay. I just didn't just get fa up. failure to launch. <laughs> I understand. Is there an option other than flat here? But we can definitely agree available that with 1.2 right? back and a7 of diamonds? Or do you actually kind of like it in a way? I don't know I like if I like it. Yeah, you do them on the break. The aggressive option better than the calling option. Yeah. I just I just like I've had such lower back issues like even with squats I come back out like once you once you've had those kinds yeah. of issues a bunch. Chidwick. Just it's calling. Just the same thing. And the river oh, is wow. a diamond. Four liner and the flush draw coming in, though. Chen, of course, finally making something, but it's the worst of what's around and available. One pair. And just slightly under pot is what Chidwick has back. And so much coordination on that board. Yeah. Yeah. Chidwick might be afraid that his opponent won't bet if checked to, especially Chidwick covering the diamonds here and the ace makes it a little less likely that Chen will have some strong aces or some strong two pairs with the ace X. One million in the middle. Stevie taking his time in this spot. Also a bit of balance here in terms of timing. Takes his time in just about every spot, Maria, and in that way he is quite balanced and not in a manner that I think draws criticism in any way but rather as a reflection of just how thoughtful he is each and every time a decision is on him and 
James saying, no, it's fine. Don't need you to make a count. And obviously that seems to suggest that we know where his hand is headed. Yeah, blocking, you know, just the jack here doesn't really do anything. And when you have the backdoor flush draw yourself, it's less likely that Chidwick was in there with perhaps some 7x with the heart. So not a great bluff catching candidate on that particular texture. But a great way to end that frame of play as it is break time here. Blinds will be at 20 and 40,000 when we come back. Nick Shulman will continue his chip lead. Dan Smith on the short stack. Now it is the dinner break for the players, but we're gonna tighten it up considerably for those of you out there watching. You don't wanna cut away as in just a few minutes time, yours truly and Maria will be giving way to the likes of Henry Kilbane and Randy Liu to take it home here as we work our way toward the final table. Last thoughts on uh, the three frames we covered here today, Maria? Just a lot of exciting post-flop play, especially considering the deeper stacks. And I feel like now as we approach that final table to end the night, we will continue to see some explosive hands. Yeah, so... Only time will tell. And just a short time from now, coverage will continue. On the back end of an abbreviated dinner break, we're going to tighten up the delay. Don't go anywhere. 125K main event coverage continues in just a few minutes. Did you know that GTO Wizard has a great little tool called Turn Reports? For example, here under the gun checks and then calls Hijack's bet. We'll take a look at the turn reports, check, and here we can see exactly how Hijack should play across every turn card. We can even go so far as to see the expected value of their range or specific hands in their range. This is a great way to improve and understand where your money comes from on later streets. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. You're a very warm welcome back to the JW Merrick Grosvenor House, Randy Lou, Mr. Nanonoko, and myself, Henry Kilbane, stepping in for the wonderful Maria Ho and Arlene Najad. It is day two of the main event, Randy. We're in the money, and we have the pleasure of calling the action all the way down to the FT. And you were just saying on break that this FT that we're playing down to could really be an epic one with some of the names. What are the standout names for you that you've spotted? Well, I'm looking at currently, it's Nick Shulman in second place. You know, most player people know him for his voice, but they tend to forget occasionally that he is an amazing <laughs> poker player. So him up top, we have James Chen, who made our final table into 250K. As I scroll down, you see Stephen Chidwick, Daniel Cage, Jungleman, always fun to watch, Eric Seidel, 
Doug Polk. Everyone wants to see Doug Polk splash around with these players. And, of course, Bryn Kenny, the champion of the 250K. Yeah, I mean, Bryn looking to go back-to-back -back in two of the biggest events. In fact, the two biggest events in London. Um, looking at the blue feature table, what a treat. Polk, Smith, Kenny, Shulman, Chidwick, Chen, Ibinger, as you mentioned. And then the red feature table with Haxton, Davies, Malinowski, Boss, Paul, Seidel. Just to name a few of the superstars still in the mix as we throw it down to the main stage. As Well, we're going to be breaking it once more when we get to the final two tables. And then we'll have the pleasure of calling the action all the way down to that final table. But for now, our attention turned to the blue and red features. Cards are back up in the air. Money locked up, Randy. So far, $189,000. They are on a pay jump. 23rd will receive 207500 Shulman leading the blue. Juan Pardo leading the red. Adams leading the gold. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. Final three tables of the 125K main event. Now, Henry, how much are we playing for up top? I didn't get a chance to look yet. Do you know? Four million and change. Just four million? Just four million, <laughs> you know. Record breaking? Here we are, record breaking fields. We were teasing late in the night last night with Maria that you know, we, we got up to like 115, 120. And there were a few people from the outside looking in that we were like, okay, these are guys that are likely to re-enter. Wouldn't it surprise us to smash that previous record. And we did precisely that. Oh, thank you. 151 runners. Nice hat. Great bucket hat. It's been on display all week. Yeah. Ever since Shulman rocked up in his own. This is too funny. They've clipped the microphone onto the chair. I like all the Kenny with yeah, the hand that kind of propelled him good. to victory in that 250k. Winning the massive flip against Vogelsang on the final table bubble. What is James Chen munching on? <laughs> Mid-hand, he's got king-queen offsuit. Well, it's going all over the rail. Crumbs everywhere. Stevie, 50 bigs, starting the hand, eighth in chips. He is covered by Chen. Has Shulman behind as well. Got a flat. And Randy, buckle up, mate. Are we going to go multi way? We're going to go three ways here, perhaps four. Yeah, I'm not surprised that Chidwick just flats this rather than squeezing, given the original open raise. It's kind of got that medium ish stack that you don't want to squeeze fold this type of hand. Um, my friend says that he. making fun of me for being dressed like a buffoon. I think you're fine. I think I look great. I, I'm not someone you should be asking. <laughs> well, the 10 deuce of clubs. Hitting the mark from the big. Would have flopped everyone pretty much dead. Kenny with the six of clubs. What do you do here? With two flat calls behind. It's pretty tricky as you do have reasonable outs. Looks like he's going to just try to shed the... Uh, Offsuit hands like the king queen and ace tens. I don't know. It's like obviously harder because your vantage is lower to the ground. <laughs> no, no, that was, that was not, not too much. Chidwick can really do if this ace ten like suited. Like yeah. But I'm not is he contemplating some kind of move? Nope, he's not out. Yet. Not yet. No, I was telling myself if I make a successful reshop or something, I will walk myself with this one. I was thinking like, <laughs> what did you okay, get? but if I bust you, I'm taking your stuff away. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm using it as a weapon. I, I was thinking if I beat anyone in a hand on the turn or later, 
get a consolation chocolate. You guys are really That's putting a, a lot a of really nice consolation to him. I just ate mine right away. <laughs> Turn over later. This sea bed take it. Okay, outer table. See Pablo? On the Cheeto. <laughs> Nacho Barbero eliminating the Brazilian. Still some Brazilian flags in the mix, but with Silva's departure, it's now just the lone Rodrigo Seiji. We're in back to back. <laughs> Pocket aces, James Chen, <laughs> one of the most aggressive players in the game. I can talk and eat while thinking. We're just like eating a chocolate there after the conversation would be pretty strong. Settle the bond. You get a chocolate if you win. If I'm not mistaken, Randy, you were here for the FT for 250k. Chen bowing out in ninth at the hands of Bryn Kenny. <laughs> yes, they did have a, it was the second half of the final table, ace queen into ace king, made a statement, was wrong. Looking to get some chips back here. Scarf one down. You really got into it there. You, you, can't, you can't do multi bites with this. You all, didn't, but you didn't bring the chocolate to your face, you brought your face to the chocolate. Yeah. Because um, with these ones, there's a uh, coconut flakes and it falls off. I oh, to okay. <laughs> There's a GTO way to eat this chocolate. Get one of them fancy chocolates. You're killing these tournaments, huh? Did anybody watch the? Stream? That's good. Two for two is actually, I think I'm actually quite out. good. I'm this one. Three out of I was gonna five. ask what you guys had that down. Uh, you don't have to tell me. Oh. Triton. That's good. Uh, That's really good. I don't think it's up yet. Yeah. Is it not up yet? Huh? Maybe it's not. Yet? No, I thought if it was up, it's reasonable. So. But, uh, it's all good. Yeah. I think it's a one hour delay, and that was probably about like 55 minutes. Yeah, 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 cool. But I will let you know when I, how bad Stevie's cards were when I find out. It's pretty obvious what I had. Eights and nines. <laughs> what a fantastic feature table we have here. <coughs> Real treat. It's lively as well it's for the poker like fans around the world. Together, and then if it falls to us, we're gonna play a little blind versus blind, you know. We finished three to check right now. No, no. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe next orbit. Shulman activating the suit of king yeah. in the cutoff. Yeah. Yeah. Polk and Smith in the blinds. Hold. Nice hand for Dan Smith in the big blind. Okay. Yeah, just 15 bigs. Is this just? Triangle time, please, dealer. Yep. Just try and just pick up what's in the middle. He knows that Shulman is raising very wide range uh, currently in second. Do really love this bucket hat. I thought there was only one style out oh. there. You, you'll see, Randy. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, mate. There's, <laughs> there's a few. Shout out to Janice, of Is course. That's designer of all the merchandise. Shulman just gets the count. See now if you had your chocolate still. It is. Doug Polk with the whoop. Yeah. Still waiting for that sponsorship deal to come through, Randy. I'm an instant gratification guy. It's a unique trait amongst poker players. Did you hear about the prop bet Polk had with Perkins? No, I haven't. Enlighten me. The, uh, I, I believe body weight loss was the, the main goal. I think he had to get down to, I want to say sub 18-ish percent body fat. Okay. Um, I can't remember the exact amount of time. I want to say 12, 12 months or so. Is it over? It is. Came yeah. up short only just, but I tell you what. It's one of those bets that you lose, but you win, if that makes sense, because Doug is uh, 
Definitely in the best shape of his life right now. Depends on how much he lost. I think he lost, I want to say, 200k. <laughs> James, producer James Dempsey is... So he lost r if, almost two bullets of this tournament already. So he's, sure. in for th he's in for at least three is what you're telling me. Lost 200k, but is in the best shape of his life in his early 30s. Seems like a, you know, one of those trade-offs that... Okay, you're about to do the same prop bet. I, I don't need to. Oh, okay. You know, but perhaps one day. Jack Tan going to come along against Doug Polk. Maria keeps forcing us to get ice cream. 2.30 in the middle. I didn't get offered. Four tray, rainbow, knife, a pair oh, yeah. player connecting. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ace Queen definitely could uh, fire something small. Depends on how he plays the rest of his range. Let's check back. It's not mine. Also, this chair's. Can I get a different. This one's pretty broken. That's one of those incredibly Cheers. annoying turn cards for Polk. Feels like the opportunity now presented to Kenny. Oh. And the way this board is running out definitely favors the big blind. You'll probably see him go large to put maximum pressure on these ace-x checkbacks, the broadways. Oh, yeah? What do you think? Looks like Bryn agrees with you, Ran. As he does go for the 165 into 230. Mm -hmm. Of course, all of the straight draws are present. The things that Bug Poke would be looking to pick off. Not too much interference against those hands. You know, all of the numbers, eight mm -hmm. between four. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the Jack-10. Great call here from Doug Polk. Which hands? The ace-queen, Jack-10, or the, the hands that he's currently... The hands he's trying to pick off, right, like right. the five, six, six, seven. Didn't want to name them all. I, I was referencing the massage hands, but... It's okay. <laughs> Got it. Sorry. <laughs> Three of diamonds. Randy, you know what appeared here? The bottom pair trip draw. Neither player with a tray. And now, Randy, Polk keeping Kenny honest on the turn. And now Kenny with just Jack High on this river with 560 in the middle. How do we proceed? A big question is how light does he feel Doug Polk would call a turn bet? Does he feel he will call these type sure. ace high type hands? Then he's more likely to follow through. He probably doesn't, hence why he checked and figured he was up against Showdown. Well, there we go, nice little pickup for Mr. Yeah, Douglas K. Polk to 1.7. Kenny. That yeah, would have been a not great move for you. No. Sweat, though. Sub 25 is. Would have been a sweat, but not sweating on our official timekeeper, Jacob and Co. See the makers of these incredible timepieces as they're not just about the diamonds, sapphires, or the rubies. If you're into poker and gambling themed gear, there's just the one perfect watch brand to check out as they're embedding a playful spirit into the watch functions. And I know, Randy, one of the big stories from Cyprus last year was, I want to say, uh -oh. KT with the Astronomia Casino. Is that Rodrigo? It is the Brazilians on the flip side of dinner break. I don't know. Saw an ace king had for dinner, but it looks like Aspen stacking chips with ace king against the 10 3 of Seiji. And just worth noting that Seiji was incredibly short the time the money went in, in fact, it was down to just five bigs. And it's 10 3 coming up short against the ace king of your stats. So 22 players left now. Ladder. <coughs> Since returning, everyone guaranteed 207,500. Wired nines here for James Chen, UTG. Wired nines. They are wired. They're connected. They indeed. I was going to comment about that outer table shot that Gustav Espen and Nacho have had tremendous series so far here in London. But we switch over. Notice the Seth Davies just call in the cutoff. That's very interesting. 
He must feel that against a UTG open to 3-bet is just only a strong range, and he'd rather kind of trap some of the shorter stacks, squeezing, get Precisely. some squeezes in there. Yeah, Malinowski, Paul Pua behind with just 25 bigs. Certainly opportunity for them to squeeze as the Queens are way out in front on the 9-4 deuce. The flat call, <coughs> it might get him some extra chips here because you see Seidel having that little gut shot probably will have to continue for most bet sizes. Seth Davies starting the hand third in chips. <coughs> and note the small sizing round. Is this a byproduct of just how dry and disconnected this flop texture is? It would seem so. It's a quarter pot. He also can extract value from the ace highs that would have to just call one ace high is in there. Tobias can't really like the bet and the call in front, although the price is pretty good and he does have backdoor diamonds. But he might feel that Seidel is reasonably often paired. He's now getting six to one on a call. He might even be thinking about check raise from time to time. Don't you dare. With the two overs, backdoor diamonds. He might even be checking like a rather large part of his range, even his over pairs. Right. Can certainly leverage his perceived Two ten. aces and kings range as he does precisely that. 210 we go. All of a sudden, this pot became really exciting. Clearly underwrapped here, right? Two queens. Underwrapped. And the thing is, Tobias attacking here probably feels that Seth Davies got like a lot of pocket pairs that aren't sets. The random broadways that will bet. <coughs> and when his opponent calls, it may be more geared to those small pocket pairs, you know, eights and lower. It wouldn't surprise me if Tobias just keeps firing, trying to put max pressure in the set of queens. Looking good. Good luck firing on that turn. See, Davies will be going nowhere, and now Davies in his mind praying that Schwecht has aces or kings. 7 9 5 in the middle. Yeah, and the power position obviously great as he doesn't have to let this one check through. With the overcard, Tobias, if he does fire, must feel that he's up against like fives through eights so often and just trying to get it to fold. Here and now. What a dream scenario of top set. Pretty dry texture, too. Yeah, this is third v fifth in chips with 22 left and 4 million up top. This is one of those hands where Davies is already thinking of Vegas and the Mirage. <laughs> now, Yes, there is a presence of a flush draw and a straight draw, <laughs> but with the way Tobias has played the hand, you might want to discount a bit. And you don't want to raise and just blow your customer off of some big hero fold, even though there is stack to play for. I love the smooth call here. <clears throat> Schweck drawing dead with one card to come. Davies guaranteed to be the tournament chip leader. The Ten of Hearts completes the run out spades brick. 1.5 million in the middle. I wonder if he slows down now, just given how much resistance Seth Davies has put in position. I'd imagine Seth Davies is easily could have all the nines, fours, and deuces. Does he feel that? The pocket pair will still hang around in the turn, lower than the nine. Sheesh. What about like ace nine eight nine? What about like ace three ace five of spades? Also possible, although he beat does those. beat that. Right. But you also wouldn't expect that hand to just check back the river, so it's kind of tricky. Mm. Yeah, real fun hand. Byproduct of the flop check raise from the young German pro. 
Davies just ready to snap him off. So much money out there to fight for. Randy, the longer this man thinks, the longer I feel like... He's torching some chips. Yes, sir. Tower of white chips moving forward. That is 900k. He's not going to see returning to his stack. And Seth Davies is about to become the overwhelming tournament chip leader with 22 left. I mean, apologies for the perhaps stupid question. No but stupid do we questions. ever not go all in here with Queens? No, I believe you just mandatory go all in here. You only lose to King Jack. And right. They probably don't even take that line on the flop too often. You just need to wait how often you're beat, which is n almost nil to everything you do beat. And just to say that Tobias obviously feels that Seth Davis will still bet call like 9Xs that aren't two pairs for him to still fire 900k right now. Wow. How annoying is that in Schweck's shoes as he goes from fifth in chips at the start of the hand I sense it. to 19th now. Have ourselves a new tournament nine, nine. chip leader. Maybe you have the sitting oh, on. No, no. <laughs> Overwhelming chip leader, 4.6 million. Second in chips is Juan Pardo with 3.2. I don't think that was behind at any point. Average stack is 1.7. Catch the flop. Hmm? I don't think I was behind three flops either. It would be very, very hard for me to be behind. I agree, Seth Davies. <laughs> I agree. Nice read. Short stack duties in the field belong to Dan Smith, Ike Haxton, and Ty Seibinger. But those short stacks, 17, 18, and 19 bigs. So we've got ourselves a lot of playability. <coughs> got JNT on 2.3 mil. On you, JNT. Thanks. <laughs> King of clubs now, Randy. I don't know what Seth had for dinner. Wherever Set it was, of queens he had. <laughs> was explosive. <laughs> yeah, ace king for dessert, eh? Yep. Paul sitting on queen jack of clubs in position, 25 big blinds. Definitely hand he can flat call. Occasionally put in the three bet, but still plays nicely as a call. But actually, just laying down. It's a pretty, Bravo. pretty solid lay down. Bravo. Tobias. Round two. Now, again, at risk of asking a stupid question, but the queen jack hitting the mark bosses on twenty five bigs, but the short stack on just 17, so it feels like there's a lot of ICM considerations in effect already, even though we've got 22 left. He also probably feels that with Schwett in the big line, he can just squeeze jam him off his hand a lot, his equity, and also he probably doesn't feel strongly about having a, a wide flatting range off right. of that stack. Regardless, it is Ace King against the gutter ball. 240 in the middle. Seth with the two overs, backdoor clubs. 
Yeah, we'll continue for quarter parts. From time to time, you'll see the 6.5 actually check raise in this spot, especially with the chip distribution, chip leader. Going to see bet extremely high frequency on these queen number number boards. Check call certainly fine, so you don't get blown off your hand. Although, if he does check raise, I never really expect Seth Davies to put in another re raise, but we'll keep it slow. Well, Schweck looking for a <coughs> rebate on that monster pot that just played out between him and Davies. Eight of spades on the turn now, giving him an open ender, 360 in the middle, and Perhaps doesn't even need to get there. Randy, should Davies check this ace-king high? Yeah, it seems that Seth Davies with ace-king would have to check this turn at a very high frequency. Oftentimes, Tobias is paired. Unless he feels... Okay. You hit it. Mm. Oh, sliding it on over to Shark. Schwecht tables the straight. Six high. Wow. You might want to muck that. Yeah. Turn it upside down. There we go. Six high. Yeah. I thought it was six high. I was like, I win, man. Wait a second. Ace four space. Ace five. By the way, I just want to say, if he has ace four space, I am never playing poker with you ever again in my entire life. <laughs> The weapons back on display. <laughs> so the position is actually pretty awkward here, pocket nines. It's under gun versus plus one. He's sitting on just under 30 blinds. You usually see flat calls in this spot because it sucks to kind of 3-bet fold this hand with this kind of stack depth. Unless he's looking to 3-bet call it off. But just not one of the easy spots in poker. No, not at all. Especially with this much money up top. He is going to go for the 3-bet. Should thin out the field. Oh, uh, no. never mind. Two queens. With the ladies back for Kim. What on earth is going on on the flip side of this dinner break? It's been non-stop action. Yeah, we got a car collision incoming here. Two queens, ace, king, and should be able to save Dan Smith with this action here and now. King Jack, 9-3, 8 deuce, hitting the mark. This has gone under the gun open for Polk. Plus one, three bet. Cut off cold four bet jam. It's never fun to see a cold four bet jam when you're holding Ace King, but then again, it's just 25 big blinds. I just don't really see Polk ever laying this one down. Ace King of Spades. A time card coming in. And occasionally that 215 3 bet is just dead money. Although it is, appears to be sh kind of strong with the positions that are 3 betting. Yeah, what are your thoughts on this flat, uh, this, this raise from Dan, by the way? This 3 bet feels very unorthodox. Yeah, like I told you, it was just kind of a tricky, uncomfortable spot to begin with. But just like, imagine if you had two jacks in poke spot. That would be a very annoying with the action as played. And if Polk had ace queen, definitely would go straight into the muck. Was he contemplating a big laydown potentially? Nope. Here we go. As expected. How much did you say that was? Nine hundred and ninety five thousand. Nine million bucks. I get thirty. No. And how does that twenty seconds to twelve? Oh. Well, Dan's 215 going to be a little sweetener for whoever wins this one. Ace-King for Polk. 
a slight equity disadvantage against Kim's Queens. 2.3 million chip pot. Oh my word. The that was the last nine in floor. the deck too, Henry. I saw one nine folded. You did, it yeah. Did. Smith would have flopped top set. As with no spade on board, Polk. Six ounce once to eliminate Kim. Kim looking to just hold. Hello. Barry on the river. Ace of clubs. Corner pocket. Disappointing. And the run bad for Kim in high equity spots this series continues. It's like, actually, there's no cap on how long you can be looking for. But I was on the full roller coaster. Wow, that was. Just when I, when I start to dip towards the bottom of the roller coaster. You know, getting close to the ground, maybe even the roller coaster starts to malfunction. The wheels, the you nuts know, rickety, bolts start like rickety. coming out. The next thing you know, you're back in, <laughs> back on track. <laughs> I mentally had like accepted that I was a short sack again. No, no, no. it's Stan's big blind, right? He raised them to the gun, and I three bet. Oh. Oh, I don't even that know is what's true. going on that down there. Three, three back, hold four. Oh. Oh, yeah, because the blinds are 40. I wasn't. For some reason, I was thinking in my head that the blinds were 80, and you opened to, like, a little over two and a half based on your... <laughs> I was that pretty excited to, to get to play versus your three bet. <laughs> and <laughs> if you fold, it'd be like, I see how it is. We hang out on break, and you take a... Make a fucking oh. move on me when I get that. But then when he jammed, I was like, oh shit, that's actually pretty scary. That's not like good times. I mean, is what it is, but I'm happy with the situation overall. Wow, that was. Sounds like Polk still can't believe he rivered that ace. Oh, that was something. Great for content. I'm sure he's going to be reviewing some of his hands at the feature table over on his channel. Got a funny feeling that the... <laughs> Is this chocolate time for our Rochers? The retention rate <laughs> of the viewers around the world is going to be incredibly high. <laughs> Eat the chocolate jam. I like this guy, man. He shows the deuce. Chocolate. He looked at it, <laughs> turned around, ate his chocolate, jam, folded, and showed a deuce. That is, I respect your style, sir. I respect your style. Holy shit. Even the masseuse is getting a chuckle at that one. Looks so strong, too. Yeah. Not that it really matters how strong you look. There. I know, I know. It's not like you made a huge blade rod. Wow. I don't think anyone's going to be tuning in to then tune out of this one. Is that a new course in the Poker Code lessons? The, the chocolate strategy? <laughs> the chocolate strategy. How to it. time when to eat it? Stare your opponent <laughs> directly in the eyes as you find the reach. I have a spot now, nines. Well, what does he do? Does he eat another he's chocolate? He believes that I got shit anyway, and he's always right. You should try having some good hands then. I try, but <laughs> just keeping it regular. Get a count. Seven, seven, Polk's seven. got two eights. I don't know chocolate being dispensed here as these two eights has got a, a bit of a trouble spot given that showman's kind of deep too. It sucks to kind of call 770 and get jammed on and fault that. 100%. Polk's third in chips, Shulman's fourth in chips. Also excessive to re-jam too in case Shulman does wake up for a hand. Nice lay down. Oh. 
God damn it. Oh. I made a huge fold. <laughs> thought I was strong. Well, I just thought you'd be strong sometimes. And then I have to play, I'm forced to play like for 60 bigs with you. Feeling pretty good about the guy that just jammed a deuce. Oh, so that was strong. No, this is just fun. I promise. I made a, I made a probably a punty big fold. I don't even know, man. God, I'm so bad at tournaments. <laughs> so you could either dominate me by one, but I think it's more likely that we would have split. I folded eights. Yeah, sure. Call. But then we're really deep, though. It's not like it's like it's just like a total free roll back to the <laughs> opener. Yeah. Oh, but his like shoving range there for like. No. Three mil. I'm not, yeah. yeah. Oh. You sometimes have to like call 800 and fold to three mil. Oh. I don't think I can do that, like, emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> then that's why you chose your yeah, path. That's true. <laughs> good, good point. Then <laughs> it might have just been a rip. Can you guys stacks real quick? Folding over to Doug Polk here, Hello. currently sitting in third. Polk, a little bit of a spin post dinner. Three million in chips now. Might Dan Smith attack Doug Polk again. Two sixes, 20 blinds. I'd say it's a mandatory shove in this spot, especially against a big stack who's going to have to try to pick up blinds. Really, really good for your image to be like, I made a massive fold there versus that jab, and then you open the button, and it's like. <laughs> Doug Paul, Dan Smith, Brink Kenny, Ike Caxton, Stephen Chidwick, Nick Shulman, and Matthias Ivinger. No, no, no. My, my, my so I interpreted as shove anything in the next. Uh, no, I was saying I'm not emotionally ready to call 800 and fold the rest. See, I heard I'm not emotionally ready to call 800. So then I'm like, well, that's right, because I have about <laughs> That's wise. All right, that's it. Next time I'm calling eights. You had me? Oh, oh. What now, Bryn? What, what's new? <laughs> pot, pot, kettle. <laughs> wow, that's nice. That is nice. Oh, the air up here. It's fresh. Yeah. <coughs> Should we just go for a stroll around Hyde Park, Randy? Doesn't feel like there's any need for us to be here commentating with Doug Polk at the feature. Yeah. Okay. See ya. Mike in the big A3 of clubs. Kenny with deuce four suited in the small. Options for Bryn, as always. Does cover. And for Haxton here, A3 of clubs. Definitely handy. can often just open ship it. Not really looking to raise to induce, so... You either check this back or you just jam out right oftentimes. Yeah, I believe he is the shortest stack in the field. As he does announce himself and a snap fold from Bryn, of course. Back to the outer table. Problematic for Malinovsky. It looks like he might take this spot here, Randy. King Queen O in the small against the chip leader, button open.
the money's gone in the middle. Davies can extend his lead at the top here, just needs to fade hearts or a lady to be the overwhelming chip leader. I mean, he's already the overwhelming chip leader. You can just hold here. Be up to 5.5 million. So you see the 9649 board. Limitless fills it. Feels frustrated. Nine of hearts on the turn. Draw into a queen and a queen only. Finds the queen, Randy. Finds the three outer. One, two. Okay, wow, one point five, yes. Or one point one point two. So did it then. What a time mm. to hit a three out at Seth Davies rather than playing a hundred and forty bigs. <laughs> he's dropped down to second in chips. Malinowski's moved up to sixth. Talk about Talk about good timing for a queen, because that yeah. was a 30 big blind jam. Should be out of here. Well, talk about high six figures in equity, Randy. I mean, that pot alone was 1.5x average. Well, things are different from Malinowski now. Opening to 10x with that solid stack. Tobias looks interested out of the big. He's going to just defend the Queen Jacks off suit, perhaps thinking about it. <coughs> 220 in the middle. Limitless with a lifeline is. See the Queen 8 trade board runoff. We know for a fact the Schwecht has the best hand. My guess is oftentimes Malinowski has got like Jack 10 or 10 9, little gutter ball. 200. Look at his value raise, which is Jack Kicker. Knowing his image is going to be attacking, does quickly lay that one down. Maybe an ace 10. At these kind of check raises, Randy, with the Queen Jack on the Queen 8 trait. Two Tony, there's flush draws out there, there's gut shots available. Is that just to protect the check raising range overall in terms of having both value and some of those combo draws and some of those semi bluffs, if that makes sense? Yes, mainly uh, you want to protect your ranges, whereas if you're only check raising sets and, and draws, well, right. it's so off, so rarely do you have a set, especially Queen is pretty much impossible given you just flat called big blind. One Pardo chip leader of the entire tournament courtesy of that queen of clubs on the river for Malinowski limitless finding the three outer against Seth Davies to stay alive but Seth still in second of course 
consummate pro at all times, but you do have to ask yourself, how do you just stay cool, calm and collected Please, one. with four million up top as Bryn is now on short stack duties unsuccessfully hero calling against Chidwick. Dealer change, ship counts at this feature table. A lot of Americans at this feature table. Five. Ship counts brought to you by betacr.eu. 72 bigs for Polk out in front. Average stack of this one, 45 big blind average, Randy. One of the deepest tournaments of the series in terms of the structure and the average stack. But I want you to think about the fact you have these elaborate get-ups. Realize that you're in a category that is you, Phil Helmuth, and Dan Cates. I just want you to think about that and then take that however you want to, but that is your... That's great. <laughs> I thought I was getting in there. No, you're a little... Oh, well, you want me You want me in there? No. You know what, Dan? You know what, Dan? You know what? I mean, I used to be in there, and then Shulman made fun of me for wearing hipster glasses and a cowboy hat, and I had to retire it. Me? When did I make fun of you? Super hot. Oh, one second. You Pause had a... in the booth? That's different. It's... That's business. <laughs> That's just business. That's business. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't deny it. Would you say, Nick, that you have to break a few eggs? <laughs> you have to, you know... You have to get your hands a little bit dirty in that business. This is oh. true. Oh, oh boy. Paxton. <laughs> Obviously going nowhere here with Numero Uno. Just asking for a count. Doesn't want to give anything away. So, so likely we're going to see the end of Bryn Kenny after winning that 250k. There is that jam over the top. Kings oh for Shulman. Word. What? This is usually a dream scenario. What on earth is going on? Shulman waking up with the Cowboys. <coughs> Snapped it. That's disgusting. Is that five? Yeah, it's seven thirty. What is going on, Randy? Since returning from dinner break, it has been nothing but car crash after car crash after car crash. I love that you, you still... Oh, God. Two wow. club flop. Wow. I mean, is this just how you win? These high rollers? Nine outs for Brent. Mike just That's looking like to fade wire. a club or the case king. Does precisely that as he finds the ace of spades on the river for the unnecessary set. Kenny out the door in 21st after a sweaty flop. Shulman still with a very healthy 1.8 million. Ike now up to seventh in chips. An incredible showing for Brink Henny, winning the 250k, cashing the 100k record breaking main. He's out of there. Just an absolute bloodbath, Randy. You got a feel for Shulman. I mean, he gets this opportunity to snap call, thinking that he's definitely Brendan smashing there, Haxton's range. Yeah. And he had right. one out. He didn't, didn't get there. After the flop, it was kind of obvious he would hit. We're like, oh, this is how it gets done. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> <coughs> Hold. 
Hulk really getting a workout in there. Yes, Back day. <laughs> Going to work. I really felt the king. Why, I don't know. But I did. <laughs> I felt it for some reason, that red king or whatever it was. <laughs> okay. That was a great <laughs> shamanism. Is it the heart? That one. That's a very nice spot for aces. That's how I drew it up. I had almost the exact same hand today. I got one versus queen, so I'm at ace queen. And I just triple up through it. It's nice. You're like, oh man, there's not even really many outs. Um, well, that one you had to sweat some outs. It was a little bit of sweat, especially against Bryn. Never seen him do this move before. Hmm? He was like doing this, calling for clubs. Kind of greedy. No, I thought it was sharp. Oh, sharp. I mean, he's like club and then two on the flop. It's like, oh my God. Well, he said, like, all you need is two clubs on the flop, free flop, or something like that. Yeah. And then two clubs came on the flop, and I'm like, this guy is just on the next the next level. <laughs> he just starts rubbing his hands and looking at me, and I'm like, is it dinner time? <laughs> <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> Licking his chops. I mean, it, whatever voodoo or magic is to be able to call cards like that. Perhaps there needs to be a next chapter, you know, not just calling the two clubs on the flop. But yeah, he forgot to do the hand rub right, once more yeah, for the river. And river. Maybe even especially reasonable. Perhaps get your money back. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever sold you that course is the blinds go up to 25k, 50k. What a ridiculous field. And an insane lineup at this feature, I mean. Lines up. Remind me why we're doing this. To avoid redraw stalling. And the redraw is 16, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So Fast action systems in, Henry? Dan Smith just being reminded why we're doing this. Yeah, I agree. Glad someone asked. Yeah, so 10 seconds to act in unopened pots now. Agreed. Prevent the stalling. So it is Looks like the... It's 10, right? 10 seconds? Yeah. Yeah. It's on 20, so... Looks like the dealer forgot. I love how the dealer didn't really care either. Like, Polka Swift, like, it's on Twitch. She's like, it's all right, boys. Yeah, didn't even apologize I'll, or anything. I'll do my like, job, you do yours, okay? Yeah, your job is to just get a massage for God knows how many hours straight. That elimination of Brin, of course, does mean that everyone's now guaranteed 226k. Playing down to the FT today. Tomorrow, the champion will be walking away with $4,185,000. and take for Stevie. Like back in the day. Just like pure defense <coughs> in the big line because you're just like, let's roll. But now like I just look at those like shittiest offsuit hands and I'm just like I'm gonna get I'm gonna get chopped up here for a swap I feel like. Very responsive <laughs> stuff all. Probably not gonna coach you as we're playing. That's fair. That's fair. Playing left. Cool. Sometimes I would call with bad hands. And even sometimes raise them. That's fair. Sometimes That's fold. fair. That's fair. Very nice coaching there from Dan Smith. All options always available. Hold it. Just very classic. Fold. <laughs> That's what we cook it with. <laughs> Uh, that's a very classic, you know, Doug Polk statement on his Is channel, it? you know. Sometimes this hand wants to race, sometimes it wants to flat, <laughs> sometimes it wants to fold, you know. I mean, you're never wrong. You have to be you know, in 
on the joke to, to know that bit about Polk. The inner circle, if you will. Sounds like you're a part of this inner circle. I'm not, Randy. Not quite. I don't know, like... If Been we ostracized. Agree, can we not redraw tables? This seems like a great one, I think. We're, I'm pretty happy with my, my, my table, you know? Just good, good banter. Friendly faces. I don't know. This is an extremely tough table, Polk. Uh, it's called sarcasm, Randy. What? Stevie's due for a good one-liner. What are you saying? What's a one-liner? One-line joke. Oh, I see. <laughs> that was a poker reference. <laughs> well, Doug Polk's picked up the ace jack. They are actually very deep in this spot. About 50 blinds, effective. 300. Attacking Steven Chidwick in. 1-7 down, as you can see, Haxon mocking the king seven of clubs, and it's awkward playing two sevens out of position, especially when the player three bet UTG open. It does scream strength from time to time. Of course, very deep, so getting a pretty good price, but does need to proceed with caution out of position. 725 in the middle. Two of the largest stacks in the field. Third v fifth in chips. As Chidwick flops middle set on the 876 board. Yeah, there was only one seven left to hit a set with. Polk. Just ace jack high. And, you know, Chidwick's actually thinking about taking the lead here, it seems, for him to put a little tank here. This is a type of board texture that does hit the three bet caller more often the three better itself. And he doesn't want this one to just check through outright. Clearly for Chidwick to lead here means that he's also leading just some absolute misses and pokes out. Is that the trick here when it comes to flopping sets? Make sure that one of your set outs is dead <laughs> in order to find it on the flop seems to be. That's the second time, wasn't it? it Dan indeed. Smith with the nines. Is indeed. Very warm welcome to everyone around the world tuning in for this one. Day two coverage of the $125,000 main event. You asked Bryn about his necklace. <laughs> I thought that was really just extra strong. Not no, <laughs> you know? Because I know you don't really like feel anything at the poker table, so it was just genuine. You're like, hey, what's up with that necklace? He was seething. <laughs> you just couldn't feel it. I actually didn't even know that was going on. Maybe you didn't see that, yeah. Oh, I saw the value bet. Okay. Well, it was, you know, right before you asked him about his necklace. No, I'm kidding. I don't know if he was seething. You got like 800 or so? Huh? He did just. He, he did, okay. but you know how it is. It's That's water under the bridge. <laughs> right. Which stage in history? The seven million he picked up yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, only twenty-four. Sounds like Shulman's doing commentary on the table as well for us. A couple tens here in position. Looks like he will be able to attack Doug Polk once again. It's got to annoy Polk soon. <coughs> and Nano Noko and myself. Best poker, baby. We we'll always do our best to stay quiet when the players are talking. That was a stinger, though. It's a little bit of a stinger. Brent always rebounds well, you know? You're right. There's always that 250k right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Seeing a lot of love from the viewers on YouTube and Twitch now, perhaps the right time to say if you haven't already clicked that like button. We'd love to get up to 3K likes by the end of the stream today. Of course, this content being brought to you live 
free of charge from London, the Triton Super High Roller Series. So we continue to broadcast some of the best, if not the best, poker content in the world with your favorite players free on YouTube and Twitch. And if you haven't already, join the family. Click that subscribe button, click that follow button if you're watching on Twitch. We're gonna be posting some nosebleed cash game content later on this month. Trust me, you do not want to miss that. I've seen some of the footage. Some ridiculous seven-figure pots, and that's all we're asking for is the click of a button. Randy Liu, alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, stepping in for the likes of Arlene Ajard and Maria Ho, who got us down through the bubble into the money as Ike. Hello, Aces. Looks to pounce on Polk. Polk? Perhaps, as you mentioned, you get a bit frustrated as a few times now he's been beaten up. Yeah, it seems like every time he's raised, he's gotten three bet, usually by Dan Smith. Dream scenario here with the Six, three seven, bet in front of the two aces and kind of bring in a four bet. <laughs> this hand's pretty much right, over. No, I mean, well, it worked out. Little bounce back there for Shulman. Just make like a reasonable, normal open. Camera dropped. <coughs> the card flash. Some people asking about the outer tables, as always. Can head over to the Triton Poker Plus app and watch every hand from every table. So if you haven't already, download it, the App Store or Google Play Store. Every hand from the tournament, as well as that 60k turbo that's running. Yeah, it's, it's nice that you can follow the remaining three tables at the same time. Our feature will keep the other two on, on the side on your <coughs> iPhone. Sure. It looks like a porcelain vase. <coughs> Is that what it's supposed to be? I mean, it's a base they had here, and then you can put it on a base, put it on wallpaper. Yeah, it's, Do I have trust it's like that color and pattern, you know? Yeah. Call? I think it should have 20 seconds when there was a call. Hmm? Oh, okay. I, 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 was, I was thinking about it for a while. Like, what is that? Like, I know that kind of design from it somewhere. Won't, and then it it's only if hold it, everyone. <coughs> Some confusion for Ivan Gersi. Flops a jack high flush draw. Shulman. Bottom pair, a6 tray. Yeah, and Shulman's looking to just to deny the equity of the big blind who is short. He knows the big blind won't be attacking too often. Every chip so important. Does have the clubs. Two overs, of course. Naturally is a coin flip as it stands. Ibinger naturally going nowhere and gets there immediately on the deuce of clubs turn. Nick now drawing dead. 250 in the middle, two bigs invested. Very hard for Shulman to get a better hand to fold in this spot. Might want to strongly consider some pot control. Probably will often call a turn bet though, depending on the sizing, given he picked up the clubs. Ibinger does know that Asex is very heavy in the small blind range as well. Might still try to extract from those. <coughs> oh, a check back. That is very sneaky. He must feel that Showman's range is rather weak and it lets him pick up two pair. Because if had he bet the turn, there's a decent chance Showman would have laid that one down and not see this. River two know, pair. Good hands. Quick peek. 
Ooh, I hope they better ra or they raise or call. How much money do I get to make here? That's like the best. What a oh, disgusting okay. river. <laughs> okay. So, the Shulman kings oh, against yeah, aces just a couple of orbits ago. Oh, oh, you're just gonna tell me the location. Shulman so might feel that he's up against six X a lot as played. One fifty. I do too. Puts in one fifty. Like Not too big to get those six X's to call. I know I have to do this sometimes, so like I'm gonna do what needs to get done, kind of thing. You know, that's more about getting the job done. I mean, at this point, yeah, it's like you gotta you, love this. You do it to survive. You don't do it because you're like. No, actually, maybe you do love to do it. <laughs> Either way, but there's nothing like a feeling of like being able to get the full double, and you know. Pretty much, just need to go for max yeah. value. Yeah. As many chips as you want to push in. Yeah, a lot in there. Come on. Shulman betting 60% on the river. Oh, looks like he's he's called so fast and he's going to see the bad news. Did not expect the check back of the flush. Uh, Shulman just knowing he's never folding and giving Ivinger credit for a lot of one club. High club type of hands. Grim River for Nick, but still 1.6 million, north of 30 bigs. Really nicely played by Ibinger at that turn check. Got him that extra 525. It's such a, such a subtle and small rule. I mean, it makes sense, it's good. Ways to shave off like 30 or 40 seconds of like free flop. I think it's a bit unnecessary. Why does this I mean, unnecessary and complicated. What did you say, sorry? I think it's a bit unnecessary and complicated because they're already catching, like, before they break a table, they make everyone catch up to the same number of hands anyway. Yeah. I yeah, mean, that's You true. get a couple more hands in, yeah, but like, I think a lot of people are confused by it when they first encounter it and like. It, it is confusing. Extra stress. Extra stress, yeah. I think a 15 second free Maybe for just the whole tournament is yeah. completely fine. That makes sense, yeah. It's also like, if you have to like see someone stack or something, it leaves like almost no time after that. But I mean, you have those two rides anyway, and basically nobody ever uses any of them. Arguments both ways. We see it. It feels like 10 is enough for pretty much every spot. Paxton, he was on the right side of the biggest cooler pre flop in No Limit Hold'em, getting to work with the ace tray. Hold. Pick up the blinds and the big blind like, ante. Remember, I was trying to get some free coaching in the middle of the event. I had the same hand. I was like, damn it, I really could have used that coaching. Same exact hand. At least you're consistent. Yeah. Well, that one's also a little bigger. It was a min raise before. And an earlier position. That was definitely something I considered. <laughs> <laughs> Great point, Dan. Hundred and fifty one entries. Record breaking main event here at the JW Marriott Grosvenor House, London Park Lane. We have a stacked field Not as expected. Bucket. Final twenty. I have one million thirty thousand. If I can count. Led by Juan okay. Pardo, the Spaniard, also known as Malacca style online. Over four million for first. The plan of the day, Mr. Randy Lou, alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, gonna call the action all the way down to the FT. That's where we'll be pausing the clock. Players will be bagging for the night, the final nine that is. Coming back tomorrow and Wow. Hello. Fuck. What happened? Oh sorry. What do you think happened? <laughs> A 
such a good hand and might get just pushed off all your equity. <coughs> then again, though, he is dominated. I mean, for his opponent to just open jam, of course, all of the baby pocket pairs. Sometimes this is like jack 10, 10, 9 suited. Against the ace little, he actually performs rather well with queen 10 suited. Smith really considering this one. Yeah, and Dan Smith plays in a way he doesn't really ever let kind of a plus EB spot go away. But he would really love to try and lay this one down. It's tough, though. Seems like he's on defense. Looking up at the clock, looking up at the level, perhaps. Certainly someone that doesn't mind playing for the win, as Randy alluded to, when the opportunity presents itself. Oh. Wow, wow, he's made the call, Randy. And gets shown, perhaps, one of the worst hands he could be up against. The King-10 that has him dominated. A big five cards to come if Doug Polk can hold. Move oh up God. to third in again. chips. Apparently Dan Smith's favorite dealer. We'll see. Eight, opportunities. Seven, six. Such opportunities, as Randy said. Deuce the diamonds on the turn. Smith looking for a queen to double up. Nine for the chop. Doesn't find it as the king. Ten holds and a handshake, of thank course. I, I didn't have much, but thank you. I between jack, Smith jack of and Polk. Good game, bro. And with that, the supreme leader. Up to third in chips, Randy. Yeah, that's great. I mean, he was at he that point out earlier. Five, Chip down, no, but back where he was. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> GG Dan Smith. I think 925. Oh, before they enter. It's more. Sure, with a very Shulman esque styled quote. Couple tens here for J and T. Okay, J and T. We see you. In the mix of 19 left. To me? Yeah. Yes. Raise. Raise. 50 the line. Raise to 100,000. Fold. Fold. No, the Fold. deuces hit the muck, Randy. Yeah, straight in there. Fold. Tobias has been defending his big blind quite often. I'd imagine Queen 8 suit is certainly qualified as he quickly makes the call against JNT. Check. King Jack 9. JNT plays fast. Does indeed. 100k C bet. North of third. Schwecht with that gut shot. A very weak draw, especially with no clubs. Sometimes he makes it straight, and it springs a four-liner, so it's very hard to get pay off. Perhaps precisely for that reason, Randy, the queen high has hit the muck. JNT. Chip it up nicely. It will be a redraw once we get down to the final 16. It's like Juan Pardo is going to be moving to an outer table as we wind down. Talking of winding down, our official timekeeper once more. You know, I'm glad it came back up because we didn't have the chance to wrap up their Shonamir Casino timepiece, Randy, with the functioning roulette wheel inside. You can check it out during the break if you're in town. There is. Little display upstairs.
really embedding a playful spirit into their watch functions and will also be awarding a special collaboration timepiece to be won by the Triton, No Limit Hold'em and Short Deck main event champions. So not only does the champion walk away of 4.1 million, walk away with Jacob and Co. And that Astronomia Casino piece we first saw on KT's wrist back end of last year in Cyprus where he was actually taking bets at the table against his table mates. If I'm not mistaken, $1,000 was the max. <laughs> yeah, there and were people, table limits. There were, there were limits, but people were maxing. <laughs> of course, you think they're going lower than the max, this cast of crew. So one of these players definitely will be winning a Jacob & Co. watch, as you mentioned. Ace-9 offsuit for the UTG Open of Seth Davies. Keep in mind, he lost that big pot earlier. Disgusting way to do it as well. But still in nice. second. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tobias, perhaps. Maybe that was on purpose, too. <laughs> Did you see how fast he yeah. kind of acted out of turn, I think, I believe. He was thinking about something with the ah. Queen Jack and JNT. A <laughs> couple tens again. Yeah. Yeah, JNT was so excited. Bad, Three bet. Not bad outcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was unintentional. Still ten, no more ten seconds. You have to click ten seconds, you know. Limitless you pocket queens. Seconds. Side out. Really? We have had ships. nothing oh. Ooh. but oh. monster hands. Reshoving. Since returning from break, just colliding. Oh, Ooh. kings for J and T. Does Limitless get away from this? He didn't snap it off because he's in prime position here. He's got 2.1 back. Asking for a count. JNT is sixth in chips. Madonovsky is in eighth, middle of the pack. Okay, okay. The problem is Queens is ahead of like Ace King by about seven percent or so. He knows this is like a Queens plus Ace King situation. Potential overlay of Seidel in the pot on the side, too. Does JNT ever have tens or jacks here? Note how fast JNT jammed and reshoved. Perhaps he thinks about a little bit if he was holding two tens or two jacks. Right, if Limitless finds the fold here, I tell you what. go out there and shake his hand. He's made the call, ran in, understandably yeah, so. Yeah. So he couldn't get away from it. A couple of blank kings for JNT. But everyone's out live. Both queens, all aces. Diamonds working for Seidel. Nine-time bracelet winner. Yeah, Limitless wanted to fold. JNT will be the chip leader if he can hold her. We finish the tick win. <laughs> mm, nice flop for you. That is a fantastic flop for him, boss. JNT. Nobody has bit. Love and life on the Jack 6 5. No diamond in sight, says Victor. Drawing to two outs once. Seidel drawing to three. One card to come. As oh. JNT finds the hold, oh, Randy, and with that, luck, a double crash. elimination. Yeah, you still have some left, no? Oh, really? As no, Limitless no, 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 no. 
goes over to JNT just to exchange <laughs> a handshake. <laughs> GG, Everyone gave him a fist bump. Yeah, rough at the last. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Sidehill also Quinten. going home. Jack, seven. I, I was winner. He bluffed. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I have the vengeance. No. There you go. Due to the fact <laughs> oh, yeah, that I remember the Queen Ten. I remember. had Sidehill oh, yeah. covered the start of the hand. Seidel going home with 226,000. Limitless making that pay jump to 254,000. Huge spot. No, I do apologize, Randy. I stand corrected. Both going home with 226k, and now everyone guaranteed 254,000 for their efforts. And we are on the final two table bubble, of course, now that we're down to 17. Wow. JNT. JNT. Overwhelming chip leader. 17 left. Shulman. Going to find the double barrel. Double E them. Against the big blind defend. We met before, by the way. I don't think we have, are we? Sorry? Have we met before? No. Doug. Nice to meet you, man. That's a crazy, it's a crazy hand. Looks like Doug Polk getting familiar with Juan Pardo, also known as Malacca style. One of the greatest Spanish poker players of all time. At least that's what I'm told. He is. Haxton here making the check call once again. Trying to feign weakness. Weakness feigned, Randy. 725 in the middle. Mike gonna knuckle once more and does Shulman empty the clip here? The thing is, he's bet the flop. He's bet the turn on the ace ace four texture. So often he's up against some kind of ace X. I mean, does he feel like he's up against 4x? There's not that many 4x that defend the big blind, too. I don't think he thinks he can win at showdown, but can he ever get a hand to fold is, is the big question. Wisely gives up. Waves the white flag. It's Haxton once more getting the better of Nick. moment to collect ourselves 17 left jnt leading the pack in this 125k main event after a flurry of bust outs kenny falling at the hands of ike haxton dan smith falling at the hands of doug polk and then eric seidel and limitless falling at the hands of jnt in a double bust out short stack duties now belong to boss paul puron's 14 bigs average stack is 44. Jungle Man still in. Nacho Barbero. It's a sick lineup, my friend. Espen Jorstad, Chin Wei Lim, Timothy Adams, James Chen. Insane spot we find ourselves with. And you know, Randy, we get to do this for a living, bud. We get to be here at the JW Marriott for this Triton Super High Roller Series, for this record-breaking main with four million plus for first. Pocket fours in the muck, as you just saw. For a living, mate. Yeah, we get to call the action, you know, get to keep Is this my full-time job, sir? In the booth, I don't know. What is your <laughs> full-time job, Randy? You know, you never text in between series, although you did hit me up with the happy birthday and after my motorbike accident. You did hit me up with the get well soon, so I do appreciate that. But I know nothing about what goes on down under, <laughs> Randy. I mean, as far as but I'm the concerned... the reason of down under, that's why we got to stay incognito. You could have a farm <coughs> down there. 
A, a vineyard? <laughs> I don't know. A vineyard. <laughs> Perhaps you got a bakery. Thank you. You chefing it up on the weekends? You Re tell re me. Regardless, look, I enjoy the Triton series. What would you call it then if this isn't a career? Is this not a career? I, I, I don't know. It's just a hobby. <laughs> so you just you just pick and choose when you show up. Yeah, but so far I've got a hundred percent choose rate, so you're all good. Apart from when you lose your passport, then the border. You're welcome. It. That's when they get you. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Ace King here. <laughs> the do you, button. Do you do you get a finder's fee <laughs> two years later? <laughs> a little commission. Like getting back to work. Ooh, man, Showman is down to 1.1. From time to time, you may see him just piling chips. Although usually the Jack-10 suited variety. Call usually the standard play in this spot, especially with 17 remaining. Let's call, it seems. Yeah, Showman is 15th in chips. The start of the hand, but very healthy, 25 big blinds. Flops best on the 10 6 deuce. Top pair with that jack of hearts for backup. Nice texture for, for Shulman here, Jack 10. Hopefully, he does pick up some chips. In this spot, it is the ace king with position, contemplating a C bet. And he does go 130. Nothing to do but continue with this Jack-10. I wouldn't think you'd be check-raising this pair of 10s with this kicker. But certainly crossing Showman's mind. Kind of depends on what you do with the rest of your range. Actually, does check-raise. So, Showman. Doesn't want to give free turn cards. For him to check raise here also means that he probably check raises the flush draws at a decent frequency. Wants to kind of expand his value range. It's tough here of Ace King because you do beat all of the, the draws, the gut shots, the flush draws. But you see your opponent's got 755 back, and if they're holding like a flush draw, they jam turn a lot, and are you really willing to continue unimproved? Nice pickup, denies some equity, 1.5. Back up to 30 bigs. Nick Shulman showing the poker world that not only does he talk the talk, he can walk the walk as well. Your neck, your back. Rocking up Hello, for this one, two, five, main. Is that a song? You know the classic song, Doug, from the 90s. Really holding it down. I don't know. The commentators okay. out there. Thank yeah, it's you. always cool to see Nick Shulman playing. Any kind of culture or music or actors or... <laughs> I feel like you've heard that one, but he's heard that one, right? Something to look up on my own time. Yeah. In the room when that song was on. At some point. Yeah. yeah, it's my neck, my back, and then from there it gets a bit explicit. A, a bit explicit, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Absolute banger. <laughs> Ike's clearly spent some time at the Rhino as well. In my younger days, I may have frequented that establishment. <laughs> <laughs> But it's been a it's been a hot minute since any. Randy, back in the day when it's you just were such a joy being a father now, you know, piecing <laughs> up people online. It's twenty four tabling, thirty tabling. Do you ever have the opportunity to visit that establishment? Visit, visit the Rhino? Yeah. No, I know of it, but I've never been. Lies, lies and deceit in the booth. <laughs> okay, I mean, every day. I, I instead yeah. of going to WSOP one K, I'm, I'm just taking that one K, turning them to one dollar bills. I'm not saying you have to up. go there every you got day, me. but you're telling me that all those years that you went to play in Vegas, you didn't once get dragged along, perhaps not by choice, but by friends who you know 
going through some dollar bills. No Would shame. you like me to repeat myself, my friend? Okay. Three deuce. Pair open ended. In the big blind. I'm in the Doug Polk and Nick Shulman camp. Well, I figured that if you're going to keep on pressing. Does check call. Auto second in chips. Start of this hand. Juan just has two really overs. World problem on you, but one of the things that I really just like about traveling is like the pillows. Like at home, you have like your perfect pillow, you know. And my neck is always just wrecked. And anytime I go to like any hotel, for a brief. And he's going to attack time, again. I around with the super large Tempur-Pedic pillow in my suitcase. I, was like, I hear this, that. This is kind of excessive. And I started accidentally leaving it in hotels, and I was like, I shouldn't do this, but I think maybe I'm going to go back to that. I, I hear you. Do have a pot brew in here. So Juan, for him to bet here, must feel that there's a lot of just ace X's that will just check fold the turn in this high ICM pressure scenario. I do believe there's a high frequency that Juan Pardo is going to also fire the river if it doesn't kind of connect with this lower end of the board. So when he sees another check call, he's thinking he's up against like the ace three, ace four, ace fives, or like the five six. I think uh, undeterred, at least on the turn, and now improving to two pair, Randy, but those ace x that you were talking of and alluding to, as well as the six x with that four liner on board, does the Spaniard find a way to win this one. I, I really don't see how Juan Pardo can, can barrel here again. He probably expects the ace rags to Stevie, you're definitely in never the fold, of course, clean stacks of with the wheel. Category. Like every time I look at your stack, it's so nice, like neatly like put together and all the chips are straight and like I can very easily tell what he has. Did he Wow, he jammed it? How did he figure to set one out? I mean, he's up against one of the few hands that can't really call. Does is does he not fear the wheel? Malacca style, Randy, that's how. Clues in the name, the Spaniard. Putting Ibinger in the blender. Ibinger also has a lot of 6x in this spot. Perhaps he thinks 6x just outright jammed himself to not let the wheel check back, I suppose. Maybe he thought... Man. What a spot. For it's, a, it's a crazy bluff. The Poker Code co-founder. Now we're finally getting a bit of an idea of where that name... Malacca style came from. But Ibinger hasn't folded yet. He is thinking, how many 6Xs are you opening from the hijack? Does lay it down. Whew. What a monster pickup for the Spaniards. See, he's closing in, or at least attempting to close the gap between himself and JNT atop of the chip counts. I think it down to sub 20 now. You never told me what Malacca style means. I need to know now. Because that hand seems to be in line with this, the name. Okay, never mind. Let's go back to this one. If I'm not mistaken. Saved you. Something style. along the lines of stupid. But you know, perhaps slightly more explicit depending on the context and how you use it. I'll let the, the Greeks out there correct me if I'm wrong please feel free to weigh in as Davies says not top pair from the big defending against the cutoff open of boss boss trying to get something to work for him the short stack likely to get shorter here I think Davies actually check raises this a decent frequency but it looks like he does call trying to figure out what the min raise from the cutoff is off of this stack, but by not check raising, he's letting Paul Paul get there with the ace. A beautiful turn card for boss. Things were looking bleak. Now has a close to 90% lock on the hand. Would love to see him bet the turn. Yeah, because 
It's so rare he's up against a better kicker. Off of the stack he opened off of, the big blind Seth Davies will reshove all the better aces usually. So he just needs to charge these king x's, the ace threes, ace deuces. Of course, the straight draws the exists. Really nice jam here. And on the flip side, you gotta think about what Paul's got off in his ace x to open off of that stack and still fire here. Nicely done. Yeah, nice fault there from Seth. I know I've said it several times over since we jumped in, but what an absolute treat for poker fans around the world this has been since returning from dinner break. Not only do we have a star-studded lineup with 17 left in this 125k main, but it's just been hand after hand after hand. Fascinating table talk, Ooh. great banter. Again, look, Jax, let's go. This isn't edited, <laughs> Randy. This is no, live. It's not. And Paul's obviously disappointed from his finish in the 250k as he was once upon a time the chip leader very deep and just lost all of his chips bowing out. Hopefully he can convert this one, but cashing the two biggest buy-ins so far, pretty good. Couple more chips for Paul. Emerging here, obviously, early doors, but Ibinger looking to join the three-time champion club. Boss looking for his second, as is Nacho Barbero and Espin. Jungle Man in the mix. Shulman looking for his second. Zibby, so big. <laughs> the Adams. <laughs> it's all about calling out the 3X mid-hand. Paul still going to defend the Jack-10 oh. offsuit. <laughs> No set, no bet, Randy. Uh, are you all sure? In? He just yes. ripped it all in. Wow, what a big jam. Okay, you win it. Massive chip leader, 6.3. I mean, who needs GTO when you've just got JNT? Oh. Okay, I mean, this guy just hitting him with the... 2.5x jam on the flop. You know, if you got it, you got it, pal. Let's see turn and river. I ain't interested in playing guessing games. Power poker from the chip leader. Big slick for Nacho. Nacho's been having a pretty darn good run this trip. Here of the Nacho. Collision, potentially. At least seeing the flop here. Do we see like a jam from time to time with this king kind of blocker suitedness? Yeah. Gosh. Just attacking. Snap. Bad timing. Barbero. With the goods, of course. Snap calling against the rejam of Schwecht. Looking good for Nacho. One heart on board. Mm. Now two. Ooh. 
as he turns the nut straight, but needs to fade the eight outs once, as he does precisely that. And with that, we are down to the final two tables. Read roll, right? Yeah. Hey, we got a redraw. Looks like it. You champion, ah. Uh, Don't <laughs> Can't we, can we do the read on that and have the break at the same time? Looks like we're going to quickly swing over to the outer table where Chidwick has flopped middle set. Ike has flopped middle pair, case queen. Working its way to the flop. 210. Down to 16. We will be going on that final two table redraw at the end of this hand. This one going to play out against two of the greatest in the world, Haxton squaring off against Chidwick. As Big lay down against that sizable sea bat. Yeah, Ike just managing to get away from it. I believe. With we that, done? Yeah. we're going on break. Chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu. <laughs> Juan Pardo. Is, uh, I apologize, Randy. I can't, can't stop myself from laughing. BetACR.eu, chip counts. Pardo leading the pack at this table. But it is JNT leading the field after getting it in with the Kings against the Queens of Malinowski and the Ace Ten of Diamonds of Seidel. Eliminating both in a 3 million plus chip pot. Actually, I believe at the time it was actually five million with the side part. I do apologize. Holding with the kings and now overwhelming chip leader. On top of the chip counts. As my, my rule on that is with a with a needle. If it's very funny, let me have a look here. If it's extremely funny, I, I'll always be able to take it. And that, to that apologize. Although I might not have for you get pretty steamy, Nick. Me? Might be like so catching I mean, like up the equal amount of hands potentially. Okay, no we'll don't. see. No, it's okay. Another hand up. No, you don't. You don't You're right. I just. I could see it. I could see it in your <laughs> eyes during the the depths there. I was more upset about uh, perhaps perhaps something else. Juan Pardo coming in with the pocket deuces, looking to set mine against this deep stack. I don't know. It Opportunity scary, to close right? action. Expressive, like in what way though? Hard, hard on my way. sleeve, perhaps. The normal yeah, you look, way. You look, you look, yeah. so, so the way that everyone who's ever said that means. <laughs> Doug might just see kind of blank faces out there. God bless, I mean. Unclear. So, <coughs> soft hand for hand. So something that Luke Favaldi and the Triton team have implemented Randy as I know you'll be familiar but there'll be viewers out there perhaps not in the know is that due to the Triton Poker Plus app you know we have the advantage of being able to track exactly how many hands are played by all of the tables in the tournament this table was actually lagging by but two I mean, hands after, so after we're down to 16 like, this table he just looked like visually a little steamy like mm. bit of a I was, but not, not because up. he had a flush. Just Necessary. I had some demons. Just to make it fair. Across yeah. the board. So just to what even out, mean? make it fair. I can't go into too much detail, but I, I was concerned perhaps I could have gone a different way, you know? Oh, I see. As you're saying, yeah. Usually, if I, if like, 
I'm on the fence about like, you know, joking around with someone. If they look like real... You do it. <laughs> if they look real steamy, you, you know, do like, it. Brent, Brent had this massive grin yeah, on his face. I, I, get it. Was like, I get it. I can always take a, a needle, though. I like to think, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little caveat being added at the end. I'm the same. I like to think that I can, but... It's Whenever tough when you lose a lot of chips in yeah, the 100k well, main, 125k. When producer James and Ali are perhaps ribbing me a little bit too much, I could be, I could get sour. Never play the last hand before break. Very unlucky. Oh, hand. Wow, I was live. That's it. Break. There we go. Three draw. So that means that we are going to be going on break for this final two table redraw. 16 left, Randy. Juan leading this six. Look at that for a lineup. Pardo, Polk, Chidwick, Shulman, Haxton, Ivinger. On the outer tables, JNT leading the field. James Chen sat in third fresh off that 250k FT. Seth Davies, Dan Cates, a.k.a. Jungle Man as we... Welcome you back to the break desk, Randy Lewis. You didn't expect myself. that. Henry Cobain, you know it's a bit <laughs> of a sharp cut. Normally get the, uh, what do you call it, the cue in the headset. But no, looking through the app, Randy, I'm not surprised to see this star-studded field. But at the same time, I'm just awestruck as a bit of a fanboy from a poker entertainment point of view. A real cast of characters here going into the final two tables. Yeah, you know, of course, um, a lot of just very known players, very aggressive, but it's actually JNT at the top, the one that's going to throw the curveballs, the one that's willing to splash away and, you know, put in big bets and, you know, we'll see how the pros kind of navigate against him, who we know is going to try to attack and win this tournament. Or well, 254,000 guaranteed for the final 16. Don't go too far. A few commercials here on this side of the break. And when we come back, we're playing down to the final table of the 125K record breaking main event. We'll see you very shortly. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No <laughs> way. Who did you do? Who did you do? Who did you do? One of my favorite ways to understand GTO strategies is to look at the expected value of different plays. Whenever you see a spot to GTO Wizard, you can hit this dropdown and select Strategy plus EV. For example, opening Ace-10 offsuit from under the gun is worth about 9 big blinds per 100, but opening Ace-9 offsuit loses about 5 big blinds per 100. Ace 8 loses about 14, and this is why it's important to understand the bottom of your range and think about which plays actually make money and which plays are pretty close to break even. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Two flush draws instead of one for Devoris. <laughs> Shemian wants the prepay. So 180 ahead, 360 into the middle, mm -hmm. and <laughs> Chop well, you have two flush draws, so is almost a assured, kinda. but a couple of spades. And that's that. To the carving board we go. Mm. Chop. Everybody State. loves a chop pot, right? No? <laughs> On the Java, looking for a faster <laughs> delivery than that afforded the little cutout. Other than just an IV straight to the veins. That would be weird if one rolled the IV bag up to the table filled with an Americano. I mean, I got to admit, the first couple of days that I was here, I, desperate times, could have used 30. that. 30. Now, we get our first look at Rodrigo Seiji. All in. 30K open, and KT with the short stack jams it. I suppose 17 bigs could be considered deep enough to have some three bets. As two picture is declared after Rodrigo makes the call with the sevens. We'll play for 540,000. That's about as good as Rodrigo could have hoped for in this spot. Excuse me. And Rodrigo's hopes of showering KT grow grim. I had one at uh, Peppermint. This is green. Peppermint, yeah. Ducks. Thank you. Ducks. King. Oh. 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 What is Ducks is this? Oh. Oh. How to say? I don't hmm? know. How to say? Oh, two. You got to love Kanapong Tanaratnuku, by the way. I mean, I'm trying to say hold. Just one of the nicest guys. Yeah. And we flip it back like, over to Devoris yeah, and company. They uh, compete at like seven or something. Dirty diaper. But you're, you're, you're like a meal Into the away bin. from passing out at three. And you're you're always, you're like Perhaps some scratching their temples wondering why it is that the yeah. words dirty diaper would have yeah, crossed my free. lips in that situation. Yeah, the deuce three like offsuit, super very much christened shut down under six. the dirty diaper by one Nick Rigby of World Series of Poker main event fame. Deep run again here this year. Plays that hand like it's his religion and to great effect on occasion. As we see another King 10 suited, this time in club form in front of Victor Malinowski, rocking the Louis V. Monogram jumper, one and a half million. Jammed in there, Grafton. King Jack suited in a great way here, ready to play for his remaining 405. No fear. <laughs> you would all surprised that Grafton would be willing to get it in there. 26 bigs against the button open range of Malinowski. Finds himself in great shape. No, I think against the button open, King Jack suited is a very nice shove. Certainly don't expect to be dominated very often when you call, so this is definitely like, best-case right, scenario, but going to be live. Wow. Oh, man, the <laughs> pulse weakens. <laughs> Two clubs on the flop. And, and you have to understand that. <laughs> and now like, an open ender like to go with the flush draw for Malinowski. As a runner. We can uh, hardly contain the outs. Got to fade a six they jack, a club. On top of it. Oh, oh, and the six. On the river. Not a nice run out. Mm. Got the money in good. That's flexing. A dearth of like mango, like which is one of my butter. faves. Mm. Get the mango in there. I guess it's just Have you ever had mango with some tahini on it? Yeah, of course. I, I lived in LA. I know all about pulling off the freeway and seeing somebody with a little cart, a bunch of ice, and for $5, you can get a massive heaping cup. And then the lime is the real key, by mm -hmm. the way. Now, I'm gonna give you a pro hack. Salt on fruit makes it sweeter. The That's Japanese chili 
seasoning, togarashi, oh. with lime on mango. Try it, thank me later. Meanwhile, King Jack offsuit on the button for Chidwick. Upstairs we go. Shemian, 13 big blinds, has had to pass up on a few spots already, but this one I think is going to go in. Going to be some raised folds in Chidwick's range here from the button. This one feels like a call, yep. So Shemian going to be given a spin here by Stevie. Danger zone lights on. Oled deems the small blind ace four adequate. And in turn, Stevie felt the same about his king jack, although those feelings may be changing on a deuce three four two club flop where a pair of fours and a wheel draw leave Shemian further in front. That's the only safe paint Almost. available to Ole. <laughs> now just needs to fade a king or jack which he has done. So, a double <coughs> for Shemian. As he tries to wriggle his way back up to a more playable stack. Did win the 50K 8 max earlier at this festival. For Debatable just how close we were. I heard it was only a few votes away. Back when... We were voting on it? Yes, back when there was a delegation formed to ratify the... Declaration of Independence. Listen, you didn't take eighth grade history class? Listen, I thought you were talking about the outcome of World War II. And I was like, I don't really think. But anyhow, Chavero didn't require a lot of thought How much of it? to jam with two sevens here. Two sixes for Danny on the button, asking for a count. And this is. Actually, a good bit of his 245, and he's going to stick it all in there. The good news is he's got Chavetto covered. Bad news is... 100 and what? 10. His sixes are crushed for the time being. Yeah, but can't blame Tang for going with this hand and finding the ISO pretty short himself, so we're going to get better spots than this. Can I ask nicely, see if the dealer will oblige so far? Really appreciate it. No dice. Ace Jack 5 leaves the 7s in really, a good way. Really, really appreciate on the river now. Like six Red 6 on request flush instead. Both players Shame. make a flush and Chavero will double. And that'll leave Danny. Down at 135k. One for six thus far at the festival. Share that day with us, and certainly would appreciate even more so taking just a few brief moments that are required to hit the like button. Help make sure that the algo continues to shine favorably upon our YouTube channel. And of course, okay. don't hesitate to hit subscribe as well. Yes. Make sure you don't miss any of what we have on offer here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Tang, so excited to find a decent hand off of seven big blinds. Puts it in the middle. Oh, we see Adams is going to certainly give him a spin. I'm ahead. Head up. Three now, okay? I didn't hit a six, no problem. How about a three? How's a three? Or he just don't hit. How about that? How's that? Yeah? Yeah, you don't Two, need anything. Four, You're ahead. Five. How's that? Two, four, five. No. Oh. Not at all. Queen then. How's the queen? <laughs> don't even try to win anymore. Top. Queen. Queen ball. Nope. Yep. Stand up now. Yep, I'm walking away. Yep, you can put the free there. Yep, you can. Nope. GG. <laughs> <laughs> GG. That might have been my favorite no, bust out progression there. Obviously, never a favorite feeling to see Danny Tang leaving us. Just wow, how cocky small. are you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Only kidding, of course. It is a bit of a push-pull exercise, though, because for those that are expected to be winning players, which are the players that obviously will be most attractive to people who want to do the staking, you don't feel particularly incentivized, but it is one way to lower variance for a pro. Obviously, we've seen some pretty savage downswings throughout the years. Here we see an all-in for 90K from Leonard Mao. Ace, queen, Brian Kim, cut off king, queen suited. Brian Kim just deciding if he wants to call or ISO. Looks like he's going to make the call. And Chavero, fresh off of that double up. Just over 30 bigs now. Has a nice hand in the small blind. Well, Leonard going to get more action than he bargained for, probably, but in pretty good shape against these hands. Thorstad, even with deuces here, wondering if it could be worth it for him with 20K invested to come along. So the main pot is complete as ace queen will have a shot at 380,000 here. A lot of Broadway combo interference and the deuces of Espen Jorstad are in front on a three-way dry side. No betting, no change to the running order, but obviously developments for Brian Kim now with the club draw. Yeah, with the dry side pot, you see these players trying to check it down and eliminate Leonard in this spot. Randy, excitement would be an understatement as we welcome the viewers back to the JW Marriott Grosvenor House here. We're down to the final two tables, 16 players left in this record-breaking $125,000 buy-in main event. And it is none other than JNT leading the field after a massive double elimination. Kings holding against the Queens in Ace-10 of Malinowski and Seidel. And just... A star-studded cast as well. The final two tables with some massive names. Juan Pardo, James Chen, Davies, Polk, Jungleman, Chidwick, just to name a few. Is there anyone that you've got your eye on that you're like, okay, let's go. Like, this is the person that I'm rooting for. For me personally, I would love to see Doug Polk make a deep run. You know, it's his first time at a Triton stop. Came out to play the 250K, the main event here. And, you know, he's always very chatty, very aggressive, very fun to watch. What about... The bucket hat master, Nick Shulman, Want in me? the mix. Yeah, of course. He, you, you told me to pick one person. There's other people too, but Nick Shulman, of course, bucket hat. He's not wearing a bucket hat today. Well, I thought you were going to pick him because, you know, <laughs> on break, I managed to uh, run upstairs and get oh. a little belated uh, birthday present, the Triton Super High Roll Series bucket okay. hat. Now, look, you know, here we are. Here we are. Don't judge. We have got the headsets on, but trust me. Why have they got to get the close-up <laughs> on me like that, man? Why have you got to do me like that? Dude, you put it get on so... Look, I put it on much better than you did. You Yours did. is deflated. I got a big head, that's why. But look, I would buy that. You can buy it. Head over to the Triton <laughs> merch store, tritonpoker.com. Appreciate the producers getting that little still, you know, close frame up. But back to the action. Two tables, Randy. Red table led by none other than... Doug Polk, James Chen, blue table led by JNT. Let's go. Final two tables as we throw it down to the floor. I do apologize. JNT leading the pack at the blue feature table, table one. That is my bad. Is in trap one. Lun Lun 
We haven't seen much of this series in the mix. Another main event cash for him. Did manage to cash on four occasions in Vietnam, even finding the crossbar on the 20k short neck. Looks like Webster Lim is down to dust. Just three bigs. Don't read the chat, Randy, by the way. You know, just ignore, ignore the haters. You brought nothing but flavor with that bucket hat. <laughs> I think you should be the new, what, what, why the is new the model. Why is my follow account going down as we speak? <laughs> hate is going to hate. You won't. Oh my god, how did you know that? I told, did I teach you that one? You won't. Do you think one? You think Doug Polk. Oh. Fifth okay. in chips. Yeah, you think you made it? You won't. A couple ducks in the muck in the hijack as he gave it a little thought. JNT, King 5 suited. Tournament chip leader in the cutoff. Uh, he's going to lay it down. Yeah, perhaps that presence of. You don't want to force an all in against Webster? Yeah, well, what about this one? King 7 against Ace Trey. That's, that's pretty rough for Webster. To be behind with the king high, three and a half big. Shulman looking to get back up to over the two million chip mark. Not too bad. King high board. For Webster to get back in this, although now that third club on board, never easy, easy. Quick shake of the head. Finds the hold, though. Wraps the back up to eight bigs. Bit of breathing room, just pass through the blinds. And you know, there's, there's, there's love. There is love. <laughs> Although I think going forward, we'll leave the modeling to Nick Shulman. Well, do you think the reason he lost that pot is because he didn't wear his bucket hat? Because we did. Perhaps. Although perhaps saving it for the FT. Okay, but you need to get to the FT first. Maybe he's got it backwards. He's trying, Randy. Marathon, I know he's trying. Not a sprint. <laughs> I know he's trying. Let it breathe. Wow. What? Can we just... <laughs> that Juan Pardo <laughs> triple barrel bluff with the Queen High, we were just stunned in the booth. Was absurd, but was a sick read by him. Got so the two sharp. pair down. Ace Queen for Webster, 410. Wow, again? Okay. Spin initiated. Back to back. Excuse me. Can I have a sparkling as well? No, it's totally in my water. Yeah, I don't want to steal your water, man. <laughs> All in. All in. Oh, what okay, Big blind now. <laughs> Ace queen now. Oh, big blind's a little more expensive. As Adams has woken up with kings. Yeah. Snapped them off. Yeah. Of course. Well, I'm on fire. I'm all in. What make it? On earth. It's going on. Cowboys. The flip side of dinner break has just been non stop carnage. Get us to 15, Adams looking to hold as it looks very likely on the King Jack 5 board. Broadway hunting. Oh, hello. Spin initiated, perhaps. One card to come, 10 outs once for Adams as he doesn't find the paired board and Webster goes from three and a half bigs to 18. Back in it. Straight back in the mix. <laughs> Two-time Triton champion, multiple two-time winners. It's good to learn how it's going to be early, you know? Out there looking to join that three-time champion club. 
Have you told uh, Nacho any of your stories? Jungle has a lot of great stories. I bet you that. He didn't send me D deep reach, <laughs> reach deep into the bag here, Jungle. Let's see what we got. So what? So so you're a soccer player today. But you're a Russian soccer player because the accent. Actually, I what? think like at this level, like the highest levels, like cash game players and tournament players, like you know, like merge. But like yeah. in general, like cash game players would be more like, like special forces soldiers. And so then tournament players are more like generals. You know, what, my what what you're analogy. what you're saying, if if I may, is that they these guys really suck at poker, and the cash game players have accumulated the chips because of their superior. Um, being and uh, skill set. That's what it, I'm paraphrasing. That's what it, I'm sure, sure. Good enough. G tier wizard sat next to another G tier wizard. Roughly. <laughs> but do you get my analogy? But not, nope. not, not for these like, high stakes, the but like in general. Like, like They're like a general, so like. So, so, so like, cash game players are very good at like, like fighting hand for hand. And then like. Uh, I was invested in that conversation. Won't lie. Some very tense music. And that's why. As if you needed more of an advertisement for G2 Wizard Jungle Man Dan. Sat next to G2 Wizards Ambassador, Espin Jorstad. See the recently launched G2 Wizard AI, the world's most powerful poker solver. You can try it out now at g2wizard.com. And you can enjoy G2 Wizard entirely for free for 24 hours. g2wizard.com forward slash Triton. Get free access for 24 hours and 10% discount <laughs> on your first purchase. The number one app for poker players. and. A little We're playing their format. They should step into our format. Yeah, yeah, I, I that would be fair. I think they would be to uh, <laughs> check out I the hand history the breakdowns. I mean, Ike, is, Ike is clearly like, like a wizard at hybrid. Home. I'm not. Like, yeah. I think almost I think everyone here has played a good chunk of cash yeah. as well as I mean everyone. I think has played a good cash. I was just, I was just, you know. You were needling. Yeah. I got you. 120. <coughs> Seems like a little discussion between Has cash be game versus tournament players someone here. Who, who doesn't play a lot of cash, they just play tournaments. Well, they play cash online, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, but then that, that's okay, I guess. Like, if no one knows, it's. Uh -oh. Essence got queens. G tier wizard on G tier wizard violence, perhaps. Small blind mamacitas. Big slick for jungle man on the button. 25 effective is your stat. And there's going to be a bit of juice. 120k of Ike. Really mulling this one over. That does feel like the only option with the queens, right, Randy? Perhaps. Yeah, it's Some more like for balance in right. case he's, you know, has a real decision. But also to kind of perhaps get jungle man if say his jungle is three betting, like say a nines tens may convince himself like he has to pay off this cold floor regardless. Paul of the six clearly gonna go into the muck. We are on a page on. Yeah, hence the little stall, I suppose. Okay, that was only joking. All in. Between 16th and 15th. You can see. 
Hmm? What are you waiting for? Hold it. <laughs> this one guy very Oh, That's I must learn something. Why are you waiting? Some cheap guy and no one Ah, check okay. okay. I mean, I didn't think about it. Oh, boss didn't realize that we are on a ladder. <laughs> so, what are you waiting for? <laughs> But we are on a 28k ladder. Now Spin is using up a couple of his time banks. If he can hold here <coughs> with the queens, we'll be up to 50 bigs. If Jungle Man Dan can get there against him, he's going to move up to second in chips. That's an ace in the window. A couple of spades, running spades, Spent an option. For your stats, you. as the seven of spades does present itself. These are the ones that get there a lot. Nice try. <laughs> <It's horrible. laughs> Jungle. Ooh. With Good defense. the speech Good play, defense. but ultimately. Oh, you must buy Richard yeah. dinner. Finding <laughs> the hold says. Richard, invite him. He never show up for the second bullet. All of the Second chips. I, I told you why I got uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just telling you. I, way I, 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 <laughs> <fist bumps laughs> alone my phone was... If I lo if Between I lo a few I of the players. I heard correctly, and then no one texted me before, and my phone was stolen. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't receive a call. Um, yes, only so on my UK. <laughs> <laughs> Jungle did, forgot to late register the 250k is what they were talking about. But Webster's got two queens. Remember, he's on a spin-up. He was down to, what, three, three blinds or so? Oh, my word, oh, Randy, as soon as you say it. Spin down, perhaps. Aces for Shark now. Don't forget, played that monster poor Ace King against King Queen of Victor Malinowski, who found the three outer on the river. <coughs> Davies was one card away from being on 5.6 <coughs> million. Things looking great for him here to eliminate the two-time champion. There really isn't no other way than all-in here for Webster. We play the ranges. Sometimes you run into the top of it. And then, of course, coming back over the top, 40 bigs in the middle. Seth, a 4 to 1 favorite to get us down to 14. Does the rest look on? Nine, eight trays, so far so good for Davies. Two cards to come. Six of diamonds on the turn. Is that Lim is drawing to two outs once. Doesn't find it. Would have been quite the spin up. Eventually busting in 15th, but getting that pay jump in the process, 282k going his way. And with that, we're now just five off that final table, Randy. We're close. And, uh, you know, GG to Webster. Clearly one of the great Malaysian players out there. No, you're good. He was fucking around or something? I don't know. I haven't played it enough. That was yeah, stuff super... It. All right, so Davies is back up to 4.3 with that one. Yeah. 
All right, Adams here, ace-10 offsuit. Nice little pick up there. Well, with that elimination, only 14 left. JNT still pole position, 100 bigs with Jungle Man. The elimination of Espanol set up to 80. Juan Pardo in third, Seth Davies in fourth, James Chen in fifth, and Doug Polk, would you believe, venturing out to a Triton Super High Roller Series, courtesy of the invite from Rob Young in that 250K Invitational. But in the mix, showing us that He's not a retired cash game player. He can still hold it down in the tournament streets as I mean, well. he's got multiple bracelets too, given the limited amount of tournaments he's entered. It's, he's just phenomenal, of, of course, that poker, Doug Polk, I remember, we speak of. Remember the giveaway? Don't know if you heard, Randy. Did not. King Nine suited for Showman's in. The giveaways back in the day from Doug, where he beat... Elki heads up in the 100k bracelet event, if I'm not mistaken. Remember that being the talk of the town at the time as Shulman flops best on the King Jack 4. And a little disrespectful open here of Queen 3 offsuit well, against the, the, the commentator. <laughs> Mixing it up. 175, Shulman. Top pair. Well, JNT is firing a C-bet, Queen-3 offsuit. Showman, just a really balanced player. Very composed, going to come in with a check call. Couple of threes now. I'm always on the edge of my seat when JNT's in the mix. You just never know what he's going to hit you with. Does check back after picking up that showdown. Five of clubs on the river. And now, given the turn check check, Randy Shulman going to look to pursue value or does he extend the rope once more? He should be looking to try to extract value himself. You know, you, you expect kind of like two barrels on a turn against the air, so no point in just trying to induce. And does bet 225, quite small relative to the pot, which was about 720 or so, 740. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Little think here for JNT. Yeah, is JNT perhaps contemplating putting the cape on against Nick? Just bottom pair. Probably doesn't think the bottom pair is good too often. Having the queen feels bad as well. Oh, he's grabbing black. Those More than worth one. 100k apiece. Well, there wow. we go. There's, there's your answer, Randy. 700k to go and some discomfort, perhaps, in the Shortman camp. The line is so odd. Check back turn, raise river on the five. Representing, how, what kind of two pairs can you represent? The five, four? The back door, the ace five. deuce. Ace deuce, yes. Call. Oh, nice call, call, Nick Shulman. Picks it off and Shulman up to 2.6. Closing in on the 50 
big blind territory with 14 left and over 4.1 million for first. That's got to feel good, Randy. That's world-class play there and realizes with the small bet he did on a river, perhaps induced from time to time. Right. That smallish sizing being pounced upon by JNT and Shawman correctly picking one off. And a swingy return from dinner break. The Kings against the Aces of Ike Haxton. And the two pair against the turn flush of Ibinger, but Shulman. Back on the climb. Everyone guaranteed. 282000 dollars for their run here. Silenced. Nice. Falls over the feature table. Just want to extend a warm welcome, of course, to everyone around the world, keeping both myself and Randy company for this day two main event coverage live from the JW Marriott Grosvenor House here. As we head towards the tail end of the No Limit Hold'em, part of the Triton Super High Roller Series London, JNT with the Ace King. We'll keep you updated if anyone wakes up with a hand behind. But if Go you on. haven't already, drop us a like. That's all we ask. Would love to get up to 3,000 over on YouTube before we reach the FT as Triton Randy seems to continue down the train track on its journey to put out world-class poker production to the poker world, to the poker fans free of charge and perhaps a byproduct of that the support from the world's best seems to be growing with every passing series record breaking field here shout out to the viewers on twitch yeah, shout YouTube, out try poker plus and shout uh, out to our players for giving us this uh, brilliant show of course pointing up the money to play this 125k record breaking and shout out to my co-commentators, Randy Liu, Arlene Najat, Maria Ho, the production crew, working tirelessly around the clock to pull off an event like this, of course. The dealers, the floor staff, the VIP concierge is Ibinger. 13 bigs going to push forward. Two thirds of his stack. Yeah, all but some. Never fun, not being able to play this Jack-10 suited, given that Ibinger's raise is committing. No fold equity anymore. Shout out to the bucket hat. <laughs> Shout out to Janice, of course. The designer of the Triton Poker merchandise. Uh, I didn't feel like playing this year, I might be back. Well, good luck, Hold. Mike, if you do return. Nacho Barbero, ace 10 off, so UTG. Do see Isaac Haxton picking the suit in the today. small. Don't you have Nacho? Huh? What? Looking for the stack size of the UTG hand. open. It's the type of hand, yeah, you do want to just call here. Not really wanting to get it all in pre. And Joaquin. One Oh, it's 130. Pretty fair fight as we go to the flop. Should have texted from my YouTube number. Couple of deuces and the three with a couple of spades on board. Ike with the king high flush draw. Yeah, it's not showing up. Along with his two overs, Barbero still out in front, but only just note the equities. No, it is showing up. And Barbero is going to fire 
a small 100k bet and try to define what this small blind flatting range is. The main check folds in this spot would it probably be the the broadways with no backdoor flush draws. Right. That makes sense. I don't think Nacho's ever expecting like Ace X to fold this flop. So does check call for now. Five eighty in the middle. Nine of diamonds on the turn. Ike. Breaking the flush draw. So Nacho thinking about whether to attack, say, an ace-jack, ace-queen that didn't want a three-bet pre, given that it is a UTG open. Pocket pairs would be in a tough spot lower than the nine as well for a double. And this 400k bet kind of implies that if you call here, you might have to face that 925 back on the river. Perhaps making a statement now. That's correct. On whether you want to commit or not. Haxton with the king queen of spades and in, in a weird spot. You know, he's got an amazing draw, of course. Does he think an over pair that just absolutely hammers this board texture would go 400k on the turn into 580? Maybe size down a little bit? We, we know he's definitely thinking about a check raise all in. <laughs> he can think about it, but Barbero does retain all of the over pairs. All in. Oh. Wow. Wow. Gets the best hand to fold. Isaac Haxton is just... He got him. Do you have a change for five? I, I have one for now. It's fine. Pretty sick, actually. Oh, this to field. get the ace-10 out. Left. Yeah, okay. It's good. What? Do the change logo? X. Yeah. I like uh, yeah, a new logo out today. Formats, I think there are different I mean, types of fun, but just yeah. today they change. Uh, if I had, oh, I just see this. I, I think cash games are more fun though, for me. Oh, on my phone is just changed the new one. Ah, yeah, the update. About, yeah. They wanted to be more. Macau is good. Macau, <laughs> everything <laughs> is. Twitter is such a nice brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. Vegas is all before. Now, like, like everything is private like, except for the big mix. Which is X. <laughs> Would be my favorite thing to play yeah. anyway, so I shouldn't complain, but... Doesn't make sense to me, really. It's funny, because before first showing up to Macau, I expected it to be the opposite, I thought. I, when I first heard that there was, like, a lot of cash going in Macau, I thought it would be, like, yeah. a lot of politics and yeah. corruption and bullshit. Yeah, exactly. And and then, the, the win game, I've never played, but I've heard, is just yeah. immaculate. Yeah. It is. 120. Well, I caught that. It's completely fair. Paul, Paul, boss, does not approve of X. Prefers Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what is this? Times are changing. Two point five ish total worth. Two point five. One twenty. All right, so Doug Polk is going to raise into the 6-5 off to Nacho Barbero, making the defense here, 330 in the middle. Actually, a fair fight. Barbero picks up the pair of fives, looking to get some chips back after that ace-10 loss to Isaac Haxton. Little backdoor straight draw action, too. And for Doug Polk, this board does hit the big line at a decent frequency, but he also knows that the 745k back can't really 
mess around too much, hence the one-third pot bet here, just trying to take it down here and now. Just come with the call. 550 in the middle with 635 back. That feels like a turn card. Randy, Randy, correct me if I'm wrong, that Polk's really going to struggle to find bluffs on. Once he gets check called on on this board texture with this turn card, it's pretty much lighting your chips on fire if you put in a double barrel as the. Of course, the 10x never folding, but these one pair of hands pick up a straight draw that will never fold. So, hence the check back and binky. You could also win that way. The best way, when the rivet set. Yeah, it's 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 tough here, and for Barbaro, as played as it stands, is you got a pair of fives. Not much value really to be had. Perhaps you just try and check it down against the ace highs. But I mean, we know Doug's gonna come in for a lot of chips, given that it's just north of one pot size bet remaining. He might just push all the chips in there. That's some great poker being played there. Poker. <laughs> just rivering the set. What do, you want to do? what do you like about tournaments? Oh, and you could like fuck for so many levels and be up. Isn't this line so, so confusing for Nacho though? A bet check bet line? Because <laughs> he had that stack size where Doug should jam the turn at a high frequency to just protect what's in there if you're right. holding 10x right. and higher. Like but you're holding aces, right? You're afraid of eight jacks, six, uh, so many cards will drop off, you would just rip it in on the turn, that is. That's a fantastic point. But given that it went check, check, turn, and then Barbero checked river, does Polk now get to jam you know, strong 10s, like ace 10? I like would think Polk that controlled a bit? the 10x would jam the turn at a very high frequency. Okay. How light would Doug Polk jam this river? Let's just say Doug <laughs> Polk was holding 8-9, expecting Nacho to bet 10 himself as it checks through on the turn. Would he do that? as played, hard to say. And Nacho is definitely trying to figure out what value this could be. You gotta keep in mind there's the poker factor. It's that Doug loves to bluff. You mean content farming? For Pretty his much. YouTube channel. Yeah, you don't want to be a thumbnail, do you? I could already think of the title. Bet check ripped it in guy's face with just ace high. Orders nachos. <laughs> Stacked on some nachos. Barbero calls here. It's going to be out in 14th. <coughs> I don't fault him for tanking because the line it's is so odd. Obscure. I'm trying to think of bluffs as well. Like, does it really just come from like the ace fours? A six. <laughs> it could be just one of those. I don't think you can call. I think you got seven or five X. Good luck. You figure it out. Barbero in the blender. Maybe he thinks his pocket threes are nothing. Every single time. Not often you see Nacho <coughs> in this much agony. Over a spot, and it's understandable the reasons why. Is he going to put on the cape? He the is, Randy. Is that? 
Oh, he is sick to see that river three. Again. Puts on the cape with the 6-5 and a 1.8 million chip pot. Go in Doug Polk's way, courtesy of that three of spades river. The gin card, the three of diamonds would have obviously completed the flush as Barbero, another deep run here yeah, at the Triton just, Super High Roller Series. Heading home with 282,000. And with that, everyone now guaranteed 311k. And we're down to 13, Randy. Doug Polk with quite the polka hand. Or getting a player. I may say so myself. The rivet set. Oh, so what was he was out in 14, so 7 and 6. Okay. Dog now up to fifth to in chips. Average stack, 48 bigs. Feels like we're gonna be here a while, but you never know. Short stack duty still belonging to Paul Poir. 12 bigs, the immediate short stack at this feature. And on the other table, short stack duties belonging to Ted Seibinger, two time champion. Looking to join his good friend, Fatal Holtz, in the three-time champion club. He can spin it back up. Has some tough competition. And Juan Pardo, Seth Davies, Doug Polk, Jungle Man, Ike yep. Haxton, Nick Shawman, Stephen Chidwick, Timothy Adams. Ace, maybe. Just to name a few. Ace would be reasonable. <coughs> I think the three is much better than an ace. <laughs> Personally. To each his own. I'm, I'm more of a set kind of guy than a turn this into a bluff kind of guy, you know? <laughs> but don't you Same like the thrill? Same the adrenaline like, rush? The adrenaline. I actually don't get an adrenaline rush from like bluffing or like what big hands or whatever. <laughs> What's wrong with you? But That's I think it's sick. an advantage. It keeps me very like calm and like... You know. That's good. That's a good mindset to have. Can't imagine My not having a adrenaline rush oh, while bluffing. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> oh man. Huh? You ever been in a grindhouse situation where before you pull the trigger on like a massive bluff, you call the boys over and you're like, boys, <laughs> let's get this one through. <laughs> We're in. We're all in, you know? It'd be so cool <laughs> if that live poker, <laughs> you just call your mates over before <laughs> jamming. You're like, boys, we're going for it. Like, <laughs> oh man. Well, Haxon does swap two pair on his monotone board texture. Is the preflop razor so, can't really imagine Dan Cates continuing, but is that a check back of top two? Interesting, because he does give Dan Cates a chance to pair that five and extract value now. Very, very sneaky check back. Well, Dan might think he's got the best hand with this pair of fives. It's always a bit <coughs> sus though, Randy. When it goes One check, 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 flop. You then check turn, and your opponent then opts to come for the half pot delayed C bet. It's gonna keep him honest by the looks of things. With that pair of fives. Really nice river card here for Isaac Haxon. It's fading the spade. Really not too many hands that this river card beats the 9-7 besides 10-9 in. From time to time you'll see 10-9 even bet out after it checks through flop. 320. Looking for some crying calls. Half pot, half pot. 
Jungle knows it. <laughs> Jungle. He looks defeated. Hitting him with the whatever man before folding. He's third in chips. Yawns in every direction. Do what? We just fold the turn. Yeah, winner's tilt, man. Winner's tilt. Jungle rocking up to this 125k is Andre <laughs> Shevchenko. Legend AC Milan player. So glad I didn't bluff that river against you, James. <laughs> <laughs> Fold. She just three bit and blast off against your bike. Fuck it. Fuck it. What is it Ace uh, 10 here. Taiwan's oh, number one all time money list. Uh, you would have had a shot pre flop and not after that. What about James Kent? Like, like, yeah, there you're Kentified yourself. What? Kentified yourself. Like, what is, what, what's, <laughs> what's that? Like Barbie and Ken? Yeah, yeah, Barbie Ken. 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 Kentified. I haven't seen so, the movie like, yet. No spoilers. No spoilers. I haven't. Uh, are you going to see it? I'm I going to see it. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it with. It. It, yeah. it looks kind of good, actually. The, the, the <clears> thing, <throat> the thing that uh, made me want to see it. First of all, like the director is. Really, yeah, Greta Gerwig is yeah, good. It's amazing. Second of all, like, the, did you see the trailer she did for it? And it was based off of like 2001: A Space Odyssey. No, I haven't seen that. You have to see it's funny. The trailer like made me say, okay, I have to see this movie. Like, they, they said it like. I, I, don't. I, I, are you, you going to talk about the movie or? A little bit, yeah. No. I, I don't know much about <laughs> it. I only know one thing. No. <laughs> Just stop, Juggle. He's asking you to stop. It's also usually not good to do spoilers on streams. Usually, yeah. Usually not great. great. Point. This is not much of a spoiler. No a professional Still, here. No. no. <laughs> if there's something I hate just as much as stalling, it's probably like spoiling. Okay. We'll see what you think. Jungle being hit with, with the. Uh, yeah, I guess you can't explain. He, he wants, don't explain. Don't explain. Ooh, no, all, all he's saying is he wants to see what you would look like. Wow. Put through I, no, six oh, oh, you mean, I, yeah, leave, I guess you can if I. Yeah, like there's a lot of people doing that yeah, on social media. I, I guess. I don't know. Six nights with You just shove. I just think of funny ideas. I'm not man. What a table. All right, back over here. See the chat going wild, screaming for no spoils as well. I was too. I won't lie. I was about to pull the plug on the stream. <laughs> Luckily, James hitting jungle with the STFU as Ivanka. Oh, JNT. King seven, to be fair, fares to be the best hand a lot in this spot as small blind is rather desperate. It's a decent amount of chips, though. 805k, Ivanka. He's out. Getting away with one, JT giving the old stare down. Yeah, he didn't love it. Bit of a chuckle afterwards. Love to see it. Love to see it. 13 left. They have dropped like flies on the flip side of dinner break. $311,000 guaranteed for the final 13. The average stack, Randy, is 48 bigs. Not something we get all too often. No, and we have a really nice mixture of players. Obviously, star studded, but lots of them, as you kind of heard, is they're cash game players, and obviously the best tournament players in there. Mix of some J and T, like this is good stuff. And with deep stacks, forty-eight big blind average, you know the the cash game players are able to still exert their knowledge, right, with the deep stacks. You okay there, buddy? Like, I'm trying to talk and you just What's bucketed. Up, you're, you're bucketed. Never mind. Let's go back to the action. Ace four here in the hijack. Ace four. Sorry, I said that twice. Juan. Two tens. Just say it once. You wow. okay there, buddy? I'm fine. 
All right. You jealous of the flavor from this side of the booth? What's going on? You got your flavor. own bucket hat. You did get the matching colors. This is quite smart of you. On Pardo. Gonna just flat. Send the Chapman. Hello. I heard there were yeah. rays. Did you? I did. It's pretty scary because it's big stack, big stack, big stack. Every single well, one of these guys, at least four million. This is first, first v second in chips, quite literally. Chip leader, Pardo, with a big blind more than JNT, who's come out squeezing from the small. And now all of a sudden, an inflated pot out of position with a couple of fives against the only person that can shower us. Buckle up, Randy. There's gonna be a million going to the flop. Yeah, these two tens has to call here. It's uncomfortable, of course, just given how deep they are. Let's see what kind of flop can perhaps bring some comfort to him. And that's a decent flop, isn't it? The over pair. Not too bad for the two fives, especially got a little wheel draw action. Does check. And you know what? Normally these two tens, you'd want to fire this flop seeing the check in front of you, but then you look at JNT, and then sometimes you wonder, what if he just puts me to the test for all my right. chips if I bet with like right. ace-king? Yeah, and we're just playing a 190 big blind pot out right. of nowhere. It looks like he's still going to bet, but it's just, it's just scary. As played, though, I can't really see JNT just laying down two fives outright. With that little wheel action and one of the few boards that's favorable to the two fives. Quick double check. Really taking a look there. Just got to keep him honest, Randy. And now we're playing a 1.9 million. Chip on another one of those bricky turn cards for the fives. No ace, no king, no paint. The tens is usually the best hand in this spot. You often are up against ace, kings, ace, queens. And again, with that flush draw showing up, you got to ask the question is, what would I do if I bet the turn and I get jammed on? Am I calling off? Am I comfortably bet folding this? Oh, Juan Pardo seems to know precisely where he's at. As he hits him with the 1.1. And again, to reiterate, this is first against second in chips. It's, it's a bloated pot right now for these two fives. It does fare to beat, of course, all the unpaired hands, but <sighs> it's just getting big. Do you really feel that Juan Pardo is willing to just blast off right now? Also, with the fives, you do block ace five a little bit. That would kind of stab in this spot. Well, it doesn't seem he's convinced as he's touching these black chips. Oh, he does. Nicely done. Avoided further loss with those two fives. You've got a new big chip leader. <laughs> I was... You were uh, just stunned. Was, you yeah. weren't sure what was going to happen. I wasn't sure, Randy. I was like, bro, are we about to just play a 10 million chip pot <laughs> here, you know? Are we going to just YOLO this in on the turn with the fives? To be tr fair, I'm not even sure what Juan Pardo's game plan was with the turn. Like, was he intending to bet call or bet fold there? Had he got jammed on? I'm sure he would have been extremely sick, but uh, obviously playing with confidence there, knowing. Bro, that I mean, I don't plan. sweat. I don't sweat in the booth often, but I thought, I thought 10 million was making its way into the middle there. <laughs> JNT does drop down to third in chips now. Pardo crossing the hundred big blind mark. Davies, couple of snowmen. Oh, what a fantastic day of poker we've had so far, and. Still got plenty more to come. Five days, in fact. Playing down to the FT today. 
final table tomorrow where the champion's going to be going home with $4,185,000. J&T getting in there. Black calling in position. Really just throwing these <coughs> pros a little bit of a... Curveball? Yeah, curveball. Just got to think about these flatting ranges. What do they mean? The old slinger. Showman, 6-5 offsuit. Looking to hit something and get paid off. All right. Well, here we go. Shulman with the offsuit connectors. So it comes 994. Safe flop for Davies. Complete whiff for JNT, although backdoor straight, two overs. The Six of Diamonds is now perhaps going to get Nick in trouble. Caught in the crossfire in this battle between Shark and JNT. Yeah, it does feel like he got caught in this. Uh, Seth Davey was kind of looking to pot control and induce from JNT, who does like to put chips in there. And with the check the through, Shulman picking up the six is going to try to thin the field here with a value bet. Unfortunately, it's just drawing just to the six. So a turn probe from Shulman, third part. Seth Davies is contemplating a little raise, but we'll call as standard lines do dictate. And Okay, I don't know what this King-10 offsuit Randy. is intending, but he's made the call here in position, almost one million in the middle, Henry. What's Look, going on? Let's go, baby. JNT fan club. It's the 6-6 six, six run out. How does Showman scoop this situation, hitting the full house, running sixes to beat Seth Davies' pocket eights? And all of a sudden, that crossfire that Shulman caught himself in now finds himself on the attack, looking to fire out a sizable bullet. 5.15 north of half pot. So the half pot bet here is designed to try to get value from pocket pairs and given that there's two callers on the turn it's very likely nice fold here from the two eights didn't even think about it likely because him holding the two eights himself blocks the bluffs of Nick Shulman the seven eight Shulman loving life with that run out and a little recent uptick he now has more than average as the blinds go up. 40,000, 80,000, 125K, no limit hold'em, main event. What do you buy? BetACR.eu. Randy, the champion, not only going home with north of 4.1 million, but a custom Jacob & Co collaborative timepiece. We've seen it on display. Chidwick, Hecklin, Jason Kuhn. All in. 925,000. 925 on request. <coughs> learn, learn. Observant. Perhaps picking up a little mark on one of the cards. Adam's going to just take his time before pitching the 9-7 and Ibinger picks up the blinds in the big blind ante. It's getting a bit shorter now out there on the blind level increase. 
four sub-15 big blind stacks. Polk, Adams, Ibinger, Paul. All looking to spin the wheel. This is Jungle Man Dan. Chip leader. After playing a monster pot. Against Doug Polk, no less. Turn to full house. Brutal stuff. As Polk was on the climb. Now finds himself <coughs> in the danger zone. My blinds. <coughs> the blinds have gone up. Eighty each. Shit. Yeah, man. Tough. I mean, where are you gonna find the chips? I thought it was so small, much smaller. I don't know. Weird. Do that. Doug with the light-hearted needle, of course, on the back end of losing a five million chip pot. Hold. Oh. Gonna spin the wheel. Six and a half bigs. King ten under the gun. How much? More than enough. Uh, Five hundred something. Oh. Uh, snap called with that blind <coughs> increase recently. Okay. Jungle can't lay down to a seven. Paul forty two percent at risk. Two life cards and a decent chunk of the equity against Jungle Man Dan at the ace in the window, and it's not looking likely to happen on that board, Randy. As the King of Clubs does give him a lifeline. Doesn't find the King King run out. GG is announced, and with that, GG. Boss Paul Poir out in 13th, adding another cash to his Triton track record. 30 caches now, over 16 million in Triton earnings. I believe still ranked number one on Malaysia's all time money list. One title caching both. 250k and 125k here, but always bittersweet. And with that, we're down to 12, Randy. We are so, Ooh, so yeah. close to the final table. Which nine? I just need to double through jungle. <coughs> I think we are getting Matthias. Who? Matthias? Oh. GG's. Oh, can you see the button? Oh, you're looking at the hand history? Yeah. Now we're on a $49,000 yeah, ladder. Cardo was under the guard. <laughs> yeah, here comes Matthias. Looks like Matthias Eibinger is going to be joining according to Isaac Haxon, doing our job for us. Tournament chip leader, none other than the jungle. That is sick. But look at these other four competitors at this table. It's just a... It's a tough one. Haxton, James Chan, Stephen Chidwick, Doug Polk would never want to sit at this table. Hold. Ike Haxton is proof that moaning it in exists. Have you heard of that? No, I have not. To like enlighten me. Moan in a deep run. Yesterday he was complaining that he had peaked at 700k chips. That was the highest he had got throughout the series <laughs> in all of the tournaments. Here we are in the main. Ike Haxton, Prince of Darkness, fifth in chips with 3.4 million. The moaning it in clearly works. Learning. Four million up top, 12 left. Uh-oh. 520. Speaking of that, Haxton now, two aces. Three betting, James Chan. New player, Ibinger. 
to this table. Randy, he seems interested. And perhaps that's why, as he's woken up with ace-queen suited in the big, we are on a pay jump. He can't lay this down even though he's up against two aces. This is just way too good of a hand in this spot. It's me from a decision. Ike with numero uno, 49k ladder. All in. As Chen gets out of the way and Ibinger perhaps with a similar fate to Sam Grafton just the other day. He's <coughs> brought over from table one to table two and was dealt out of the tournament Regardless hand one. Of the outcome, what's the best play you've made today? Checking the river. <laughs> now I know you bluffed me on the other hand. Okay. The full bit. I you can hold here. Three times in like the last two it's going to be up to third in chips. I, I had the ace of diamonds that time too. <laughs> I believe that. There we go. I think we're looking for clubs. Well, one club on pocket board. Sixes. Is that your aggressive suit? I got, I got pocket sixes. That's how. That's how I'm running. That's how you're running. Club for a sweat. Oh no! There it is. Oh, oh. Let's put Clubs some alive. chop outs as well for Ivinger. Chop is fair. Yeah, Chop is fair announced by accident. Wow, he just bolted out of there. Ivinger back over to table one. Looks like perhaps he forgot something. <laughs> We're down to 11, Randy. I mean, it's not even 11.30 local time. That's how quickly we've gotten down to 11 on the flip side of dinner break. Yeah, sure. They came to play. As they did the other day in a 250k as well. How much you make it? 575? I made it 520. <coughs> James is still thinking about, well, if Ibinger didn't get Ace Queen suited, should I call this 3 bet 2 sixes? Feels like a missed opportunity, despite the player who's been eliminated. <coughs> well, well, well. How about this for a final 11? Jungle Man leading the field. Juan Pardo, for those of you across the pond or perhaps not European, the Spaniard known as Malacca style online is are a, good hand. a long time online crusher. Strong. Venturing out My tournament to will the be going a lot. Super High Roll Series for the first you, time. Man. Oh. I have one million in chips behind and you were on the button. What a gentleman. You even reminded him that it's not fine versus fine. <coughs> All in. Jungle trying to limp on the button. Polk nice. having none of it with the ace back up to north of 15. You're on the button. The best position <laughs> at the table. You act lost every hand, every street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Randy, given the I lightning wish I could pace. Say I had looked at my cards at that point and lured him in, but it. <coughs> there was no speech game there. It was down. Just dumb luck. To 11. Feels unlikely that we'll be able to get up to 3K likes, but we're currently at 1.9, just 100 away from 2,000. So if you haven't already, the 15,000 of you currently watching over on the Triton Poker YouTube channel. Late. Please do take a couple of seconds. Just click that like. Help us grow the game. Help us reach a wider audience. Who wouldn't want to watch these world-class players battle it out for 4.1 million? Have you clicked like, Randy? I feel like sometimes you forget. I will right now for you. Thank you. And so will oh. everyone in the chat. Love to see it. Couple sevens. Ace Jack for James Chen. Is a cutoff open? And the cutoff open off of 23 blinds might not necessarily be a mandatory reshove spot. James happy to take a flop here. And with 
by just calling here, you do kind of leave in the worst ace X's and jack X's. For now, though, it is the queen 4 3 advantage, Stephen Chidwick. Probably one of those spots where you put in a small bet, given how vulnerable the two sevens is, texture in your favor. There's that custom Jacob & Co. timepiece on display, by the way. He always wears that at the Triton stops, I notice. Left wrist of Chidwick. One of those will be going to the eventual champion. Price is pretty good for this ace-jack and certainly can still have the best hand. Some added equity with the, the backdoor draws. Straight, that is. The five does tend to favor the big blind a little bit more than the cutoff in this spot. It's a really tough spot for a nine there. It's not, you're not thrilled. Huh? You're not a happy camper. Not at all. No. Actually a little not lead incoming, isn't it? Spot. I think I like to call nine more than like, well, I mean, I mean freezing like to action. I gave you kind of a cheap price. Did. Deny equity oh. from the Broadways that just whiffed. It's like, under the price Perhaps the ace jack is even the best hand from time to time against the ace X's that are lower. The tournament though, it's different. It's a bit more. Yeah. Nice thing is the two it's sevens does have that little straight draw. Board, like, could you really help yourself if you had like ace three suited, or ace four suited, or even like seven suited, or jack ten? There's a lot of hands where you just like, it's so easy to just like, you know, on that board. <laughs> it's pretty easy to find your way into some bluffs on that board. It's true. Just have whatever. It's supposed to have like Jack 10 and stuff like that. Seems like James trying to figure out what kind of range Steven Chidwick could have here that really he can good. bluff off. Or buff does it there. ever show down? Yeah. In, you want to have jack 10, sure. I think it's jack 10, maybe queen 10. Ace 3, ace 4. Those can get in there. In that order, yeah. What's up? In that order, I think I'm supposed to, like, technically bet bigger two first two streets and last two. Well, whatever. I won. That's all that matters. Yes, I save some money by not flipping free. What did you show down? The nice little pick up there. Market Jack Simmons. Just overheard the post mortem between think over the Doug Polk and Jungle. Market Sevens. As betacr.eu, as we've discussed time and time again. What a way to bet on some of your favorite players, the exclusive hub to predict your favorite player's live action outcome in Triton events. Receive a 15% bonus to $250 on your first top up. You can now join and start engaging with the sporting world today. Once again, betacr.eu. A little $250 free play. 15%. So Doug Polk letting us know that he had a nine on the nine deuce deuce, flattened on the button. Jungle barreled with the fives. Cool, 11 bigs going to the turn. Brought the five, jungle boated up. Bet pot. Call from Polk, river king. On. Wait. Got called I guess. Never mind. by a curious nine as That's Polk no gave aces. jungle credit no for a lot of. Time. Yeah, of course. Ace three, ace four, jack ten type like holdings. Going to be, but then it wasn't. Isn't there a saying like good things come in threes or something like that? Well, I already had in, a third diamond in Chinese. Stevie. Oh, you had aces that one too? Oh, Holy shit. He said. <laughs> in, uh, no, 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 no. I said there's no said. way you could possibly have had three. three oh, no, aces. you're right. You said I definitely didn't have aces. Yeah. I take it back. In, uh, in Chinese, the saying is a good thing has come in pairs. In pairs? Yeah. Three sounds nicer than pairs, I think. Yeah, maybe. The thing is, uh, 
disasters don't Hold. travel alone and hmm. good things come in pairs. So they're, they're both, you know, so sort of like. All right, some Chinese proverbs. Ace nine offsuit here for James Chen on the dealer button. Yeah, you got your house all feng shuied out, right? Like that's meant to bring some run good. Exactly. Yeah. I like it. I really need you to wouldn't play your... poker in your house if it's not feng shuied properly, because why would you want to play in an environment where you're destined to lose? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's the secret, ladies and gentlemen. Nanonoko right there. That's how you set world records. It's true. Do I have the you grip? Feng shui out. Do you get a designer in? Like, did you have it all like, like interior design and someone came in a specialist to like feng shui it? No, you dummy. Why would I do that? <laughs> Jesus. What? Really? No, I just use Google, Wikipedia, feng shui. Just wait. So sorry. Sorry, just to correct, just to make sure I understand. I'm a dummy for asking you if you had an interior designer help you with the design of your interior in your house. Okay, noted. On to the next one. Yes, on to the next one we go. That makes perfect sense. Exactly. A7 on the button. Ace Jack for JNT. Just flat calling. Lun Lun, can get suited. Don't do it, Lun Lun. It always crosses your mind, but the thing is, this has good playability. No reason to kind of just leave it up to chance. Lion's share of the equity belongs to JNT. It's a safe check. Flopping well. Trouble for Juan Pardo, especially with the backdoor spades. Kind of missing, given that it's in Loon Loon's hand. Yeah, perhaps not giving. JNT credit for bigger ASEX here. As he checks it back. Wow. JNT quickly checking the ace jack, which fares to be the best hand a lot. We might see Juan Pardo try to shed some single club type holdings that are weak. Of course, nothing wrong with checking two. He is up against two opponents. There it is, the delayed C bet. Kicker is very weak here for Juan Pardo. Really just looking to beat the ace five. Of course, all the other weak kickers are two pair or better. If we can find a check here, really would have lost the minimum given what type of holding. What, what's happening here? Oh, bromance. <laughs> was that Davies giving the little Shoulder massage as you, you wouldn't this understand, hand happens. Randy. No, no, I don't. Oh, well, he's going to value on himself here, it seems. This is going to get picked off so fast. Mace Jack. No value cut from the Spaniard as JNT moves back up to second in chips. And Pardo, perhaps, a bit surprised to see the chips going to the other side of the table. <laughs> to the win. Such a, such a good check. <laughs> Back to the red feature table. Now, I don't know if this is true or whether it was just... King 10 with the 10 of diamonds. Gossip from Ali Najad and Maria Ho, but I overheard that Jungle Nothing. picked out the yeah, AC no, Milan top no, 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 no. thinking it was an Arsenal top and being that we're in London felt like it was fitting which you know I can see Jungle I checked. 
perhaps doing something like that. I have to ask Ali and Maria because it could just be yeah, people spreading fold lies. Fold that either. Yeah. Not fold the egg bed. But you might check turn. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, all in. I'll be blind. Right, first Kate. card. Pretty good. Must hit a queen. You definitely wouldn't call turn. So. I would not call twice. Huh? <coughs> I would not call twice. That is. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah, so I think something I would have done. Second card wasn't so good. Worked out, but it was like both of us. Maybe it didn't okay. seem like it in the moment for you. It was a little too like tantalizing, but I don't know. Top 20 big blind stacks. Doug Polk, Lun Lun, and Timothy Adams. Average stack is 43 bigs. I'm getting chip envy. Hmm? Me too. I said I'm getting chip envy. 180. I'm, I'm too close to the ropes here. I'm just trying to survive, man. I can't be, I can't be wrapped up in yeah. whatever else we got going on here. James saying he's been getting chip envy, <laughs> meaning he wants more. Well, it'll be going to be pretty tough against Pocket Kings, Ace Nine. I think he was needling Doug. As Doug's on the short stack, does defend. Chitter's flopping quads daily, just in case we hadn't had it already. You know the deal. Spam quads in the chat. Chen with ace high. What about betting quads? Normally a good strategy to build pots with hands as strong as quads. Highly recommend it. Well, Chidwick knows that he would see bet pretty much his whole range on his texture, so he kind of wants to keep it consistent. James Chen has got ace nine. Don't really see how he could Three lay down three. outright and actually going to come in with check raise. And you're holding quads here. You know your opponent has a bluff. <laughs> Why? What could he have? Is this where the only thing you're sweating is a fifth king in the deck? And <laughs> yeah, new deck Clearly. on table one. You also got position. You get to see exactly what happens. Let's see if a brick rolls off. That is a brick. And does Chen keep firing? Well, he was looking to just take it down on the flop against all of the unpaired hands. He knows that, of course, when he check raises and get called King X, all pocket pairs, club draws, the main range he'd be up against. Seeing the check from James Chen, Chirwick knows that this is either a pure air ball or it's club draw. Given that his opponent's out of position, he can't really charge the club draw, given that they often are just high card and they do a check fold at a high frequency, so... Chat back and just see what happens. Seems like a good play. Well, he agrees with you. As the clubs have bricked. The way it's played out, James might. He's got the best hand occasionally, I suppose. What? A6, A7, A8 of clubs. To be fair, there, there could be busted clubs in, in Chidwick's range. Call, check, raise, oh, okay. check, back, turn. I thought we had five and you had six. Isn't that the same? So you what price one, 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 to bet? 
Uh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, interesting, I gotcha. Pretty sweet sizing here as he can still represent those busted clubs. Uh, 550. Wow. Oh, thinking about making the call here. No club in hand is not good for him as that's what he's trying to pick off. All right, show me. Wow. Chidwick <laughs> gets paid. As you wish. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> As you wish. <laughs> paid oh. with quads. You done been showed. <clears throat> show <Chidwick> days night. <laughs> up to 3.4 million. When you got check raised on the flop, you had to be like, it's going to get interesting. <laughs> I was confused about which king he had. <laughs> I hope this deck has the right number of cards in it. <laughs> Looks like Shark's been brought over oh. from the outer table. Just to keep things balanced. We played a similar hand before where Ace High was here. <laughs> Don't have been. <coughs> this one's your inner jungle, man. Don't lose that, buddy. Yeah. Looks like you're all out of it. I had two. Well, I had three, and I got three here, so. I think you're right. Sounds like you had one. So Davey's coming over is a balancing <coughs> thing. Is that right, Henry? That's correct, yeah. <laughs> 11 nice left. Hands. Just making okay. sure that it wasn't aces, it's equal but, you know, as the chip leader, jungle man. 160. Gold. Oh, Mama Cita's 160 to go. And nothing to write home about in this one as win this one. fourth in chips. No. Mike Caxton folds as big. What did you say? Jungle's the ladies, man. Jungle, jungle loves ladies. <laughs> there you go. What did I hear? <laughs> I can see it. I'm too tired for some kind of witty comeback to that. What would it be? I don't know. You're tired. That's the point. What the fuck would you say to that? I, 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 that I that was the point. He doesn't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <he> <laughs> that part really get into I'm, just, I'm just too tired, you know? Tired. It's not that easy. Run, run down. Can't speak English, apparently. <laughs> Old. Well, good opportunity to pick up some chips after making that incorrect hero call of ace nine. Oh, and Stephen Chiwick's got two nines. It's awkward given that Jungle Man's got CV's 40 blinds covered. He might also be asking why isn't James Chen just outright shipping 20 blinds and lays down two nines. James could have been flipping with one king dead. Yeah, had Jungle not opened, it would have been button v big blind <laughs> ace king against the problem nines. Showing the job there. Then they know the next one's a bluff, you know? Had a good hand, kind of. Good hand, kind of. That's Very normal hand. What's up? Very normal hand. I mean, you could have a third of a stack. <coughs> you just see a quick flop, you know? Huh? Quick flop. Peel? Yeah, just peel. Just peel, peel. You know how we've got people in the booths in the past at a Triton Super High Roller Series? Would love to get Jungle Man Fold. in, and would love to get Doug Polk in. <laughs> I could just imagine the nonsense going on. Yeah. In the booth. I, like I, I agree. Like front row seat of the show here. He just he called. 
Jungle's limped from under the gun. Well, interesting limp under the gun. Don't think many players expected that from the tournament chip leader. Davies with A6. Of course, going to take that free flop. Free flop. Davies with the best of it. Nuts. Bottom pair, but Jungle Man <coughs> with the flush draw. Comes out firing. Yeah, quick bet here with the flush draw and Davies with the bottom pair ace. Can't really go anywhere as played. Ooh, hello. The bottom pair trip draw rolling off on the <laughs> turn. The most disguised draw in no limit holding <coughs> 480 in the middle and now options on the table for Seth for Andy because he's in the big yeah he's contemplating actually leading out it seems with this kind of stutter check maybe Dan Cates is reading into that as weakness perhaps and may actually come in with a double barrel yeah, just attacking the 10 X's that probably will just have to check fold so often. I mean, you gotta love this with trip sixes. You're also not expecting Jungle Man to be limping UTG with like pocket kings or pocket tens. Right. So you just know you have the best hand every time, even this deep, you'll be willing to stack off. You do see the presence of the flush draws. You can represent a draw yourself very easily. I assumed, I assumed something else made sense, but I just couldn't see any cards. 75% on the turn from Jungle Man Dan. <laughs> if Davies had like a big combo draw, say like a Jack Nine of Hearts, he wants to. He would want to check raise when it pairs this bottom card that hits his range more to apply max pressure. 1.2. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. Seth Davies with the turn check raise to 1.2. As the short stacks get to just watch from the sidelines. This is first against fifth in chips with 11 left. Don't forget, we wrap up the day when we get down to the final nine. This looks like a 6x or nothing spot for a jungle man. It seems. Hence him calling with just the five high flush draw. He might be thinking if my opponent is bluffing, he'll just have to give up when I bet call this turn. If he's got a six, he'll just <coughs> continue to sell the story. He won't have to bluff. And he gets there with the flush. How sick is this? Just disgusting. SPR 0.75. Just shy of 2.9 million in the middle. Davies, the effective stack. Are we getting punished for needling the, the tournament players? <laughs> Looks like it could be. Makes sense. We, we do it ourselves. I mean, what does Seth Davies... Right? want to get value from now like if jungle is holding jungle like a, a king he, they wouldn't be happy to call when the flush comes in as well as the strips is this one of those check and i hope you check it back spots the crazy thing about this for me is that jungle limped from under the gun and called and with me and Steve, the flush draw i brought it on myself on the board pairing turn where seth has a hundred percent range in the big. He could colors. have a full house here. He can have ten six. He can have king six. Right. All of these offsuited combos 
And yet, Jungle, just refusing to back down, has now got there. Well, Davies does check. And if you're Jungle and you see your opponent check call, check raise the six and check, you're going to think he's got a six. Such an obscure hand. All started with that under the gun limp. It's hard for Jungle to represent a bluff here besides like a Queen Jack that just went heroic on the turn call and just realized it's not good and he's going to bet huge. Most of Seth Davies' chips. I used one of these already, right? <clears throat> How sick is this? You're holding trip sixes, one of the worst cards on the river. Can't find the obvious bluffs out there. No blocker to the flush. Jungle's out of time. The pain on Seth Davies' expression here. I mean, good luck solving this. An under the gun limp. Soft final table bubble. Check raise massive on the turn. And you're up against the jungle. I th it feels like he, he knows he's beat, but he just sees how much is in the middle and just trying to find anything he can be think of. If he calls, he's going to be down to dust. Brilliant Pitches it, Randy. Finds the fold. Bravo, Seth Davies. What a performance. Put money Dumbo. in when he was ahead. I feel like I'm sitting front row. Gets away from it oh, when he's behind. Ah, oh, that was a show. <laughs> you limped under the gun that hand, right? Okay. <laughs> Did you mean to? Oh. <laughs> that's probably that's probably that's a no. The jungle <coughs> the jungle <laughs> It's all business today, jungle man. It's very hard to know if he meant to or not. I think he didn't mean to. I'm pretty sure he didn't mean to. I would I would bet on it. If that's the case. It's, a bit, it's an even it's, better it's, show. It's just very fitting to win a massive ass pot accidentally yeah. limping out of the gun posting your big blind. You know? Yeah. Fitting. Now you're... F Is that what happened? Did you try and post and you limped in out of the gun? Yeah, he did. I'm almost sure, based, uh, based on a bunch of things. Wow. <coughs> that's... that's. It means you're, <coughs> Doug, it means you're front row to an even better show. I know. Than you, than you bought tickets for. Very, you know? very good point. Yeah. I mean, Jungle is not engaging because he knows what's on the line. It's that is he's the massive chip leader, 4.185 up top. He'll engage later when he ships his tournament. That's his thoughts. Welcome to the jungle. Hmm? Oh, sir. Perhaps he can buy a new phone if he takes this one down, Randy. <laughs> he did get his phone. His phone stolen, didn't he? Oh. All right, so Jungle going to limp here and Doug Polk with one of the worst hands in the game. Occasionally you see players raise this one up, but he will check back. The payouts besides. Oh, that's an aggressive check. <laughs> Randy going for the live reads. It was. Did you not? Yeah, no, I agree. You felt it, right? I agree. It was a very, like, annoyed check. Nice pickup for Doug Polk. 90s off suit with no stack. Being able to bet the Jack 6 3.
<laughs> sound like we're heading towards that planned schedule break, but this is... What? what? I missed that. What do you say? Color up and break? Color, Color up, up and, and break. break. Yes. Yeah. After this level, right? Absolutely yeah. flown by, Randy. These two frames. Five. Doug Polk, the shortest stack in the field, but still playable. 16 bigs. Lun Lun, the only other player with sub 20 on the other table. Not sure what the other card is, but. Looks like he's going to try to get a free flop here, Doug Polk. One this point is the battle of the short stacks. Oh, oh, yeah. Short stack cash game players. Doesn't really, not what you usually hear. Short stack. Short stack, not short deck. Regardless, I, king five deuce. I, I know. Yeah. These min bet pots are where I'm doing my best work today. <laughs> so it seems that way. Hello, hello. FT of the 60k turbo. Walk, talk me, talk to me. Okay, Randy. Phil Ivy, chip leader. Nice. Million up top. Ivy looking for his fourth title has been <coughs> so consistent. This series joined by Wai Kin Yong, another three-time champion looking for his fourth. Kerry Katz, Nick Petrangelo, Biao Ding, and Alex Ponikovs, as well as Tan Shuan and Rodrigo Seluanas. Nice reshove here from Doug Polk. Yeah, Doug, just finding the rejam. Pretty relentless one, this uh, button versus cutoff off of this stack size. 1.5-ish. Accent. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't know what he's got, but he's got the king Mystery of diamonds. And there are hands that can continue. Most certainly the ace and king, of course. This doesn't feel like posturing, Randy. 60 bigs effective against jungle. Wow. Let's it must it be the go. queen then for him to lay down in that spot. Making Doug sweat. Nice few hands for Doug hand Polk. You just feel like this is the end for me. <laughs> I just felt it in my bones. Two that was the end. Yeah. So you, you're clearly not like me in jungle who, who can see the matrix. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I, I guess. No, I mean, no, no. You, you, if that's what that means, no, no, then no, no, I... No, no. It's like uh, you weren't at the previous table, so it was a continuation oh, oh, of a previous... Oh, okay. You know, yeah. That makes more sense, yeah. then. Oh, he's not, he's not in the inner, inner circle. <laughs> he's not in the inner circle. He's out Actually, of the it matrix. Was his, it, it was Jungle's bit, and that was just, you know... The jungle, ex 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 the jungle is the matrix. Old. And James Chen manipulates the matrix. <laughs> That's a good cast Ten. of characters here. Ten. I'm going king six. It's hard to have bluffs there. Did you have a bluff? Huh? Did you have a bluff? I'm going to see it anyway. He didn't bluff you. He, didn't. he gets like a little triumphant when he pulls a bluff on somebody. And that was just like... It was too yeah, like... I, I, it, I, I, my read is he didn't bluff you. <coughs> You just had a six, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow, how about uh, that for a fireworks flop? Yeah, it's a stream. Blind feet blind. Oh, it is? You yeah. notice you're putting your cards in a box? I noticed that, but it, it, when I was checking the hands before, it didn't show them. Show the, the ones that oh, it, well, we're secondary, so like that pot is going to get shown because it was a gigantic pot. Okay, okay. So they, they like mainly have it on that, and then when interesting stuff happens here. Yeah. 
They put it over to the table. It means... It's not, uh, I had it, I, but... It means when Stevie had four kings and I called with ace nine, it's not like an... People are going to get to see that. I had ace six. Perfect. Huh? It's actually ace pretty six. good material because, because I go like, all right, Stevie, show me, you know? He's like, great. Yeah. He's like, I'll, he's like, I'll show you or huh? something. He said something as a response to that. Like, like it was like, I'll show you or something like that. And I missed, then I missed that part, but like, yeah. I, I, it's, like it's, it's like, show me, and then you. There you go. Yes, we saw it, guys. We saw it. Back to the hand. Open in straight draw versus top pair, queen kicker. And what? Oh, he's afraid. I didn't think he'd go for a check raise at least. Yeah, no worries. We're not going to see stable things. Yeah, that's even. Oh, cool. Nice, thank you. 210. Look at Haxton check raising Queen Jack. Super deep stacks, BVB. Of course, the Queen Jack fares to be best often. Buckle up. Oh, I got lucky. This is one of those. Yeah, call. These hands to collide. Hit your hand, hope your opponent. Got a big slow played spot. Yeah, just show me the offsuit ace dealer. How about middle card pairing? 660 to fight for. Actually, not the greatest card for Haxton. It's easy for Chidwick to actually have the 5x to bet and deny equity and, of course, call a check, small check raise on the flop. It might slow Haxton down. He may still value bet. One sixty. It's a really small bet here, actually. One sixty into six sixty. Given the price, I don't really see how Stevie's got any other play then. Call, I suppose he can raise from time to time against the 5x. Well, I mean, wi repping the 5x to be exact. But I don't believe he thinks Queen Jack would lay down. so far on the flip side of break has been a monster one as the six of spades completes the board and with that Chidwick with a hundred percent check mark next to his name spades do get there some concern for Ike against the hundred percent range this was a limped pot of course could easily be up against trips, full houses. Obviously now the two straights as well as the flush getting there on the river. Yeah, now he does slow down with all of the danger that exists. Don't think Stevie's going to put his opponent on 5x too often given the check raise on the flop. You don't really see that too often when it's just mid pair. The biggest holding usually is the Jack X, although it is kind of a scary run out that it's hard for his opponent to kind of find some natural obvious bluffs out there. Still shot. Chidwick in his pose. About to pounce at Jacob and Co. main event champion timepiece on his left wrist. Four ninety. 
And you can see him going for half pop because he knows it's so hard for him to represent bluffs, so he's just going for some crying calls and maybe represent some worse jack x value bets to get this queen jack to come along. And you can see Haxton is pretty pained despite the good price he's being laid. Haxton might be thinking that the 5x would raise him on the turn at some frequency too. Kind of feels like a flush or nothing situation maybe. Might not expect the weakest jacks to still bet. Feels like you're getting milked. A, a spot where you put 490 in and you never see them return. But then again, it's it's Chidwick, the man that is capable of having bluffs. Fold finds the fold though, and Bravo, Ike Haxton retaining it. that fourth position chip stack. As we wrap up that frame, Randy and. We've dropped down from 16 to 11. Chip counts brought to you by Bet ACR when we return from break. Blinds will be going up to 50,000, 100,000, meaning that the average stack is going to drop down to 34 bigs. It is Jungle Man Dan leading the final 11. We'll be returning with 81 big blinds. The plan of play, Mr. Nanonoko is to play down to the final table. Two more eliminations needed as we welcome you back to the break desk here at the JW Marriott. And perhaps all eyes on the short stacks now that that big blind has increased to 50K, 100K. When we return, we've now got three sub 20 big blind stacks. This could get down to the FT very quickly on the flip side of break. Oh, it most certainly can get down there quickly as we are just two eliminations away. And we know that the big chip lead of Daniel Cates is going to raise relentlessly now as, you know, the big pay jumps are right around the corner. Well, 360K guaranteed for these final 11. The next ladder coming at nine. So ICM considerations, sure, but also not as heavy right now as they will be tomorrow when we return for that FT. Yes, I agree. And, you know, like the pay jumps are a little bit smaller now, but... Your chips are just so, so important. All these players, we got a nice mixture of tournament players and cash game players willing to kind of just, you know, try to preserve their tournament life. Uh, you know, but there's people who are kind of willing to splash yeah. as well. When we got JNT, and you, you saw James Chen kind of making a big call when, you know, a spot where those chips are very valuable. Right. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun as we kind of see who's going to navigate into that final nine. And you throw someone like JNT in there with the fives hand against Juan Pardo's tens where, you know, we were literally on the edge of our seats due to the fact that, you know, a hundred big blind pot can just happen like that with JNT out there. Oh, yeah, of course it can. And, you know, he also tried to make that bluff against Nick Shulman uh, with the queen three and Shulman made a nice bet call with that river bet. And it, it's, it's tough. It's very tense, of course. We're of playing course. for so much up top and... You know, like, I, I would love to see any nine, any of these nine make it to that final table. Well, let's throw it to commercials when we get back. More action, of course, as we play down to the final table of the 125K Triton Super High Roller Series main event. We'll see you very shortly.
One of my favorite ways to understand GTO strategies is to look at the expected value of different plays. Whenever you see a spot to GTO Wizard, you can hit this dropdown and select Strategy plus EV. For example, opening Ace-10 offsuit from under the gun is worth about 9 big blinds per 100, but opening Ace-9 offsuit loses about 5 big blinds per 100. Ace-8 loses about 14, and this is why it's important to understand the bottom of your range and think about which plays actually make money and which plays are pretty close to break even. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Three hundred and sixty thousand currently guaranteed for these final eleven players, but of course, all eyes are going to be on the top prize of the four point one million and change. That's what's going to be going to the eventual champion tomorrow. But for now, our attention, Randy, to these final eleven as we work our way down to that FT. It's Jungle Man Dan out in front with eighty-one big blinds. And a massive chip lead, as you can see here. And, you know, J&T, Juan Pardo, Isaac Haxon. Very comfy, though, with that 50 big blinds or so. Short stacks in trouble. Lun Lun of Malaysia. James Chen of Taiwan at the bottom. Doug Polk right above him. Such a star-studded field. And, of course, some storylines potentially emerging. Chidwick looking for his second main event title. His previous one coming in a short deck main. The likes of Juan Pardo here for the first time. An online phenom looking to close things out here as the first Spaniard to win a championship since Madrid of last year. So a lot of storylines. Jungle Man, though, in pole position. And on the flip side, 
All eyes on the short stacks now. Doug Polk, James Chen, Lundlund, all sub-20, looking to sneak their way into that FT and ladder up. And got Chidwick, Shawman, Davies in the middle of the pack as we look to throw it down to the main floor. Blue feature table with Shawman, Adams, Pardo, JNT, and Lundlund. And the red feature table with Chidwick, Davies, Cates, Polk, Chen, and Paxton. Chipcounts brought to you by GG Poker. You excited, Henry, or what? Dude, I am. And, we, and to think, we get to do this for a living, Randy. It's, <laughs> it's our careers, you know? Well, you know what? We're out It here. is their career to play <laughs> poker. Most of them, at least. Maybe not J&T and Loon Loon, but you know what I'm saying. We're going full circle on that joke. That's, that's going to be my go-to <laughs> for the rest of the series. Can we play just play down to a winner today? I don't really want to stop. This has just yeah. been so... You know? Damn Maria Ho and Ali Najan. Let them pick up whatever it is tomorrow. We just cool down the action. They better be comfortably in bed getting some shot eye. Lun Lun, Ace 8 off suit. Big blind versus button. Nice spot to re jam here. You gotta expect Juan Pardo to be raising the button at a very high frequency. Does pick this one up. 1.775. Healthier. Still the shortest stack by just a little. Those of you that have perhaps only just joined us since we got back from break. Firstly, welcome to the stream. Secondly, where on earth have you been? Thirdly, we've got a star-studded field in this 125k main. The list goes on. And fourthly, click the like button. You Bravo. forgot that one. We did. We're almost there, by the way. We're almost up to 3k likes. Do appreciate the support from each and every one of you, whether it be in the form of a subscription, a follow on Twitch, or a like. Or perhaps you're just engaging in the chat, keeping us company as we wind down towards this final table, record-breaking main event. That's Mystery once card. again. Lundlund with a couple of re-jams. And just like that. Moves up to the middle of the pack. That's how tight it is down there. That cluster. Only five players with more than average. And with two re-jams, Lundlund's moved up to sixth after being the short stack. Shawman now on 20, Timothy Adams on 21, Seth Davies on 21, so really could get down to the FT in the blink of an eye. Blind versus blind spot with these 20 big blind stacks. Let's see if Shulman wants to try and get a free flop or not. With eight five off, looks like he is going to attempt to do so. What does Timothy Adams do here? Definitely, had he could contemplate jamming outright twenty one blinds, unless he feel like he's getting trapped. Twenty one, twenty one. You pretty much jam or check this spot. I don't really expect like a three point five x too often. Oh, actually, he does. Because it does open the door to kind of get blown off your hand from time to time, does it not? But does see the quick fold, which he likes to see. Oh, 
I'd imagine though if he did get limp jammed on that a7 of clubs would have went into the muck. And this is once again the the balancing thing. It is indeed. Five seconds. Two hundred. Old musical chairs. Must be good for this table to lose jungle. Couple tens here for Steven Chidwick in the small blind. Sorry, not in the small light. On the dealer button versus the cutoff open. So he does have position. Cold. Just going to call here. and The logic here is that Chidwick doesn't want to bloat the pot against someone who has a good stack as well. He does let his opponent get a free flop, but he doesn't have to be face of a decision for all of the chips from time to time. Here you are. Double Two players of a gutter. <laughs> yeah, not not often expecting Haxton to have the five here on the nine eight six six fifty in the middle. A tough texture to see bet on, given that this tends to hit the flatting range a bit. Does have the backdoor spades in hand. Three fifty. So three fifty. The 350 is looking to shed the Broadways, the Ace, Fives, and lower. But we know 210s is going nowhere. That we do. We're not Oracles. Just Randy has played millions of hands of poker, lifetime. And right, he's bold enough to make predictions such as this. Cool. As Chidwick delivers. You know, Lots of interesting turn them. cards could arrive. Tournament guys? Well, that one not being one of them, like is it? Stoic. Like they just like walk in. I think we're, partly. We're a little more like. Yeah, because I think partly. I mean, maybe not them specifically because these guys are used to, to playing big, but I think part of, like we're used to playing big for every hand, you know. Uh, and then some of these guys, it's like. You build up throughout the course of a couple of days, you know, and then now they're at in the beginning they're playing for small, and now they're playing for really big, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Could be. So Haxton does check the turn. Two tenths fares to be best quite a bit, unless it's some kind of pot controlled over pair. Like. I, I, I'm, in the past, I've done it, but I, you know, as you play more and then you I run into it. familiar faces, you know, you get, you know, get to chat more. It's more fun. The denial of equity here with two tens can still extract from the pairs that exist on the board. Rarely does. Chidwick actually get checked raise off. I wish I pulled a jump. this hand here. too. Like accidentally limped the U uh, like UTG, and then. Well, you would have gotten isolated, well, and then you would have had to limp call. So I don't know. I don't know. 10-7 off. Yeah. <coughs> Good, I mean, nothing stopping you, I guess. No, th no, no three bet, and I'm in. Ah. Shout out to Doug Polk sharing the stream to all of his you fans. Know, roughly the same stack as me, right, James? On socials. After uh, including this or no? Yeah. Uh, uh, either way, whatever. Huh? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, one more six behind. Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe the Try same stack. Yeah. Exactly? Uh, almost exactly, yeah. Hi, Sigan. Polk, uh, I just want to know. I've got 1.5. There's no. Five, seven, five. So you might have covered by a quarter. Huh? I think you have me covered by a quarter. Those aren't mine. You can take them. No. Yeah. One point seven five. Five seconds. Okay, so Chidwick in the cutoff. All in. Just kind of open Ready? rip it. Doug's got ace nine suited in. It's 16 blinds to him. 
Would be a big laydown, and it is correct. Saves himself. Nicely done. Didn't even think about it too long. Randy, we've obviously sung the praises of the Triton media team before, but you showed me a funny clip with uh, Jungle Man on break over on the Triton Poker Series Instagram page. <laughs> As he was walking to the feature table, just happened to spill 90% of his chips. So once again, if you haven't already, checked us out on socials, Triton Poker Series on Instagram. Of course, you can find us on Twitter as well. Chidwick doing amazing in this tournament. Really grinding, and he's won the No Limit main before, hasn't he? Or was it the Short it Deck the main? Short I forget. Deck main. It's okay. Mistakes are allowed. Just don't let it happen again. <laughs> Queen high board. The Prince of Darkness after defending his big blind. A small bet here, Haxton with top pair, weak kicker. The weak kicker though does have that little backdoor straight draw which is helpful. Not sure if he's looking to play bloated pots right now and put in a raise. Just given where we're at at the tournament, 11 remaining. Keep it small. I was about to complain about these Euros tanking. Then I remembered that Ike's actually American. And it's a soft bubble with a lot to consider. We actually have a lot of Americans remaining out of these 11. It's one, two, three, four, five. Five of 11. One from Taiwan, a Malaysian, Canadian, UK, Spain, and France. So check through on the turn. The kicker issue might not be that big of a deal here for Haxton, given that the Chidwick would probably bet a stronger queen on the turn at a high frequency. Maybe try to extract value from a pair lower. If he does bet, he is representing kind of like the busted diamonds. Hoping to get paid off. But going to just hopefully induce a bet check bet line from Steven Chidwick. It's good. <coughs> Chidwick still in third after a small dent. Ike closing the gap on Juan Pardo. <coughs> Thanks. Jungle Thank Man you. still leading the field as we close in on this final table bubble. And talking of final tables, something that that man on your screens is all too familiar with. Mr. Patrick Antonius, creator, founder of the first Land of Poker app. The app looks to connect poker players globally, locating venues with games running and to reserve seats at such games. And of course, with the flop PM, benefits are for the poker rooms, operations, for the managers, increasing player traffic, 
and profitability through AI solutions. Yeah. You can check he out more. smirking after he did it. He did. <laughs> Com. You didn't start smirking, I think, until it had folded to the blinds, though. <laughs> Just a quick update. Which makes it even funnier. Yes. On that turbo. <coughs> Phil Ivy. Still in the mix. Six left, but it is Carrie Katz, the chip leader. Oh. Ivy's in second. James Chen jamming 10 9 suited. 15 and a half blinds. 1.550. Oh, oh. Chitwick's got Ace 4 suited, yeah, but it's quite That's a. Kind of it's fine. It's quite a jam. It's. It's tough to call just Ace 4, especially for the amount that's being laid. Just a slight favorite, too. Pitches it. Chen getting away with one there. Yeah, really just not afraid. And, and that fold a byproduct of the, the ICM noose that is currently around Chidwick's neck, if you will. <coughs> it, it's basically also expecting the short stack to play a tighter range, right? Because of the two from the final table situation. Ace four actually doesn't perform that well. The hands you beat still had 45% equity as you saw there. <clears throat> Rarely is he ever dominating and usually dominated. James Chen not slowing down, racing to ace eight offsuit. Quite an active short stack. Couple sevens here for Isaac Haxton. Like what I do here. Wow, big lay down there. Yeah, that is definitely not an option that I thought was on the table. Get the notepads out, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the world's best trying to navigate their way to this final table where the champion will be going home with 4.1 million and change, plus that golden piece of hardware Triton main event trophy, as well as the Triton and Jacob Co collaborative timepiece. Uh, okay. James Chen looking to go back to back. That's pretty sick. In the 250 and 125k. Quite the run of cards. Number one on Taiwan's all-time money list. Do you get? Did uh, Seth explain why they rotate the six and five? Yeah, it makes yeah. Sense. Makes, especially for us now. <coughs> Are we? Uh, we got to be ahead of them, right? They're counting, right? I. They should be. Think so. Looks like what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They yeah, are definitely on top of it. No, that's all right. They're, I'm sure they're all. They're counting. Trust me. And if they're not, Randy is. So we they're got de you. They're definitely counting because we've seen the player kind of shift over back and forth. They won't rely on me. Steven Chidwick, Ace Five suited in a cutoff. Many short stacks behind him. Oh. And this is just, you can't call me unless, unless you wake up oh, with top of rage. Terrible. Second one's terrible. Power poker from Chitters as Phil Ivey has eliminated Biao Ding in sixth. For no, those of you no. wanted to sweat play. along that yeah. 60K turbo, event number 12, they're down to the <laughs> final five. Ivy looking for his fourth title. Check that out on the Triton Poker Plus app if you haven't already downloaded it. In the wise words of Brian Rast, what are you doing, you idiots? <laughs> Download the app. Ivy going for title four. Nick <coughs> Petrangelo 
looking to stop him. Ponikov's in the mix. Rodrigo Seluan, as well as Kerry Katz. Million up top in that one. Polk trying to get a cheeky one through on the button, and this is likely not going to work here. James is actually thinking about reshoving himself. Regardless, one of these two are going to put Doug Polk in the bin, I assume. Usually it's the ace, ace X suited that go for oh, yeah. a three bed jam. Uh, it should, uh, he should, uh, I have two, right? Yeah, so yep. you have regular time bags. Huh? You don't you use do, those. Use your regular time. Oh, oh, it, it's not ten seconds. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. The red only I'm applies sorry. to opening. The red time bags. Did Taxton give the wrong information and just yeah, just burn one of James Chen's time bags? Yeah, it just it created a lot of confusion and hmm. It's unopened pots. That's correct. When it's ten seconds. That is correct. All right, so Hexen actually not going to rejam. Going to just call here. Interesting. Well, it's allowed Polk to flop a double gut shot on the ten nine six. Two hearts, 5.50 in the middle. You, you surprised at the flat from the big? I am. He must really respect Doug Polk's open, just given how short he is. Big Otherwise, jungle, I don't really see why not. Three hands at that table. Played. Let's Doug hit it. Eight, I believe. Just play three, we play eight. Hey, Marius, are we... Uh, we were just kind of tracking in the app. And I feel like we've played more hands than them. Yeah, tell, tell. Maybe we just finish this. Yeah, that's it. Oh, no. yeah. And then finish the hand as Doug has turned Ike Haxton dead. Queen high straight. It's, it's not the app, it was just that since Jungle Move, we played eight hands and they played three. So I was just wondering if they were like. Okay, how big is the gap? <coughs> Getting clarification about the hands played between the two tables, but it, right now it is Haxon, just A7 high. Oh, they've been waiting for us? Fold. Okay. <coughs> Very fortunate for Doug Polk to get that there. flop and hit that. Oh, no, sorry. Apparently, no, we no, were, no, apparently no. we've been yeah. behind. Oh, earlier. And they've been waiting. And that's when you asked about the time ship? How would it sound like it? It didn't sound like it at all. What? It didn't sound like it at all. To, I was just, to me, no. Oh, I, 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 so I, I guess there was a disparity. Pocket aces here. <laughs> Timothy Adams. I'm sorry, I'm just chuckling at whatever that was going down between those two, but Adams with numero uno. <coughs> J and T, Queen Tenno, gonna pill on the button, and as we already know, when these guys are in the mix, you get explosive real fast. Shawman, one of the short stacks now. Down to just 15 bigs. Yeah, King Jack. Definitely a hand you're going to want to take a flop with, although they are in big trouble against these two aces. Yeah. This is potential car crash for JNT and Shulman. Fortunately for both, just a massive whiff on the 9-3 deuce. Just an amazing flop here, and... Wouldn't surprise me if two aces just kind of check to J and T, who's willingness to kind of just attack. 
And this texture is so good for you that there's really nothing to worry about. But he's going to still bet. Small, I imagine. Really small, 175. And JNT looks like he's taking the bait as he picks up chips and tosses them in. JNT's like, listen, I've got 60% of a straight. Let's try and make it 100 by the river. I mean, he's still got pair draw in his eyes. Pair draw binked, Randy. <coughs> And a disaster for the JNT fans out there. SPR2. And a beautiful development for Adams. Just came fourth in the 200k the other night. Just needs to try to extract value. And he's setting up a very natural river SPR here, Randy. Five seven five. Oh wow! Well, snap word. all in and snap call. Here we go. J and T putting Timothy Adams at risk, but only has eleven percent equity. Not too good. If Adams can hold here. He's going to move up to second in chips. He's a main event champion. 10 caches, 8.9 million in Triton earnings. Perhaps one of the biggest spots of his career. He finds the hold, Randy, and just like that, Timothy vaulting up to second now. JNT down to 25 bigs. Timothy Adams, he's won a no limit main. He has indeed. One time champion, took down a main event way back in the day. Mm hmm. I I believe it was Jeju, yeah. was it? Now second in chips in another main. It was Jeju 2019. Fresh off a fourth place finish here in London, <laughs> 1.55 million. In that 200k, career best score of 3.6 million. Looking to outpip that. Yeah, just one of those super consistent grinders coming from a cash game background, transitioning to the high stake tournament scene. You know, he's just got a good routine. Always at the top of his game. I never really ever see him make any kind of big mistakes and just really solid. Lovely to see him make another deep run and get a nice double up there with the two aces. Once upon a time, JNT was our chip leader, peaking around 6 million chips, down to 2.5. It was indeed. A couple of mistimed three bets with the fives against the tens, now floating. Uh oh, JNT, pocket nines. Is this going to be a 1 2 KO? As he's 3 bet from the cutoff. Shulman, King Queen O hitting the mark. One of Pardo's outs. Another out busy in Adam's hand. We might lose JNT if he happens to call off a 4 bet jam. We know Juan Pardo's not going nowhere, a big slick. We've seen two of his six outs folded already. Should the money find its way into the middle pre-flop? There it is. Jams over the three bet. And a call from JNT. Just like that, Randy. Snap. The one-two blow perhaps going to be delivered. It is a slight favor right now. We did see those aces dead, we like did. you mentioned. We did. JNT standing up to get back up to 5 million. If he can just hold with the nines here. Massive flip for both, not to state the obvious as it's come. 9 8 deuce, and he Sit sits right back, back down. down. He knows where this is going. A spade. He's asking for a spade. No. How about full house? Dead. 
on the turn. Daily quads delivered once again late in the evening. Pardo down to 1.8 million. And Pardo was our chip leader at some point today too. And man, it's just, they can't maintain the big stack. It's been swingy. Yeah, well with that, Pardo actually dropping down to eighth in chips, I believe. And we now have, we now have six sub 20 big blind stacks, Randy. So a massive cluster at the bottom there, really increasing that ICM pressure because the difference between 11th and 6th is the better part of 600,000. Jungle Man still leading. Adams in second. JNT back up to third. Chidwick in fourth. Ike in fifth. Those are the only five players with more than average. Average stack 34 bigs. Everyone guaranteed 360,000. That's just a funny line. What do you really makes you think the jungle is honest? I'm not sure. Lun Lun laying down to King-10, showing discipline, restraint. Understandably so, given 11 left. Adams is like, I don't want to play against a chip leader out of position. Quick update from the 60k, down to four. No, Kerry Katz sir. leading the four with 29 bigs. Ivy in second with 25. Nick Petrangelo in third with 18. Fresh off of that run in the 250k. Unless you want to chop the blinds forever. The short stack, the Brazilian Rodrigo That's sitting around the with end. just 10 Did bigs. The jungle and Tim. Huh? Let's start it right now, though. Just Debut the series for him. The Came no second in the 60k. Right now. Okay. And being by Jason Kuhn, heads up. Surprise, surprise. We'll keep you all updated, but if you do want to sweat along, Triton Poker Plus app. Showman has been bleeding downwards. 1.4, looking to pick up some blinds. It does look rather strong for him to open in the cutoff. Currently sitting in 10th place of 11. A good story. The, the Tim and Jungle pack. Juan Pardo is down to 1.6 behind after losing to JNT. Okay, here we go. Rough flop for the Shulman fans out there. Pardo out flopping him on the King Queen seven. The Ace of Diamonds does bet the flop at a pretty high frequency, especially on the King Queen board texture, as the big blind has a lot of incentive to rejam those kind of hands that hit the King and Queen. So he will fire. Top pair. Right on cue, as you predicted, Randy. Same standard so far, 900 in the middle. See the gutter ball? I do, but I'm also observing the SPR 975 back for Shulman. So difficult to 
play this over three streets. Yeah, to play this over three streets means you need to go small with a lot of intention to jam rivers to attack the one pair holdings. And he's thinking about if that would work. Try to figure out what hands check call flop, check call turn, check fold river on the different Kaimana runouts that do exist. He's reaching for chips here. I'm gonna go for it. Third pot on the turn. It's a scary board for the King Eight. But then again, you got top pair, the price is good. Do you commit now? Do you just check call and see if it just checks through on the river? Maybe bad rivers come and you save yourself. That remaining 675 back of Nick Shulman. Not shaking yet. We got a pot brewing up here. 1.5. Yeah, these two on the shorter side means oh so much. As now the four liner on board. 1.5 in the middle. Shulman the effective stack with 675. If he can find the triple here, Randy, perhaps a path to victory. Yeah, it, this is obviously one of the worst cards for Juan Pardo as the four liner does show up. Feels like an impossible bluff though. Check called flop. Check called turn. SPR less than 0.5. It wouldn't be that big of a jam. But again, it seems like he would only want to bet Jack X. It would look credible, and he's going oh for it. Nick Shulman. Bravo. Soft bubble. Well, don't Bravo yet. I mean, <laughs> Bravo for finding the barrel, Randy. What? 625. So if you're Juan Pardo here, you're thinking this is, has to be a Jack X or nothing. You would never expect like a two pair or set to bet this river. You would just auto check that one back, wouldn't you? So how do we show up with a jack if you're in showman spot? Ace jack, of course. Pocket jacks wouldn't bet the flop. King jack makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't expect queen jack to bet the flop, though. Jack 10 probably checks back the turn. Maybe the jack is hard to show up with given the stack sizes they got and he can find some hero? Is that possible? Wow, he looks him up. Jesus, what a call. With just two seconds left. As he was out of time bank, Shulman with his heart on his sleeve, emptying the clip, firing three bullets, flop turn and river, but unable to take down the bull. That's demoralizing. You make such a great play and your opponent still calls you with the hands you're trying to blow away. Down to just half a big blind now. That one does sting. I mean, a massive play in final 11. 125K main event, Triton took a shot at it. They did leave, leave himself with some life. One big blind or 50k. Yeah, One small blind. Always sting. Sure, Shulman will bounce back. Will take a couple of days, of course. But you got to respect that call. Wow, King Eight triple barrel. The jungle doesn't need any time bank. Just the entire hand, both players. Bravo. That was sick. Loon Loon's going to raise the King Queen. Now Shulman knows. Dominated. He's got two hands. 
He's going to run the king three. This is going to be a mandatory all in for him next hand. It's dominated and well. JNT waking up with the ace jack in the big. What is this three men on line? On what? Stars? Ten o'clock. Either, either stars or GG. Yes. Did we play? We must have played. I'm on GG. I mean, not the real name, but my old star. I don't know if we played that much. It was Hector Hermano. Huh? Like years ago, it was Hector Hermano. That was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shulman is looking grim. Spades, three, five, four. There's a side pot to play for in the spot for the Loon and JNT. Yeah, just pointing that out it does make sense to try and battle here. So he tried to bet 60k, but the min bet is 100 because the big blind's 100k. Wow, JNT just hitting him with the three piece and the can of soda. Upstairs we go. Talk about getting blown off here, King Queen. Actually, good for Nick Shulman in the sense that now he can hit a king to win it with the King Queen out. You didn't have a three, though, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> let let <laughs> let let him sweat, you know, man. Like I, I I'm I'm not a fan of the you know the guys all in. Let him just sweat the spot. King Queen would have just picked up Queens and Sixes for the lead, but it's out. Oh, hey, Sholo. Three. <laughs> Three ball corner pocket. Right on cue, Shawman. He's back. Well, three bigs, Randy, but certainly um, has some fight left in him, <laughs> as one would expect, and <coughs> is now in the big. Gonna go with any two, one would assume. All right, losing Loon Loon over to the other table. That is how things stand. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. Dan Cates. Still chip leader, Shulman, with his work cut out. Just three bigs as he finds himself in the big blind. Soft bubble, the 125K main event, record breaking field here in London. Park Lane, Hyde Park, JW Marriott. Grosvenor House, Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, as we play this one down to the FT. And tomorrow, same time, same place. Ali Najad will be kicking off the show. Shulman six deuce, bro. I mean, come on. But he's forced in. He's paid the big blind. He's played the big blind ante. Here we go. 30% chance to stay in there. Like this hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Still. Thank you, bro. Feels rough to be dealt six deuce, but here we are. And it's looking That's pretty dead. Pretty much the end of it for Nick Shulman. On that board. Officially dead on the turn as the ten of clubs completes the run out and with that Shulman out in eleventh, three hundred and sixty thousand dollars for his efforts, but really just proving to the world that he can back it up the highest stakes. Not only does he talk the talk, he also walks the walk as he goes home. Just shy of the final table. Yeah, GG Shulman in. He played great today. I was um, thoroughly enjoyed his play. I hope to see him come back to some more Triton stops. Yeah, GG's Triton champion out in 11th. And you know, went out with, with a bang. That ace four emptied the clip.
final table bubble time. You ready, Henry? I'm ready. Are you ready? I've been ready. You were born ready. Six sick players remaining. Jungle Man, Steven Chidwick, JNT, Timothy Adams, Haxton, Juan Pardo of Spain, Doug Polk, The Man, Loon Loon, James Chen, Seth Davies. All of them capable of taking it down. Chidwick coming over to join the party. A lot of love in the chat, of course. 14,000 people currently watching on YouTube. Shout out to the viewers on Twitch. And for those of you with us on the Triton Poker Plus app, perhaps sweating along that 60K turbo. Event number 12, down to four. Kerry Katz leading the pack. Ivy in the hunt for title number four. Joined with Nick Petrangelo and Rodrigo Celuan. Currently at 2.9K likes, 183,000 subscribers. For the 13,000 of you in the chat, that haven't clicked like, please do take a couple of seconds to help us get up to 3,000 likes as that is our daily target. And one would assume that the short price, the small price rather, of just moving your mouse and clicking like is a fair one to pay in exchange for this world-class poker production, these world-class players and this world-class stream free of charge, of course. To all of you around the world, a warm welcome, as always, for the late night strollers strolling in, joining both myself and Randy. Get involved in the conversation. Take you down the chidster. Never really faced the jungle before. Wow, jungle with chirping chips now. Seems to have perked up a bit. Yeah, he has. He's. So I'm Perhaps. not sure what happened. He was Perhaps a late night caffeine boost. Okay, so Chidwick's got 10-9 offsuit in the big blind. Peeling in against Juan Pardo in this BBV cutoff situation. Does outflop the ace queen. Ace queen does have the backdoor clubs. Interesting texture for him. Okay. The advantage of being the chip leader too, or just having all the chips like Chidwick and Dan Cades is that you get a lot of checkbacks from these middling stacks who fear to check raise. As played though, two pair, draw a texture. Okay. That is sneaky with 10 9. Interesting. As it stands, the ace queen, of course. Got that gutty, but probably wants to check down. They're not expecting the one pairs to fold. Well, just ace queen high for Juan now. Does have that queen of clubs. You would think that Chidwick would want to value bet this two pair because Juan wants to kind of show down a lot of hands. Final table bubble sitting in sixth place. And you also wouldn't expect him to be bet calling like one pair to go for a check raise here. So it looks like he is gonna start firing out. Not much of a hand here with this ace queen. With two check throughs, it's easy for Chidwick to value bet. Even just a lone one pair in the spot, top pair, even for this value. But you know, Juan always fighting for every chip. Thinking about the situation. Is there any bluffs in the spot? 
Can't find any. He's out. I believe Lompardo is out of time bank chips. And I remember hearing that, yeah, when he made that call against Showman. Precisely. Had he had longer to think about it, was it perhaps a forced, rushed decision? Unreal action here. Day two. People are pretty wi like pretty withered right now. Like, go right, see bags in people's eyes. Yeah, it's been a long couple of days, huh? Really long couple of days here. As indeed. I mean, some players have been and playing big since event number one. Out, we meant checked to the river. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are two guys that don't play very fast. We're hand for hand, right? Uh, we're hand for hand. Okay. Hand for hand. This is a man with so many nicknames. Isaac Haxton, Hollywood Haxton, Ike, Prince of Darkness. Not sure what else there is. I'm sure there's more. Ace Deuce. Loon Loon's got pocket fives in great position, but is he really going to call off his tournament life right now? On a stone cold bubble, he sees Seth Davies, and who's got 900, 850K right next to him. What a spot. Restart the clock. Yeah, we got time there. Oh, man. This feels like it, it has so to be sick. a lay down, though. I mean, look, I know he's a heavy favorite in this spot, but he could easily be up against a bigger Brian pair or just like two overs. I'm gonna make this even more reasonable. <laughs> Doug Pokes like the hand, the Mine's blinds go up next hand. hand. Might make him call. I mean, yeah. Think about it, right? Like, don't like about tournaments is that like day one and a lot of today played some gangster hands, and then they don't really like. I mean, they put you ahead, but like, you know, it's. it's I mean, it, it, like in the end, you, you just have, it's all like you know this stuff, and then. You know, the later you go, the more it's just yeah. when the blinds are big. You yeah, yeah. Whereas like in cash, you know, every gangster hand. Big you know, lay down, but understandable. Yeah. James Chen just saying, in the end, doesn't really matter. Love the Lincoln Park reference. <laughs> yeah. card I, should. I hear you. Oh, they want it here? That doesn't make sense. She asked something, yeah. Oh, you have to show the card I showed up there. It's that one. I'm not showing that one. <laughs> yeah, that one's not very good. <laughs> That's the other race? Uh, yeah. Piece of cheese. I think I'm a small blind. Yeah, I'm the button. So, Yay! Hand, hand for hand. Discount! What? A one more hand? One more hand. Oh. So this hand. Don't worry, the blinds will go up in just blinds don't go up. Blinds. <laughs> a discount for Doug Polk in the big. Perfect. James Chen, King 10 offsuit. 15 big blind effective. Does have to Ooh. keep in mind that the blind will go up next hand. We're playing five handed at this red table. And you heard Doug Polk and James Chen kind of go back and forth about how they've been oh, yeah. cash game players versus the tournament. Haven't been shy of acknowledging that their short stack situation may be a bit up to variance, I suppose. Ace King now for Haxing. Good lay down for Chen as he would have ran right into this. 200. What day has been for Seth Davies as well. Pocket jacks. Oh my. Are we really going to be flipping we to have get to. us to the FT? We have to. We've got two jacks. Five handed. Ike, table captain. Snap. Wow, I'm glad I didn't shove, I guess. Doug Polk is going to be flipping 
Hmm? Against Ike yeah. Haxton. I think you can say what you have. I have... Don't talk about the hand, alright. It's fine. We're... Alright. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it well, in because, your hand. Because okay. we are... I have two cards. Same. Okay. Hand for hand. They're pretty good. I didn't have to think much. Same. <laughs> A little sweat for Doug Polk, actually, because he could be up against the overpair of this commentary going back and forth between the two. Hmm? Now, just to reiterate, there is a hand going on on table one. We're hand for hand. Now Once that hand... Know. Finishes. It sounds like a four. Cards will be on their back. And we'll see five. <laughs> I have a, I have a pair. You have a pair. Hmm. It's a tough call. Yeah. Small. Small pair. Don't want to flip. The ace was probably coming. No one else had an ace. They wouldn't have folded. Probably it's just busy. If Doug Polk holds here, Randy, it's going to be up to 38 bigs. Fair fight. Couple of jacks. We saw a king folded. You had an ace? Oh, yes. Good. Oh, an ace folded as well. So four outs for Ike. Wheel. Ike calling for the wheel. How about top set for Doug on the jack 10 tray, but Ike with as many outs as he had. Going to the flop, looking for a queen. Trying to finger again. And a queen only, with one card to come. To get us down to the final table. Doesn't find it. Clean run out for Yay! Doug Polk, and with that, it's up to 38 oh, no was, was big that, huh? blinds. <laughs> Moves up to fifth in chips. The players were like, damn it, no pay jumps. And then the staff were like, god damn it, we need to be here longer. <laughs> now covers the entire table on the bubble. I would have been dead if I shoved. Dead to like. Oh, oh, oh you, you wouldn't have been able to beat Jax on this board? <laughs> no, I mean pre. You know, I oh. just, like, I'm crushed by both, like, if, by both of you combined. Can't hit. Doug giving the, the two thumbs up to whoever's got the camera in front of him <laughs> over there. Uh, excuse me? A lot of talent in tournaments. Yeah, uh, can I get another uh, water? Uh, water, please? Wait, wait, wait. Still need to be hand for hand. <laughs> oh, okay. How much do you have now, Ike? 2.2. Okay. Three. Get involved in the conversation on Instagram, Twitter. Perhaps take a selfie or a picture of your stream setup, where you're watching from. Don't forget to tag at Nananoko, at Triton Poker Series, at Henry Kilbane. Let us know whereabouts in the world you are watching this from. I assume a lot of the Europeans three behind. have hit the showers. Okay, so Doug Polk with that new stack got King Six offsuit. All in. Blinds up. He's going to put pressure, and James is snap in there of two sevens. Great position to double up through Doug Polk, who just got those chips. Sorry, James Chen, who. Cold weather we've been having lately. <laughs> Not afraid. Currently 8 of 10. How many days are you uh, visiting? Your snap calling here as there's two shorter um, stacks. I leave tomorrow. I'm only there for a couple days. Right? I, I, leave, I leave tomorrow. Uh, like whenever, I, whenever I, this ends. I'll leave. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll be there for a couple of days. A couple of days. Once again, same rules apply. Waiting for the hand. Over here <coughs> to wrap up. A lot deeper at table one. So we got a pre-flop raise and a flat in position from Timothy Adams. Yeah. <coughs> Top five stacks over here. Sorry. Five of the top six stacks over here. Chidwick for 200k bet.
So as soon as this hand is over and done with, we'll be moving back over to table two for that all-in call situation between Doug Polk and Chen. Adams just calls, Deucer Club's on the turn. Not many threes in either player's range, Randy. Cut off the button. Yes, I, I, would, I would think so. Just the pocket threes, really. Ace three actually checks the flop at a high frequency. Good chance that Adams is holding Ace X, though. Hard to kind of multi barrel this spot. Sitting here at top pair, good kicker. Maybe looking to pot control a bit. Or bet turn, check back river, unimproved. There is some merit to denying the wheel card that could come on the river as well that would chop it up. Chidwick with just Jack High now. I say now as if he didn't have Jack High on the turn. Still remains the same. The only hands he would really be trying to fold out uh, with a river bet would be like sevens through nines. I suppose busted spades occasionally, but he wouldn't expect like king queen to float the flop. Okay. Ace jack is usually the best hand in this spot, but it's hard to open the door in case your opponent wants to come in for check raise occasionally. Do you just take the free showdown expecting to win most of the time? Or try to value bait against like ace ten, ace nine, ace eight. Five seconds. Yeah, found it. But of course Jack Ten not going to be able to call. Must realize that he can represent the two spades. So five seven five Adams up to five point seven million back over to the red. Feature table is Adams also gets abused like one under. by Jungle. To get us to the final table, Doug Polk needs to find a way to victory here. Whereas the show goes on, the bubble continues. Well, two additional outs for Doug. Five outs once to get us down to the FT and eliminate Doug James Chen in the process. Doesn't find it. And with that, Doug down to 2.5, James Chen up to 2.7 and seen a lot of people in the chat letting us know that there was a massive double up for Phil Ivy. Four-handed, now down to three. He is the overwhelming chip leader with three left. If you aren't already, Watching that over on the Triton Poker Plus app. Download it now. The app store on the Google Play Store. Ivy looking for title number four. Need to join um, Makita uh, and Zierkuski. You covered, uh, 2.075. Yeah. Uh, how much is it? 50. So James Chen going to slide.